Sir, you're charged with especially aggravated kidnapping. You're also charged with aggravated assault. And you're charged with theft of a firearm worth less than $2,500. You're talking about stuff that is not relevant. Hello and welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. I am the recovery addict and boy do I have a case for you today. Why is the dog Whoa. chewing on this guy? I think they have got the wrong guy they there. Got the wrong guy. The dog was was biting him. He roughing him up quite a bit. There's a lawsuit. As the agent for Peyton Hensley, John Milton, you are indicating to me that you're quite familiar with Peyton Hensley, John Milton, and that's basically you. Is that correct? I am the agent authorized to represent Peyton Hands with John Milton as written in all capital letters. All right, and you understand for my purposes, though that language doesn't make any sense. So no, I do not. I understand. Okay, well, I'm telling you that. And so I am, until you disabuse me of the motion, or the notion, I am inclined to believe that you are both the agent and the person. So. And it's an I'm all not a person, I am one of the people. Thank you. All right, okay, thank you. Welcome, welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. I am the recovery at a good Monday. No, 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 it feels like a Monday. Good Friday morning, the weekend is here. It's No Pants Friday. No Pants Friday, we made it. I say, I say Monday. I say only, I say Monday only because uh, this morning as I parked my car at a place that I normally don't park, which was not my house and not my destination, uh, and, and made the phone call to the tow truck to come and get me, and then called Mrs. R.A. and said, hey, <laughs> can you come pick me up? I'm broke down in your car. Uh, it felt like a Monday. It felt like a Monday. But uh, here I am. I'm almost on time. Ten minutes Ten minutes late is not that bad. It's not that bad. Nobody got hurt. Uh, we didn't crash anything. Apparently, I, I posted, if you want to see on what happened, I posted on the community page on YouTube. Uh, just a little post. It's a little, it's, a, it's, it's like, what, where's Waldo? But it's spot the difference, right? Spot the difference. And... Uh, and there are two pictures. I took a picture of the inside of my left brake caliper. There goes the cops. And the inside of my right brake caliper. And uh, I'm not going to give it away, but one has one more bolt than the other. And apparently the things are supposed to be attached to the car, and this part was not. And so when you detach one side of your brake calipers and then press the brakes, what happens is instead of just grabbing the rotor and stopping the wheel, one side just flops around loosely inside your wheel a lot like what we see during a high-speed chase and smoke happens and there's a grinding and a terrible shaking especially at 70 miles an hour i figured out and uh and it, it feels like uh it back back in the day when you were kids have you ever like you guys never did this you never like stuck a stick in your friend's front tire on his bicycle while he was driving I, who would do that i mean really who would ever do that i'm not saying i'm not saying i did but uh it felt like that but on the car so uh we uh we, we fixed it. Dog lover, I got your email. Fixed it. Thank you very much. Appreciate the heads up. Uh, yes, that's also one of my channels, but uh, it was po pointed to the wrong one. It's, that's pointed to my random content channel, which is weird. I, I admit, it's really, really weird. Uh, made by Boeing? Ski Boy, yes. I, oh, you know what we have to do? Pampered Glamper. Welcome. First, first in chat this morning. Congratulations, Pampered Glamper. With an H. An H for heck yeah, it's Friday. No roly polies for breakfast. No breakfast. I did not have time for breakfast this morning. I was too busy uh, calling the shop. I, I have the. Okay, can I can I give a shout out really quickly? Would you guys let me uh, personal indulgence is what I'm asking for right here. Uh, when I moved here to North Carolina, I did not uh, know anybody or anyone or anything. I had I had no connections here, worth zero, like nothing, and. Uh, and fairly early on, when we bought our used car from the dealership on day one when we arrived, it was used and it, it needed help pretty early on. And we, by chance, took it to a little a little shop called Amco, A W M C O or Double A M C O. I, I don't know how they spell it. Amco is how it sounds. Uh, in Winterville, up by the Sam's Club, if you guys know the area, they are phenomenal. We, we took it in thinking this is making a grinding noise. It's clearly connected to the drive shaft. Uh, we expect this car is probably totaled. They called, they called me back in like an hour and said, look, what happened is your, your brake, emergency brake line uh, broke loose from a weld and it's hitting the drive shaft every time it runs around. It's just bouncing on it. It hasn't done any damage. We've checked it. The line's good. Uh, we've, uh, there's, the fix is not a good one. 
And so our, our, our mechanic has come up with this. We welded a bracket and we've made, they, they completely fixed it. I'm like, man, you guys, you went all out. And I'm like, all right, what's the damage? And like, hey, don't worry about it. We just, we just took care of it for you. I'm like, your guy was like crafting parts and, and welding and, and fixing things and, and doing all the investigation. They just fixed it and said, hey, we're glad we could help. It was an easy fix. It really, we had spare parts here. It didn't cost us anything, nothing. I'm like, you guys just want a customer for life. Okay, you want a customer for life. And every single time I've been there, you know, I, I just, I can drop my car off and I know that number one, they're not going to fix something that doesn't need to be fixed and, and that they're just going to treat me right. The downside of this is apparently everybody else also knows that that's what they do. And it is impossible to get a car in there. You call them up, it's like, hey, can you check out my car? I just want a, a quick once over an inspection. They're like, sure, we've got an opening next month, next month. But uh, anyway. They're incredible. Called them up this morning. And I said, look, it's me. I'm sorry. I know you guys are, are packed. I've seen your, your parking lot. It's like full of cars to work on. I'm on the side of the road. I've got a tow truck on the way. Can I have them bring it to you? And they said, we'll, t- we'll bring it right in. We'll make room. We'll, we'll slide it in. And we'll take care of it. So I, I'm optimistic that, you know, later today it's going to be fixed. That being said, Mrs. RA was going on a field trip today, not to DC because they changed location to, they're going to some other place a few hours away. And I said, okay, uh, we have one car. I'd, rec- I'd like to have a safety net in case something goes wrong with you. So I rented her the exact same car I rented when I went to Florida. So she gets an Audi, like an Audi X3 or something. And uh, so she's going to be driving in style, and uh, I don't have to worry about her at all. Do I ever sleep? <laughs> sleep is for the week and the weekends, Karina. All right, uh, that being said, let's see. Uh, I gave away the internet. Pamper Glamper, you were first in chat. Congratulations. The inter- internet's all yours. Uh, close race today. I had like six messages, boom, all at once this morning. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, JS218 props to recovery addict for switching trials one after another. How does he keep up with all these trials? I will tell you how JS218, amazing people like our moderators, as well as people who reach out to the moderators and say, hey, guess what I saw? And we have that this morning. We have to do birthdays first. I can't skip that. Um, but we have that this morning. I played that sound bite, this one, the, the sound bite right here. As the agent for Peyton Ansley, John Milton. I played this for you a reason. You are indicating to me that you're quite familiar with Peyton Ansley, John Milton, and that's basically you. Is that correct? <laughs> okay, I played that because we have this morning, we have some soft sit video from yesterday. Uh, some breaking breaking soft sit video. Uh, and I believe we have some No Pants Friday content. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. But uh, I, I, have, I owe a big thank you. Let me check who, who I owe the thank you to because I've already forgotten. I apologize. Let's see. Um, sh- uh, let's see. Sharon, Mark. Oh, Samantha says, P.S. This is shout out to Pamela MC. She's the one who found it. Pamela MC, thank you very much. Uh, has your tow truck arrived? I don't know. I left the car on the side of the road. Oh, I just won't reply. Uh, no, this is not Mr. Frog. This is not Mr. Frog. We're, uh, we're on the... The other side of the country with uh, Judge Cedric Simpson, one of our other favorites. Um, birthdays, birthdays. Do we have any birthdays today? It would be strange if we didn't, but uh, let me see if we've got anybody. Look at you, Paula Mack. Thank you for the information. Yes. Uh, you guys, I, I can't tell you, this is so helpful for the channel. A lot of you guys are true crime addicts and and watch uh, and, and see things before I do. And when you're able to reach out to the channel and say, hey, just a heads up, this is going on or this is coming up. Uh, it saves me. This this is actually this is a technical term. A butt ton of work, a butt ton of work. I think that's actually like a, a metric, or a unit of measurement from way back in the day. A butt ton. But uh, anyway, we are we're excited. Let's see. We have uh, birthdays today. Thanks to Sharon McDonald for putting this list together. We have uh, Elliot, Eric, Mrs. B Haven, Mrs. B Haven. I like that. Uh, Abigail who is two tomorrow, uh, Divine Creations by Melanie, Stephanie and Pat are celebrating their 21st wedding anniversary, according to Wu, all celebrating today. So is according to Wu a birthday or an anniversary? Let me, let me copy these. So I've got Elliot, Eric, Behaving, Behaving, Abigail, Divine Creations by Melanie, Stephanie and Pat, weddings. I, I just need to go on according to Wu. That's the only one. Um, let's see. I'm looking for the message. 
Should we correct him? Says Paul Mac. <laughs> what did I say? Paul Mac. Um, all right. Uh, according to Wu is a birthday. Okay, so we're going to sing to everybody but Divine Creations by Melanie and Stephanie and Pat. Because they're just having weddings. Not just. That's a big celebration. Congratulations. Uh, an anniversary. Uh, that's that's a big, big thing. But uh, we're going to do Elliot, Eric, Behaven, Abigail, and According to Wu. So it is time. It is time for you to join me in the birthday song. The birthday song. Uh, you know the birthday song. You said Pamela Mack. Did I say Paula or Pamela? Paula. Paula, did I call you Pamela? How do you like your new name? Just, you know, free free name on Friday. Uh, sorry, Paula Mack. I did, I did Mac mix that up. Uh, let's see. We're, uh, birthday song. Uh, please join with me. La, 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 la. In warm-ups. That was one more. You guys, that was weak. Join with me in the warm-up. La, 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 la. There we go. That was a little better, although the key was off. Uh, good enough, good enough for what we need to do here today. So please join with me in singing happy birthday to all those who are celebrating a birthday today. We're going to do that here for Elliot, Eric, Behaven, Abigail, and according to Wu. Uh, it's going to be a mouthful, but we're going to get it done. So dancers at the ready. Deep breath, shoulders back, project to the back of the room, blend your voice with that of your neighbors, wherever you are. Even if you're in a cubicle, now's the time to stand up and sing. Let it be known that you're celebrating everyone who has a birthday today. Your, your co-workers will join you. It's great. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Elliot. Eric, Behaven, Abigail, and according to Wu, happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Thank you, thank you. The dancers, as always, time those high kicks with the fireworks, and it looks phenomenal. Sequins are shining in the disco light. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. To everybody who has celebrated a birthday today, happy, happy birthday. I realize there are a million places you could be and a million people who could celebrate with you and who want to, but you've chosen to be here with us. Thank you. Thank you. That is our honor, our privilege, our pleasure. Uh, hopefully today we can make your day just a little bit better as a result. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Nosy Rosie leading the... Uh, <clears throat> The Bounce of the Booty Twerkers, which is a, an addition to the dancing. It's an optional, I will say, it's an optional dance. But uh, I even got it to rhyme, says Lily Wayne. It, it just worked that way. And that's the way Sharon put it together. I think she designed it that way. But, but thank you, Sharon. Uh, once again, I, I want to just say thanks to our amazing mods who help gather this information and are, and are working even while, while I'm not. I, literally, when I'm not working, they're still working. So you think the mods only work when I go live? They're, they're up, up and at it hours before I start uh, talking things over, sometimes doing a little research, sometimes updating me on different cases. Uh, fantastic, fantastic individuals. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you to our amazing mods. All right, uh, and happy birthday, happy, happy birthday. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, we, uh, we want to kick things off because uh, let me tell you first before we, before we do that, we are going to do a couple things today. Um, first of all, I get to control the air conditioner in the house lawsuit. because my family's going to be gone on a field trip. I'm super excited about that because it's not going to be like sweaty Friday like it normally is. As soon as they leave, this door gets open, the AC gets turned down to about, I don't know, 48 degrees, and I'm going to be in heaven. Uh, so that's the first thing that's going to happen. The second thing is that, uh, no, they're, they're not in Arizona. They're, they're in North Carolina. Uh, the second thing is that uh, we're going to watch uh, Judge Cedric Simpson. It's less than an hour. It's, it's, got, it's got a couple cases. I think there might be multiple cases, but there are two of them particularly that we want to watch for that you guys are not going to want to miss. And then on this also No Pants Friday, we have, we have spicy, spicy Arizona Court, which is only a half day. So it's, uh, it's good. Uh, dog lover. No, the, the other channel was it's something I don't want linked because it has stuff that has kids and my kids and stuff that I do more personal stuff on. I shouldn't have had that up there, but, uh, but thank you. Appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> all right. All right. All right. And I don't post anything new on that as well. I haven't posted to that in, in ages. All right. We have, I'm ready with, uh, let's see, what am I ready with? I'm ready with a spice today. I think the spice is working. Let me check the spice. Yep. The spice meter is, is fully functional, so we have that ready to go. Let's go to... Did I tell you already? I, I rented a car for Mrs. R.A. I got her the same one that I drove to Florida. 
the Audi X3. She's like, I, I just want, she's, she's like budget conscious, right? She's, uh, I, I won't say, she's, she's very good at, at saving pennies. Okay, which, which puts me in a great spot financially. Like our family, she has saved us numerous times from my, from my bad decisions. Um, but I, was, I control this. I said, look, if you're, if you're taking a car somewhere, I want it to be a nice car. I want it to be a rental car. I'll get it. She's like, okay, get the cheap one. I'm like, I will. <clears throat> Luxury. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I got her the nice car. But anyway, we will... Uh, Let's see. Um, let's 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 start with uh, Judge Simpson. Can we do that? Let's let's do that straightway. He's going to be right over here on camera two in just a second. Are we there? He's not. We're waiting. He's, it's his private time, guys. Wait, wait for a minute. Don't want to interrupt him because you know how angry he can get. Ah, oh, Nicole Wise. It's definitely been longer than five months. I've been hanging with you guys. Thank you for everything you do, RA. Nicole, thank you. Uh, thank you for being a great part of this community. Would not be the same without you. Uh, also, Renee Smith, uh, sorry, Renee Smitty, Spintley, <laughs> gifted a membership. Renee, I apologize. I, uh, in my old age, I just cannot read anymore. Gifted a membership first thing this morning. Thank you for kicking off Friday in style as well. All right. Uh, what's her new phone in the car? Zimmy, I have not got her new phone yet, but I will tell you what she is going to do. She's going to be taking my phone, and I will have the burner phone linked to my computer if we need to use the burner phone. Um, so I'll, I'll still be able to take calls that way. Still working on the Discord solution. I know I've, I've uh, had some people reach out to me and say, hey, I can make this happen um, without you know burdening the... Or I, would, I would feel bad if, as the gavel drops, had to maintain my, my phone channel. I realize they volunteered, and some of the mods over there are the mods on my channel, and they're they're perfectly willing, hundred percent willing. Um, I might I might just have my own Discord just for phone calls because heaven knows I'm not going to update it. <laughs> so so we'll see how that goes. Uh, make that possible that way. All right. Um, is this the first part of the spice or part two? There's going to be spice all the way through this. There's today is just a spicy day. It's, it's very, very spicy all the way through. Um, things went from good to bad to worse for Judge Simpson. We're here for all of it. We're here for all of it. This is less than an hour of his day, um, but it's, it's going to be a great way to start off our day. Oh, St. Augustine, Florida tornado. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. I, I know Dr. Joe said he had some terrible weather, like it was raining sideways. Uh, I'm not sure where he is in relation. Well, I know where he is, but I don't know where that is in relation to St. Augustine. But uh, man, hearts go out to those who, who are affected by that. What about FaceTime linked to your MD Gmail account? The problem is FaceTime is linked to my other... The, the problem is the app is linked to something else. So I would, I would lose what I use it for right now if I link it somewhere else. It gets, it gets really confusing. How do you clean your gutters? I'm 69. It's getting hard for me to get up on a ladder. Dodi Sweeney, my recommendation, um, a shop vac with a long extension. Of, um, you, you, I think you can buy them at like Harbor Freight or something. It's like a, an aluminum tube pole with a little hook on it. And you're like, you stick it up on your roof and stick it in the, from the ground, you stick it in the gutter. I'm, gonna, I'm looking for one right now, but I, I saw it on YouTube and I want to get one. Otherwise, I have to pay someone to get on the roof. And I, I don't think I can afford somebody. They charge so much. It's like two and a half stories high. On a 12-12 pitch roof. Add to Juicy Spicy Friday. It's pre-trial hearing for Karen Reed case today. It's going to be a juicy one. Uh, yes. For those that are, are curious about that, I think it's going to be a long hearing, right? Aren't they doing like a full day hearing? I, th I think that's right. And Brandy's covering it. Brandy Churchwell, which is going to be awesome. This is yesterday's docket uh, from Judge Simpson. If, if we can ever get there. Is it plain? Did I pause? Oh, I just skipped back like forever. There we go. 22. We were, we were like five minutes away from anything happening. Now we're 10 seconds. Okay, here we go. All right. Audio's on. Judges in the courtroom. Sent someone with more experience. And we are shopping for more lawn, lawn equipment. Uh, I was last night. Thank you for the, the tips, Thomas. I appreciate that. Good morning, Judge Simpson. It's great to have you with us. I need to call. 
may be seated. I'm sorry. The audio, the audio gets better. Right. Here. I think you called me Freddy. <laughs> Court does call the case. Uh, the people of the state of Michigan versus Cody Lee Jolly. <laughs> we're actually set for what are we set for? Yeah, we're set for PCC. All right, state your name, sir. Uh, Cody Lee Jolly. All right. Mr. Jolly, are you still intending upon representing yourself? All right. I do have to apprise you that in this matter, you were charged with two offenses versus criminal sexual conduct in the fourth degree. Well, two counts of criminal sexual conduct in the fourth degree. You understand those the nature of those charges? You understand the allegations as explained to you during the course of the arraignment in these cases? Okay. The maximum penalty, those are both high court misdemeanors punishable by up to two years incarceration. Five hundred dollar fine plus court costs, mandatory STD testing. You understand that, sir? Yeah. All right. You understand that there can be great peril in attempting to try to represent yourself in a criminal matter of this nature, and you understand that the court would hold you to the same standards as I would any licensed attorney in terms of court rules and in terms of court procedure. You understand that. And you understand that the court is not going to try to assist you or help you out in any way. Right. All right. And you understand also, sir, that if you are indigent and cannot afford to hire an attorney, that you would be afforded counsel and could request counsel at any particular time. You understand that? Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. So what are we going to do in this case? Um, Your Honor, I have to bring this case for uh, Ms. Riser today. She did provide me with the the outstanding CD of discovery for the defendant. I understand that the police report has already been sent out to him by mail. Of the CD provided to the jail staff. Yeah. If the answer is no, I don't have that. Okay. Is that acceptable? Is that okay with you guys? Okay. Thank you so much. All right. That's nope. Everything we have. All right. That's all discovery. Sir, what do you want to do next in this case? Um, before I start the trial. Well, you you understand that the next step is not that of a trial. Uh, is this is this pre trial? Oh, okay. I understand this pre trial and we're on trial. Mr. Mr. Jolly. Oh. <sighs> Do you really wish to represent yourself in this matter? I'm a little bit concerned because you don't. Well, but that's not how it works. Okay. That's what, that's what concerns me. It, you're charged with a high court misdemeanor. Okay. The next step is that we're at a probable cause conference. Okay. That's probable cause. The next step is a preliminary examination. Okay. okay. And then if you're bound over, then you're going to go through that process once again on the circuit court level. Okay. You follow that? Okay. So now understanding that that's a basic procedure, what do you want to do? Uh, just move forward and just take it on Basically, I work with the preliminary examination. It's okay. Um, I have this, this matter. I'm, uh, I'm in custody right now. Um, and I was on the cell to solve it. Right? So you want it? You had you got a copy of the police report, right? Oh, um, I got I got the start of the story. I did. It was emailed to me. Okay. So you want a preliminary examination in this matter? 
if they have had some nice stuff to do a lot of trial and I'm trying to get the trial done as fast as possible, but a preliminary examination goes before that. Wow. All right. Was, I know, but yeah. there's if it has to break, we just have to break. Yes, sir. All right. Set preliminary examination for April twenty third. 2024, 9 a.m. That will be before me. That's in person. Right. In this matter, the cost of the acoustic Pardon? Um, is the other day of the arraignment, I was hoping that to get released, but there was, well, I had to come here first. I, I mean, what do you mean you he was arrested um he, my office had a new warrant request for him from the university of michigan um it was for trespass and for violating the conditions of your honor's bond and in, in, in you said in this file he has historically he has been trespassed from the university of michigan Libraries numerous times. He was again there, which is where he was. Nice shit. Fifth, twenty four. Um, he was. I, I, he was publicly looking at inappropriate photos of women in the school library, and other people were able to see what he was doing. He was reported when the police came. They recognized him. They recognized him as a person that he had. They had trespassed times. They the report indicates that his shirt was open, exposing his chest, and that his pants were pulled down, but that his genitalia were not exposed, as far as they saw. Um, certainly, this is the CSE. He's out on bond. The CSE case while he's engaging in this behavior. At the very least. The ongoing trespass is a violation of his bond, um, given that he's committing a new crime while he's not on a bond, but not turning behavior in a public place, in a place he's in trespass. My office denied the warrant request um, and essentially turned to this case and for us to move forward with a violation here instead. All right, sir, you are entitled to a hearing regarding a bond violation on this. Want to have a hearing on that? Did you want to admit the violation or did you want to deny it? What do you wish to do? Um, to admit the violation, the violation was what I'm sorry. The violation was because when I, when I, when I got here, they told me that, that everything was, they said that it was, uh, when they, when they came out and gave me the press pass, when I got here, they said, the cross was the press passes and stuff, and they, they weren't worried about it. It wasn't, it wasn't. Well, they weren't worried about it from the standpoint of new charges. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I, my understanding is that the prosecutor doesn't want you released because the, what the conduct that's alleged to have occurred is a violation of the condition of bond on this case. Okay, yeah, there was nothing inappropriate besides being in the library. Yeah, no, nothing weird or anything about the library. I have no idea. The other day I wasn't. Open. But you weren't supposed to be back on their on the property. That's what that's what they said. I, I have a long, I guess that was just kind of a mess. So, uh, do you want a hearing on it? Or are you going to admit to the violation? What are you going to do? Uh, You're entitled also, sir, to have a representation of an attorney for a bond violation here. Right. Uh, I mean, I, if, if it's not a new charge, I, I admit that I was trusted by that. I was probably trespassing there. I was holding the job. Maybe I'll be released. Well, I need you to understand that I'm not agreeing that you're going to get out of jail at all. 
whether you admit it, do whatever. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Right. Well, you just admitted to the violation. That's why I'm worried about you not having an attorney. Oh. Just you admit to the violation of being on University of Michigan property, correct? Sure. Okay, so that's why I'm worried about you not being represented by an attorney. Because that's a violation of the bond conditions that I set in the case involving the criminal sexual conduct. I've never been there before. I was aware that it was a lot of people. I've never been there before. The man sitting next to him is an attorney, a public defender. Sir, did you want a hearing on the bond violation? Because I'm going to take into account everything that they're indicating, that you were trespassing and what was in there. Do you want a hearing on that? Yes. Are you want, do you want an attorney to assist you regarding that hearing on the bond violation? I, I think I'm okay. I just, just the bond and stuff can get heard. So I, I, I've done like 10 days in jail already. And Where are you coming up with this 10 days in jail? I just got to get out. Yeah, but what do you mean I've done my 10 days? I've done 10 days so far, and I've not been, I've not actually had a charge of I've been in charge of these two counts that are here, but I've not actually made the offense. He thinks he's getting out like any minute now. The judge is like, that's not how it works. He's like, well, I've done 10 days, so I think I'll just move ahead and you can release me and I can get go, to, go back to the library and do what I was doing. No, you cannot, sir. Okay, but sir... You understand that the criminal charges that are here, that your release on those criminal charges, there were certain conditions regarding your release. Right, so it's other than that. Correct. In certain places you couldn't go, you couldn't leave the state of Michigan, no alcohol, all of that stuff, right? You couldn't go to the library. So I'm doing the best I can. I, I, it's two months without a problem. I'm doing the best I can. Okay, but now I have these new <laughs> two months. I have a trespassing, which is a violation of the conditional your release. And I could, if there's a violation of the condition to your release, I could certainly let you out. I also could just hold you until this matter gets resolved. You understand that? And now you want a hearing on that. And that's fine. I don't have a problem if you have one, you're going to have a hearing on it. But then the issue becomes, are you going to try to handle this hearing yourself? Or are you going to want an attorney to assist you with that? For us. I understand that you want to move forward, but there's going to be a hearing that's going to determine whether or not you're in custody. Pardon? Well, I haven't set a date. I'm trying to figure out how you want to proceed on it. Like I said, I, I, I'm just doing my best to, uh, to live my sir, life. Sir, I understand all of that. Listen closely to my question. This hearing on the conditional bond violation could determine whether or not you're in custody or you're released with other conditions or not pending the further proceedings in this case. Bottom line, I could come to the decision, okay, well, I'm going to let him out put conditions on you and you walk out. Or I could come to the decision, no, he's going to be held on this case. I'm going to just, I'll give him a bond of some type, but he's going to be held. Okay, but but you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You'd be held. That's what's at stake. Yeah, just hold the house in the So I just like to move forward. Well, I understand that but follow what I'm saying to you. 
You say you want a hearing. My question to you is, are you going to try to do this hearing yourself where one side of it, you might get released. The other side of it is you might be locked up for the remainder of this case. Do you want to try to do that yourself or do you want the assistance of an attorney to help you through that process? Um, I think I just hope that just kind of facts. Just answer facts. my, like, answer my question. Yeah, you're going to hand, you're going to handle it yourself. Okay. But you're going to handle it yourself. You can't. How soon could we have witnesses available for a bond violation here? Yeah, I'll move the see if well the answer to that question. I apologize. It, no, it's okay. Are you thinking like a, a week? Is that what you mean? I'm thinking sometime next week. Okay. And then because the following week is his what day. So we would have Tuesday morning. Available, but the 16. But he's in custody, so I'm not going to do that because that's pretty limited. He's in custody. I'll see you good. I got stuff Tuesday afternoon. You have an expungement docket at one, which is small, so you can do it at two o'clock. I could, I could do it at two o'clock on Tuesday the 16th. Um, it's a U of M police officer, so I can email him to you of M police officers. So I can email them and see if one or both of them can be there on that date. Okay. What I'll do, I'll just set it. If there becomes a problem, we'll communicate with the defendant as well as you just try to arrange a different time. So set a bond violation hearing April 16th, 2024 at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. at so, 2 p.m. So he's going to be next week. Is there anything in, further, sir? Held in custody till then. With the, with the bond, yeah, that will all be discussed as part of the tender condition. Because it's not two months, I think. Oh, man, this will be 10 days. It'll be, it'll be like 15 days. And by the time that happens, um, I was hoping that would count for something. Um, as far as as far as the conditions of my bond, I can't look at bonds or something. Right, right on maybe time that I've got you know. He wants to get out because he's been in for ten days. He's like that should count for something. I don't know what you're asking me. Uh, if, if the tether, if the tether situation could be addressed on the same day. Uh, I'm going to address everything on any day that you appear. So. If the, the tether is part of the condition of your bond, which at this point you're in violation of, I've set a hearing for the 16 to determine whether or not there was a violation. But the allegations are there that there was a violation. The following week, you're set for preliminary examination on the full on the charges. Okay, so all right. I'm going to assume that there's nothing else. Bond will remain revoked. Thank you. Okay. We we have to pause because as terrible as, as Judge Cedric's day appears to be going right now. Let's see, what when are we paused at? What's the what's the time on this? Somebody remember forty one forty five. Whose whose job is to remember forty one forty five? As terrible as Judge the Judge's Day is going right now, it actually started a little bit worse. And it started with a gentleman we're going to see next. So we have to back up. Thank you, Angelique. We have to back up and see how the judge's day began uh, because, because the story comes in two parts. So Mr. Fixit, what we have there is we have a, a gentleman who, I guess, at University of Michigan, went to the library looking at naughty stuff on the computers in full view of, of people, you know, possibly even juveniles, um, partially disrobed, Open shirt, pants down, but nothing exposed. Um, so it was a no pants Friday. And he's like, well, I've been good for like two months. And like, <laughs> he just can't get over the fact that the judge could care less that he's been in jail for 10 days. Okay? He could care less. 
zero zero cares given. And he's like, well, I just want to move forward. And, and he's representing himself. He doesn't know the process. He's like, well, I just like to address everything. And because I've been here for 10 days, I mean, next week, that, that'll be up to 15 days, judge. You know, he's like, yeah, you're going to sit there until the court that has finished this process, especially if you don't have a lawyer to represent yourself because you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what motions to make, what arguments to make to the court. Anyway, so the case will go forward. Next thing they they have to do there is, is call in a witness. They're going to you know, see if there's enough evidence. The police officer is going to testify. They'll probably find there's enough evidence, and he's going to continue sitting in jail. No, 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 no. We are going to we're going to jump on on the Arizona trail. Just going to jump back or play catch up. We're going to jump back, Janet. Um, I don't think we'll do catch up. It's just there there is a lot there, but it's if we try to play catch up, it'll just push into new cases that are that are coming up. So so let me let me take us back. We're going to hit the back arrow button. So we're going to skip this just a wee bit and then go back to what happened in the morning specifically right about so uh, let's see um one hour 27 minutes is this the right one nope this is the wrong one court calls oh, case people wait, versus wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait we need we need four that was nine years ago hang on that's the wrong one Four eleven. I have, to, I have to look at this full screen though. The words are too small for me. Okay, it's this one right here. Okay, and we want the time to. Yep, this is the one. We need one twenty-seven oh four, because right here uh, our defendant is going to make. Well, let's let's go back. Hang on. Whoa, Did, whoa, have whoa, you wait, been wait, to the wait, doctor? Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Not yet. Don't don't spoil it for us, Judge. Oh, with a We'll start right here. I'm speaking with my client, yes. All right. And that dad resides in Ohio, and that's my He's understanding is where he is case. currently. Disregard what's going on right now. Okay. We've got a minute or two. I, I got that. How did he come back into custody? It was a traffic stop, Your Honor, for defective equipment. So he was just out there running around, not taking care of this. From what I understand and speaking with my client, um, he didn't recall exactly why he missed his court date. I'm sure there's some very good reason, um, yeah, but it does course. sound like he needs some medical attention that he may need, require that may be better able to assist us with assisting him in this case. All right. What I'm gonna do is motion for bond reductions denied. Um, I have some concerns about how we turn himself in. I also have some concerns about where he would go. I will reconsider it when it comes back up, if you raise it, if the father says he can reside at the address. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean I'll release it, but I'll certainly reconsider it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us again. That's your notice for your next Court calls case, People versus Tariq Day. The Michigan Opera Senior Assistant Prosecuting Attorney for People. Okay. Hello, Tariq Samara, Tariq Day here. I'm ready, Judge. Corsho, Feaster, Assistant Public Defender on behalf of Mr. Day. He's there. Can you turn on your camera, sir? Mm -hmm. I, don't I don't have any contract with a public defense, uh, public defender's office. You what? I don't have any contract. Hang on, hang on. Um, I need to turn off uh, closed captioning because it's covering his face. With the public defenders, oh, why? Why am I so bad at this? I've got one job, and I'm completely messing up. I'm, I'm using Apple TV, and it's it's extremely sensitive. We'll, we'll jump back right there, up here. Hello, Tariq Samar, Tariq Day here. There we go. A ready judge, Corsho Fleeser, Assistant Public Defender, on behalf of Mr. Day. He's there. Can you turn on your camera, sir? Mm -hmm. I, don't I don't have any contract with a public defense, uh, public defender's office. You what? I don't have any contract with the public defender's office representing me. You don't have a contract with them? Correct. Yes, Judge. Uh, I reached out to Mr. Day to try to uh, help pre-trial this book. 
this case. My is this going to be a Bellinger's thing? I think so, Judge. Okay, go for it. <laughs> My understanding is uh, that he had enough counsel that he was going to have, I believe, on his file. Uh, and I wish him good luck if that's the case, but I don't see another attorney here. So I don't know what's what's going on, Your Honor. No. Mr. I don't, Day? I don't, I'm defending myself. I told him I, uh, I would notify the court that I relieved him of any implied obligations to this case. So you're repre you're going to represent yourself? I'm defending myself, correct. Okay, then you need to be here. Now. Well, as I told uh, the court, I uh, requested a Zoom hearing because I have COVID. So there is no you way I could. In a vehicle with a hat on, no mask. Oh, I inside my vehicle right now. What did you say? I said yes because I'm inside my vehicle right now. I work outside. I'm away from the general public. Did you so go to the no hospital mask. starting the COVID diagnosis? Excuse me. Did have you been to the doctor regarding the COVID diagnosis? It's against my religion. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. Then I'm going to say, okay, you've got COVID. I want you here. When's our last block? Three o'clock today. Wear a mask if you're going to represent yourself. Uh, I can't make that. Is there a later date? Oh, three, three? yeah, you can. <laughs> three o'clock. 3.30, I can make that. I'll be here at three o'clock. Well, I'll be there at three thirty, and if there's any issue, then okay. We can... And at three o'clock, I may issue a bench warrant. Be here at three o'clock. I'll pass this matter. Thank you. There's no bench warrant to be issued because this court didn't okay. have. Okay, I'll determine that at three o'clock. The court See didn't you at have three o'clock. Thank you. This court does not have jurisdiction. You're welcome, Mr. Feaster. Cut his line. Well, why don't we do this? Give me about three minutes. <laughs> I'm going to take a recess, then I'm going to come back, because everything's going downhill, and it's those two guys' fault talking to each other. <laughs> Order's in recess. All right. Okay, so while the judge cools down his spicy meter just, just a little bit, we're now going to jump back to, guess what? Three o'clock. Uh, because... <laughs> because... <laughs> Uh, the the day the time of judgment has arrived. And on the full on the charges. Let's see. So here okay. We so I think we're all right. We're at forty one. I'm going to assume that there's nothing else. Bond will remain revoked. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Later that day. A few hours later. Let's call the case, People State of Michigan versus Tariq Day. In Michigan, I have a senior assistant prosecuting attorney for the people. Guess who's in court with no mask? <laughs> Judge is not impressed. What's your name? Uh, Tariq Samar Tariq Day, the executor of the Tariq Samar Tariq Day Living Trust. Glad to graduate. Um, cum laude out estate. of out of uh, Daryl Brooks School of, of Law. Sir, you indicated that you wish to represent yourself on this matter. Yes. All right. You understand at your arraignment you were given the charges that were filed have been filed against you. I was given a charge. So if there were any additional, I was not uh, given those charges. The only charge I got was a, a fleeting and a Louis. Fle Fleeing and eluding third degree. Third degree, correct. And if anything else was uh, tallied onto that, then I was not told. Okay. I have one charge. Okay. That is a felony punishable by up to five years incarceration and $1,000 fine plus court costs. The Secretary of State would be required upon your conviction to suspend your license for a period of one year. You understand that, sir? I do. But I have some questions. Uh, Wow. As soon as I get through this, you have indicated that you wish to represent yourself. I have to advise you that there are some dangers in you representing yourself. You understand that, sir? I do comprehend. 
and you understand that if you proceed to represent yourself, that the court is not going to assist you to understand the procedures or anything regarding the court proceeding, that you will be responsible for that. And I will be holding you to the same standard that I would be holding the attorneys in the room in terms of even ruling, ruling on evidence or anything along those lines in regard to the procedure and the process. You understand that, sir? Correct, I comprehend. All right, you also, so I will ask you again, do you still continue to wish to represent yourself in this matter? Yes, I will be defending myself. You understand also, sir, that should you change your mind and could not afford to hire an attorney and wish to be represented by an attorney to consider making sure that you are afforded counsel. You understand that? I comprehend. How do you wish to proceed on this matter, sir? Uh, first, I want to uh, uh, like an oral motion for dismissal based on the fact of uh, the lack of probable cause and also the, the lack of a personal and uh, subject matter jurisdiction based on the fact that this is uh, a trust matter um, from the name to the, uh, the private uh, conveyance that was um, stolen by the third party, Wall Street Towing, um, and impounded on the, uh, the, colorful, act, uh, the colorful law actions of uh, Officer Trowbridge of the Washington County Sheriff's Department. Um, also, I have not been able to, uh, um, as of Constitution Amendment 6, uh, being able to face my accuser um, with the state of Michigan being a fictitious entity and there's no uh, injured party, there's no crime that has been committed. Um, and again, to the probable cause of the initial stop and the arrest, um, cannot be proven. There was no probable cause for the arrest or stop. There was no warrant uh, on hand for the arresting officer to conduct an arrest. And um, even more so, again, uh, as I stated, this is uh, trust property. So this court didn't have jurisdiction to adjudicate over uh, the foreign trust. I think he hit it all. I think he hit every <laughs> single pro se soft set point in one in one uh, motion. Oh no, actually I was also oh, uh, moving to more. place you and the clerk as fiduciaries over the trust. Um and I'll be able to supply you all with the adequate assurance uh certificate of security to settle in offset charges. Well, you will be doing nothing to me and nothing to my clerk. So whatever that motion was, that's denied. As to your other motion regarding all of that, um, quite frankly, it doesn't make any sense. We haven't even had the probable cause hearing. There will be a determination at the next stage as to whether or not there's probable cause regarding the charges. I was told this was a probable cause hearing. This is a probable cause hearing. So I don't understand what you're saying. I know you don't understand. They're not having a probable cause. Pardon? You said that no probable cause was had, but then you said that this is a probable cause hearing. You have not had your preliminary examination at which there will be a determination as to whether or not there's probable cause to believe that the crime has been committed and you committed it. That is the next stage. That has not happened. So to the extent that your motion is even valid, which I do not believe that it is, and certainly you may raise it at a later date, but to the extent that it's valid, at least at this point, your motion is premature and therefore your motion is denied. Anything else? Uh, well, lastly, I want to also put on the record, um, I wasn't able to uh, provide um, all my exhibits based on, as I told you, I was. You weren't able to do what? Provide my exhibits. To whom? to the to the court for to help um for my defense the evidences you haven't had a hearing yet i i comprehend it i'm just saying that i've got full comprehension i usually have my documents precede me before any hearings take place and i wasn't able to because i was under the weather that was my point usually. so they will be here uh if not by the end of the day in the drop-off box and you'll have them all tomorrow but um, you all will be served with the proper documents and the taxes uh, as well will be filed uh, on the case. Taxes? To serve you with documents and taxes? Anything else? 
Oh, no, not at this time. All right. So how would you like to proceed next on this? Uh, entering a plea of demure. Um, okay. You've already done that. I've already entered a plea of demure. I'm not sure when that took place other than right now. That took place on the arraignment on the complaint, sir. I never pleaded uh, demure. Uh, there you was a... stood mute. You stood demure. You don't even know what that means. You're just using words and have no concept no. as to what they mean. Demure and mute are two separate things, but that's neither here nor there. No, the... they're not. You have no legal degree. They are not. They are not. I don't need to. They, they are not. The, I'm not here. They are virtually the same thing. So where do you wish to proceed now? As I stated, uh, my motion. Do you wish this set for preliminary examination? Your motions have been denied. I wish for the prosecution to provide the evidence that any of this needs. You to don't have discovery on this case. Is that what you're asking? I'm not asking for discovery whatsoever. So what are you asking for? I stated that the prosecution needs to prove that a crime was committed and under, um, they also need to show and prove that there is an injured party for the crime to have even been committed. As I've indicated, you will have that hearing. Do you wish to have discovery? Discovery should be provided regardless. There's no wish about it. You wish to have discovery. discovery. should be provided. Don't play word games with me. I'm not playing with Mr. Allen. <laughs> discovery. Look at the bailiff. Not play word games with me. You're playing with the wrong judge. You can smile and smirk all you want. I'm not trying. I'm giving you your warning. I will ask you again, do you wish to have discovery provided to you? Yes. Do we have copies of discovery available that can be provided to this defendant? I, I know that the PD was representing uh, this individual. I don't have copies right now. Got uh, I got you. Okay. So, man, so are there copies of the police report? as well as other discovery that's in the hands of the public defender's office. I do see traffic stops and discovery videos onto our program. All right. All right. Those need to be gotten to the defendant. Yes, sir. How soon can those be gotten to the defendant? I can get those in hopefully by tomorrow around. You have an address for him to send those to him? Yes, I do. I can confirm with him too. All right. What is the, What do you have as the address? Do you have a um, an address on, is it share? Okay. Okay, gotcha. All right, you'll make sure that that is sent to him. You also have an email address so that all things can be emailed to him also. I do. Yeah. All right. Very good. <clears throat> Sir, did you wish to then have another PCC or did you wish to proceed immediately to preliminary examination? Uh, I would like to first have a jurisdiction hearing. What kind of jurisdiction here? Personal and subject matter. Okay. Go ahead and raise it because I can deal with it right now. What's the personal jurisdiction? Uh, this court is longer, uh, as well as the state lacks personal jurisdiction. I'm simply here under threatened arrest and coercion of you saying that you would help uh, put out a bench warrant for my arrest. Uh, the subject matter uh, in regards to the name as well as the vessel uh, that was used is uh, again under, um, it was conveyed it and is uh, held and protected within the trust. Um, and according to Article 1, Section 10, Clause 2 of the United States Constitution, um, there could be no legislative laws that uh, 
um, could intercede or to interrupt uh, the functioning of a contract, uh, which the trust is and is uh, properly um, uh, and the trust is uh, properly functioning at this time. So um, with that. All right. So here's what we'll do, because you're rambling again. So what we will do is you will put all of your jurisdictional arguments in writing because you're wrong. So we might as well get it in writing that you're wrong because I have subject matter jurisdiction over you and I have personal jurisdiction over you under the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of Michigan. So if you want to put your objections to jurisdiction in writing, you may do so, and then I will address those in due course. Awesome. So do, that would be the next step, and I can get those in today. You know, that is not the next step. Either you're going to have another PCC. If you want me to set it for a hearing, I'll set it for a hearing. Yeah, for the jurisdiction. But I have nothing to set a hearing on. You have not filed anything regarding jurisdiction. Okay, so for right now, as of this moment, PCC is fine, and then I will file the proper documents for the jurisdictional hearing. Gotcha. So uh, get at your calendars, guys, because we have one to put on the schedule. So the probable, also during the probable cause conference in this case, April 25th, 2024, at 3 p.m. Is it possible to get another it's week for person for uh, to provide to? to accumulate my uh, documents for my defense. Is there what? Is it possible to have that extended out another week so that I can provide my... I'm going to set it 25th. <laughs> Judge, that date doesn't work for me. I mean, I've heard, I was on the call. I've heard you give multiple counsels extended times. So what, what is the bias? I have no bias against you, sir. Well, I'm simply asking for uh, I'm a reasonable... setting that date. So about two weeks out, you can have your motion together, file your motion. I will be able to address your motion at that time so that we can get this headed to a PC, to a preliminary examination. Uh, just for the record, I'll put it on the record that I object. But under threat of arrest and coercion, again. Your objection is noted. Right. And under threat of arrest and coercion, uh, I'll be here. Is there anything else? I said what I need to say. <laughs> anything else from the people? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Oh. And we'll continue. Am I waiting for paperwork or get it from the front? Pardon? Am I waiting for paperwork uh, regarding the next? No, you may leave. Oh, it's being, is it being mailed or I'm trying to figure out how do I get the paperwork? And check out at the front counter. Okay, thank you. That's right. That it for me, Ann? Yes, sir. Thank you, everyone. 14A. Stands adjourned. Take me off, please. <laughs> Take me out. <laughs> Take me off the air because I need to say something that cannot be on the record. <laughs> but, uh, so we have a uh, oh, Sarah Boone update, new dates in the email. Oh, man, Greeners, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Did, I heard April 25th, 3 p.m. is the next hearing for this gentleman <laughs> in person, in person. Oh, my goodness. So so the order that happened, just to clarify, that what happened was this dude, hard hat in the car, yellow hoodie, that happened first. Then during the break between that happening and 3 p.m., the latest block of the day, the judge got the, the pants down U of M, uh, so the pro se guy. And then once that's over, hard hat, yellow hoodie guy shows up in court minus hard hat and also sans mask. Uh, looks healthy as a, you know, as, as he did on the, the Zoom that morning. So COVID must be uh, treating him nicely. But I think... Mr. Mr. Yellow Hoodie, Mr. Day, walked out of that courtroom thinking, I showed him. <laughs> I showed him. He is he's going back. He's he's doubling down on all his arguments. He's gonna file his motions. He's gonna come back and they're gonna get the exactly, exactly uh the amount of attention they deserve, and they're gonna go straight in the round file with the with the stamp of denied. 
Oh, love it. Love it. It's going to get so good. You, you know, because what's going to happen is as this case proceeds and he, despite all his perfectly logical arguments about uh, subject matter jurisdiction and, uh, you know, the, the lack of there being a, an actual a victim, you know, the, the fictional entity of Michigan uh, charging him, everything else. If fleeing and eluding is the charge, I think. He, he was running from the cops. I don't, I don't know what the original want was, but uh, in, in spite of all these very logical things, it is his Sixth Amendment rights and, you know, him being a, uh, a, a vessel in a contract that was un, under an agreement that this, the Constitution has no hold on. In spite of all of that, this case will proceed and it will go to the logical conclusion, which is most likely, I'll just say it, most likely guilty conviction. Okay, whether that happens at a bench warrant, whether it happens through a jury trial, but that's where it goes. That's that's where it ends up. I'm not sure if the judge here, if Judge Simpson gets it the whole way. I'm not sure if he's going to be the one that uh, that gets to see this all the way through or if it gets assigned to another judge. But hopefully we'll get to follow it all the way through the proceedings. But the further he gets and the the more his, his objections... Uh, just spin his wheels and he gets gets closer and closer to court, I think the more angry he's going to get and the more you're going to see more bailiffs right right behind him throughout this. So that's exciting. So that was a way, that's a way to start, start our Friday, right? It's a lot better than sitting on the side of the road waiting for a tow truck. I mean, I feel, I feel better already right now just for that. So now we get to go back to Arizona because yesterday was insane. Give me just one second. Let me pull it up. Uh, Santa Cruz Superior Court. Okay, here we go. Where are we at? We've got day 11. So we're on day 12. We're on day 12. <laughs> Ellie Feldman, congratulations. 12 months, Orange Courthouse. Yay, Ellie, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for, for a year, a full year of support. I'm still wiping away the laughing tears. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's, it's all good. It, it, honestly, right now, <laughs> it's not poor RA. No, I'm, I am blessed. I'm in a situation where, guess what? My insurance covers the tow truck. Yay, no cost. The fix, it's going to be very reasonable. I've got the best mechanic in the whole world who's going to handle it. It's probably going to be done before I'm done with the live stream today. And, uh, and in the meantime, Mrs. R.A. is in a very comfortable, very nice car, which she will probably want me to buy her one of, which I cannot afford. <laughs> but she's uh, with the kids on a field trip. It's, it's all good. And I get, to, I get to go out and turn the A.C. down here in just a minute. Hope oh, phone call's coming in. Let's see if I can get this to work right. Okay, hold on just one second. I've got to get the, the phone routed correctly. Um, you're going to Roadcaster. Let's turn that up right there. Sound to Roadcaster. Hey, can you hear me on the phone? Hey, yeah, I can. Awesome. Does it sound like I'm talking far away, or can you hear my voice properly? Okay, who's, who's on the phone? I missed your name. And now we can't hear you. Oh no! Can you hear me now? A little better. Yes, you're back. Okay. <laughs> and you're gone again. I can't. Hello. Oh, yeah. Uh, what What did you have on your mind? She hung up. Call dropped. I'm sorry. That it was a very bad connection. So I and it was on. I believe it was on your end because I'm on the internet. So I, I can't really move and get a better signal. But uh, I saw it came in from a 2-7 area code. So it's Vicky. She lives in a cave, says Ivan. <laughs> now my home phone's ringing, and I'm the only one here, but I cannot answer it. All right. Uh, it was Vicky. We want Vicky. We want Vicky, says Brandy. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was working. It just, uh, I think, maybe talk. Let's see if you can stand closer to the... I don't know. I don't know what that is. Do I still have a home phone? Yes, it's a VoIP phone as well, but I don't actually have like a, a landline phone. It's, it's over the internet. People still have home phones? Yes, I do. Because Mrs. Ari doesn't have a cell phone. 
It's, it's literally the, the only thing we have. Okay, we're going to go back to court. If, if the call comes through again, we'll try to, to, uh, to take it during a break. Martha Ivy says, I'm excited. Four months. Thank you for all you do for us. Love the recovery addict. The miss and all in chat. Thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations on four months, Martha. I appreciate that. Um, we are going to jump back in trial. We, we're going to put the spicy meter back up because I don't know. I do not want to know what happens here. And obviously we don't want anyone to spoil it. Um, this was posted 17 hours ago. So we're watching day 12, which happened yesterday. Uh, it's only a half day of trial. So we only have three hours and 23 minutes and 20 and 34 seconds of video from court because the other half of the day, the jury was out at the ranch. Um, I'm not sure if they did a little skeet shooting, maybe, uh, you know, I don't know what they did. Some some photographs, like a little group photos and things like that. I'm not sure what, what went down. Um, we might hear a little bit about that as the lawyers make arguments and, and bring things to the jury's recollection from what they viewed uh, in the argument. But we're, we are very, very near the end of the state's case. It may happen today. I don't know. But uh, they drank from water from the trough. They, they all rode, sun, rode sunny. Um, it was just a great day all around. Um, so... It's always good to have a little vacation day when you're on a jury. So let's jump over to, yeah. to court right here. All right, you can be seated. We're on the record. Records show the presence of counsel and the defendant. The jury is absent. Um, Mr. Jetty or Ms. Ms. Hunley, what, I need to know what remains of the state's case in chief. We're currently in the cross-examination of uh, Detective Barba. And after De Detective Barba, we have Border Patrol agent Tersi. We should be quick. I mean, this is from the state's perspective, quick from our perspective. And then we have the finishing up of dispatch witness on Friday and Detective Ienza. And that's it. Thank you. Um, what is the defense anticipating of its case in terms of how much time you're going to need? Your Honor, we're hoping to get through it fairly quickly. We have Sheriff Hathaway, we have Border Patrol Agent Lyugan, Border Patrol Agent Gorman, and Detective Raul Rodriguez that we anticipate calling, and then possibly the defendant, possibly not. Give me an estimate of how much? Two days. Two days? The way I, I'm just asking. Going, I'd, say, I'd say yes. Well, all right. Um, I'm going to start imposing time limits in this case on direct and cross-examinations. When we, uh, we've been discussing this case, leading up to the case, and during the trial, uh, counsel informed me, advised me, that this case would take three weeks. Um, I have to rely on what you tell me. I don't know who the witnesses are going to be, what they're going to testify to, or what the duration of time is going to be. I was told it was going to be three weeks. Today is three weeks, right? Today is three weeks. We started on March 21st. Today is three weeks, and the state's still in this case. As I've also been monitoring and asking counsel for how we're doing, how we're progressing on this case, so that I could decide whether and determine whether I needed to exercise any authority over the pace of the case. I was informed uh, by the state that there was a possibility that they would rest last Friday. Here we are on Thursday. Uh, the state's not going to rest today. and. Um, if we continue, then the state will maybe rest at the close of business on Friday. I assume Detective Ainza is going to be a lengthy witness. Um, so clearly, we are behind schedule. This case is going to go to the jury next week. It's going to go to the jury next Thursday. And I'm going to move this case so that that happens. Um, and I'm going to start imposing time limits. Um, this line of cross-examination of Detective Barba, tell me what it is Tell me why it's relevant and what you're trying to do. Are you referring to Ramon, talking about to Detective Barb about Ramon? I am. Ramon is somebody who came forward in this case. He made a false report to law enforcement. Law enforcement collected information from Ramon that was verifiably false. Law enforcement failed to exercise any kind of standard of care over this investigation. It shows law enforcement's bias, and it shows their ineffectiveness in actually being able to investigate the case. It's crucial to the defense to be able to put on this information. So the line of questioning is basically, well, first of all, Ramon's not a witness, right? Correct. He's not going to testify. Ramon came forward. He gave information. Is the defense point of view an argument that he gave false information, correct? correct. All right. Uh, 
they looked at Ramon. They decided for whatever reason not to use Ramon, maybe in part because he wasn't an honest witness or he's not available. But so basically what you're trying to prove is that, as I understand it, through this cross-examination, is you have a witness who gave false information, he's not being used, and you're just trying to determine that the state didn't adequately investigate his yeah. false information? That's true. He's also a potential suspect. Judge, anybody who comes forward to put themselves at the scene of the crime should be looked at as a person of interest. We had a witness testify that because Mr. and Mrs. Kelly were at the scene of the crime, they were persons of interest. Anybody who puts himself there is a person of interest, if not a potential suspect. And we have a right to question the investigation and to challenge them and to get to the bottom of why they didn't pursue pursue other people who are making false reports and maybe potential suspects. Very well. You can do that, but this is this is examination is way beyond the scope of the direct examination. This is uh, evidence that is more properly presented in the defense case in chief. You can present that in the defense case in chief if you want. We're not going to go into it any further right now. It's beyond the scope of the direct examination, and it's more evidence that's to be presented in the defense case in chief. If you wanted to present that in the defense case in chief, you can do that. And if you do that, because of the way we discussed this yesterday in the ruling of the court, is that then um, we're going to play the entire video of the interview. And I don't know, did you determine how long that's going to take? It's only 20 minutes, Your Honor. 20 minutes, that's good. But that'll come out in your case in chief, and that'll come out of the defense time. I just have to object, Judge. I, I think that's going to cause this to take longer. If we have to recall Detective Barba to go through that, it'll take longer. I'm allowed in cross-examination to exceed the scope of direct. I'm not in any way limited by what the state asks this witness on direct. And if I have to call this witness in our case in chief, in chief, then I'm not able to lead the witness, so that's going to take You'll even be able longer. to lead the witness. He's an adverse witness. I'll allow you to lead the witness. The rules provide that if you call a witness and he's associated with an adverse party, the court can allow that. That's the ruling of the court. Let's call the witness to the stand. We're not going to question the witness anymore on this particular point. You have five more minutes with this witness on cross-examination. Judge, I have to object. This witness is very crucial to the defense. I've never been limited to the lead detective. This is the witness who's supposed to be the lead detective. I've never been limited to just five minutes of cross-examination. And this witness testified to all sorts of involvement in this case. This is one of the defense's main witnesses that we have to get to. Judge, limiting me to five minutes of cross-examination with this witness violates... Mr. Kelly's constitution. So you now have four Mr. minutes. Call the witness. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. We make a bill. Don't we need to make a bill? I don't know what that means. Let's just let's Yes, please put forward and have a seat. Oh, my goodness. Can I get the whiteboard, Validia? Please have a seat. She's got to I go remind every witness the, the who appears after they've appeared on a prior day, you're still under oath. Okay. All right? We need the jury, Your Honor. <laughs> Good point. Bring in the jury. Her counsel is basically saying preserve the record for the appeal, um, make a record, special action. She needs, she needs to come straight out with her finishing move. That's it. She needs to start. She's, she's got like zero time with, with the, I cannot believe that this does seem wrong. I mean, this, this seems like grounds for appeal with no warning that defense on the defensive side of their cross-examination is not, is, is then hamstrung that the state got all the time they wanted. The state went over, they're over by a week on their case when defense is paying the price. This is, this is serious appeal, appellate issues written all over it. If I was Mr. Kelly, I'd be, I'd be smiling right now because nothing, I, I, I personally believe if this stands, 
if the defense is hamstrung like this, nothing that happens in this case is going to stand against him. Obviously, if he's if he's uh, um, if he's uh, not convicted, if they if they say he's not guilty, that will stand. But if he's convicted, yeah, this is this is this is the equivalent of uh, an, an offsides or call in, in American football where the other team has crossed the line before you hike the ball. You get a free go. If, even if they intercept the ball, you get it back. So I think, I think he's, uh, he just got a freebie. They got a free pass on this trial. They can recall and lead. I'm not sure if that will save it because they're, they're also hamstrung with time. Please be seated. The record will show the presence of all the jurors' counsel and the defendant. Juror number four, I had a conversation with your point of contact uh, from your employment. Uh, she's very accommodating. The clerk is going to work out the details. I don't anticipate a problem. Right. Maybe that's what's said. All right. Um, witness is still under oath, and you can continue with your cross-examination. Thank you. Good morning. Detective Barba, I'm going to just have a look at a very basic map, okay? And I want you to help me put some things on this map, okay? You were at the house. This is Mr. Kelly's house, let's say, all right? Sure. You are aware that the body of the victim was discovered to the east of the house, correct? Yes, ma'am. So body's over here. And this distance from the body to the house, that's about 115 yards. Is that correct? I didn't do the measurement, so I wouldn't know the measurement. Is that approximately right? Sure. OK. And this is north, this is south, so down here is the border wall, okay? And would you agree, I know you didn't do the measurement, but that distance as the crow flies, that's about one and a half miles, is that correct? Again, More or I, less? Sure. I know you didn't do the measurements, but it's pretty far, right? Now I wanna ask you, Let's say I'm a witness in this case. So let's say I come forward and I make a statement to you. Can you see this okay? Mm -hmm. We can go towards the front of your... All right. There we go. Better? Yep. All right. So let's say I'm a witness in this case and I come forward and I tell you that I was standing right behind the victim when he was shot and the house was on my left. That would put me to the west, right? That's where I would be if I told you I was facing south and the house was on my left. Would you agree that would put me out here? Yes. And what if I came forward and I told you when this happened, I was 10 right yards hand. away from the house. That would be inconsistent with the facts that you observed, right? Well, direction and distance is subjective. I mean... I don't well, if I say I'm facing south and the house is to my left, let I'm the facing fin the border let wall. Let the witness finish his answer. You can answer. Direction and distance is subjective. Um, for example, if I'm out in the wilderness and I don't have an idea of where it's north, or uh, I'm just going to guess. <clears throat> okay. But let's say I'm pretty good with distance. And I tell you, I'm facing south, and the house is to my left, and I'm 10 yards away from the house. And I'm pretty good with distance. That's inconsistent with the facts that you observed. Is that right? If you're good with distance and you have knowledge of um, northwest, east, then that would be a correct statement. OK. And let's say I tell you that I'm looking at the border wall and that it's two football fields away. If I tell you that, that's inconsistent with the facts also, right? Yes. What if I tell you that the shots, as I'm standing here, are coming from my right? Shots are coming from over here. That's what I tell you. That's inconsistent with the facts of this case also, correct? Yes. What if I tell you that there's a horse over here? Well. Oh. There we go. <laughs> in between me and where the shots are coming from, and that that horse got shot in this incident. That's also inconsistent with the facts. Is that right? Right. And what if I also tell you that while I'm standing right behind this person, the victim who gets shot, he falls over backwards. 
and lands on his back. That's also inconsistent with the facts of this case, correct? And again, the facts are how the body was located or? The body was located on face down, correct? Correct. There's no evidence that you saw that anybody rolled this person over, is that right? Again, I didn't go to the scene. Um, I was not part of picking up the body, so any manipulation or the lack of manipulation, I wouldn't be able to testify. But you do know that the body was located face down, right? That's correct. Okay. And if a witness tells you this person fell over backward and landed on his back, and that's where he lay, that would be inconsistent with the facts, right? Right. Unless somebody rolled that body over after he fell down. Is that right? Well, it also goes back to high-stress incidents. Um, to my knowledge and the training I've received in high-stress incidents, you kind of tend to block specific uh, details of the incidents. Do you think high-stress could account for facts like this being so far different from the facts you observed on the ground? Definitely. You think that's high-stress could do that? Yes. You would agree that Mr. Kelly would be under a lot of stress during this incident, correct? Sure. So if you're giving this person the benefit of the doubt, then you should give Mr. Kelly the same benefit of the doubt, correct? Well, I'm not giving anybody the benefit of the doubt. I'm just stating what my training and my experience has taught me. You have training and experience regarding false reports also, correct? That's correct. Going dead on the handheld. And could that also be something that explains why the story is so different from the facts? It's a po uh, sure. It's a possibility that this just could be a false report, right? And the evidence that we gathered throughout the investigation, I don't believe so. If somebody came forward and gave you this story, you would still say that that's a credible person who gives you this story? That, including everything else that we gathered in the investigation. When you, you interviewed Daniel Ramirez, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You went into Mexico to interview him, correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. Why did you go into Mexico to interview him? Because Daniel couldn't cross into the United States legally. You could have called him on the phone, right? He doesn't have access to a phone. You could have arranged some sort of Zoom call, correct? He doesn't have access to internet. You could have spoken with Mexican officials to arrange something, correct? Correct. And you didn't do that, did you? No. You and Sheriff Hathaway crossed into Mexico to conduct a criminal investigation in Mexico, correct? Well, it was a witness statement, witness interview. Is taking a witness interview part of a criminal investigation? Sometimes. Was taking this witness interview part of a criminal investigation? Yes. So you conducted part of a criminal investigation in Mexico, correct? Correct. Mexico. All right, thank you very much. Redirect examination. Thank you, Your Honor. She got cut off. She Detective, got cut off. Um, defense counsel asked you a number of questions about the Celebrite download of the victim's phone. Do you recall that? Yes, ma'am. She asked you about text messages, correct? Yes, ma'am. And can you tell us, she asked you, were there other messages on the phone? I just want to make sure that redirect is limited in the same way that my cross-examination was limited. You can continue. And I'd like to make a proffer when we're done with this witness. You can continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, wow. Can you tell me, Detective, were there other picture, were there other text messages on the phone? Which phone are we talking about, Ms. Hunt? The victim's phone? Yes, there were. And can you tell us the nature of the other text messages you observed? Yes, yeah, so there were uh, two sets of uh, messages, messages, threads, one on his uh, personal phone message, the, the inbox where you get from his phone number. And then he also had threads through an application called WhatsApp. Um, those Ellie, applications from so the much. WhatsApp threads were screenshotted by the um, investigator who did the download, and they were placed on an individual, uh, individual file for me to review. And then those uh, WhatsApp uh, threads were a numerous amount Thank of um, family pictures. He was involved as, a, I believe he was a coach for his siblings or his um, kids, I'm sorry. Uh, soccer team in in uh, Mexico, so it was a group thread where they were exchanging um, uh, practice dates, uh, dates for the for the games, uh, jerseys, etc. 
Were they also discussing some kind of upcoming tournament? Yes. Now, the defense showed you a picture of the defendant and the, and the download information. Is that right? Correct. And that was state defense exhibit triple I, correct? Correct. And is that, were you able to take a look at that image to determine um, whether that had any location data? Yes. Did it have any location data? It did not. When you took a look at the rest of the items that were on that Celebrite report, um, defense asked you if, to speculate about what this picture depicted. Do you remember that? Correct. And based on what, you, what else you observed on the cell phone, is there anything else on that cell phone that gives you an idea what this um, photograph is about? Objection, relevance. We tried to introduce other photos from the cell phone, and the court didn't let us do it, so I, I don't think The think question was directed to this particular photo, which is in evidence. The objection's overruled. Um, well, if I remember correctly, that the date on that picture is on the 21st of January 2023. A few days prior to that, there's a video, uh, January 18th of 2023, where you can hear uh, Mr. Wittimea uh, speaking with a group. Wait, 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 wait. Without the telling question us, was about the photograph. We're not getting yes. into anything else. Without telling us what, what folks said, were you able to ascertain from the video what was happening? Yes. What was it? Again, again the question, I thought the question was, what can he ascertain about this from looking at this photo, right? Judge, the question was, the defense asked this witness to speculate what this photograph was about. Welcome back, Kim. And this witness observed within a couple of days of this photograph other video that put this in context. And so that's why I'm asking the witness this question. And that was specific to the defense's question to and this witness. Does the defense have that? Does the defense have that? That they, other video? they do, Judge. It's all on the cell right. I haven't been able to see the video, Judge. There was some description of a video in Detective Barba's report. We weren't able to find that on the cell right. All right. Let's move on to another topic. Just to follow up with the defense's question, are there any other things when you look at this that you think might be a possibility with respect to what you observed based on what the defense asked you? Yes, um, with the binoculars that he was wearing, I believe that he might have been hunting. You cross the border to hunt? You were asked about your conversation with the medical examiner's office. Is that right? Correct. Do you even remember who you spoke to at the medical examiner's office? I do not. Doesn't hunting require and a firearm? And if Dr. Tim testified it wasn't her, do you believe that she was accurate? Yes. Did you write the, doc the documentation that's in the medical examiner's report? I did not. Were you providing that information very early on in this case? Yes. Was that before you even attended the autopsy? That's correct. Did you have any opportunity to review that documentation prior to it going into the medical examiner's report? I did not. Um, have you ever had an opportunity to determine whether it was accurate? No, the, when it was presented to me yesterday was the first time I saw it. Is the, are there some things in that documentation that are inaccurate? Yes. Do you recall what the items are that are inaccurate? I would have to refresh my recollection of the document. Do you know who declared um, the Mr. Butimea deceased? I believe it was Deputy Lopez. Okay. So you be that's your belief from what you learned that night. Is that correct? Correct. I want to ask you about some questions the defense asked you with respect to Exhibit 130. Um, that's the samples that you were provided, that you provided to RJ Lee Group. And I want to make sure I understood some of your testimony. Um, the defense, when they were asking you those questions yesterday, asked you if all of the sample went into the same vial. At least that's how I understood the question. Is that how you collected the information, the data? Each the, sample went into an individual vial. 
and so you had how many separate vials? Five. And so when you collected from each item, each one went into its own vial, is that right? That's correct. All right, thank you very much. Any oh, questions for this rough. witness from members of the jury? We do. Yes. Why did you go to Mexico to conduct an investigation? What authority do you have in Mexico to conduct the investigation? Talk about jurisdiction. Wow. Okay, we're going to try to listen. It's going to sound terrible, but... Question, why was a hotel in, how's that better? Why was a hotel in Nogales, Sonora, Mexico chosen to interview the witness at instead of the U.S. Mexico Port of Entry or the Mexican Consulate building? Why was a hotel chosen instead of the Mexican Consulate or a, ho uh, or a hotel building, Mexican Consulate or the Second Port of Entry? question from this witness, why was only part of this meeting recorded. Why well, was only part of the meeting recorded? Oh. Is, is that in reference to the meeting in Mexico? Or? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's part of the number one. Part of number two. You stated you received a handgun, cell phone, and a magazine from Sergeant Lopez upon arrival at the Kelly residence with the first search warrant. How were these items obtained? Was there a warrant for these items prior to arrival? I'm just trying to make sure I'm clear. She's asking about the stuff that she received, the handgun, and the Miss Kelly's phone earlier was our warrant. This is question number two from the second juror. In earlier testimony, Sergeant Rodriguez confirmed a photo he had taken as a single footprint at the scene, and many others' testimonies confirmed there were no other signs of foot traffic around the body. Yet there has been testimony by witnesses there. In your opinion, how is this possible? You can't speculate, I don't think. That one might not be allowed. All right. um, questions from another juror, and Marcus Barba, three. Was the geofence warrant executed in June, or did Google go back chronologically to January 30th? Oh, they're asking about how the geofence warrant works, uh, and they did go back in time. They can do that retroactively. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. A couple so of questions from the jurors for the witness. Um, question, why was a hotel in Nogales, Sonora, Mexico, chosen to interview the witness at, instead of at the U.S.-Mexico port of entry or the Mexican consulate building? So um, I, I believe this part of, of that incident didn't get clarified. Um, we weren't in a room in the hotel. We were in the public area of the restaurant of the hotel. And um, subsequent to that, we moved to a lounge that was empty at the time, however, so accessible, accessible to the public. Um, the reason why we moved from the restaurant to the, lo to the lounge was because the restaurant was um, busy. <clears throat> there were a lot of individuals uh, consuming in the restaurant. We went over to the lobby, and we chose that place was because it was a little bit more um, less uh, noisy, less crowded, and it allowed us to do the interview more appropriately. But the question was directed towards why, why, wasn't, uh, why weren't alternative locations of either the port of entry or the Mexican consulate used? The, the location was uh, chosen by Sheriff Hathaway, and I was under his direction. Second, another question from the same juror. Why was only part of this meeting recorded? So um, the recording was a decision made by Sheriff Hathaway. Um, when I conducted the meeting with Daniel, um, I just took notes about our conversation. The reason why I decided to do that was because this was a highly publicized um, case. Um, I didn't want to bring any unwanted attention towards us that could contaminate the interview um, because recording somebody in public when you're sitting down is uncommon, so it's going to bring some some eyes to us, and they're going to start wondering, what are you guys doing? And I didn't want those extra eyes um, contaminated. All right. Um, be, there may be follow-up questions by the lawyers to these questions. Questions from another juror. You stated you received a handgun, cell phone, and a magazine from Sergeant Lopez upon arrival at the Kelly, Kelly residence with the service of the first search warrant. 
How were these items obtained? Was there a warrant for these items prior to arrival in the jury system? I'm just trying to make myself, make sure I'm clear. Um, yes, the items were documented on the warrant and they were just transferred um, uh, from hand to hand. Deputy Lopez had collected them and then he gave them to me. All right, so they were obtained pursuant to a search warrant. That's my belief, so yes. Another question, if you know, um, in earlier testimony, Sergeant Rodriguez confirmed a photo he had taken of a single footprint at the scene, and there have been other testimonies we confirmed that there were no other signs of foot traffic around the body. Yet there has been testimony by witnesses there. In your opinion, how is that possible? So I, the question really is, a single footprint, footprint was found, but there's been testimony of a lot of other foot traffic in the same area. Um, how is it possible that only one footprint was found, if I understand, if you know, if I, if I understand the question correctly? So I was not part of the collection of the body or the inspection of the surroundings. So I wouldn't be able to testify whether there was or there wasn't. And uh, that would be my answer. All right, final question from another juror. Was the geofence warrant executed in June? Or did Google go back chronologically to January 30th? Yeah, so when I served the warrant to Google, um, I set a specific time date, um, time on the warrant from uh, January 29th to, I believe it was February 1st. So it went back to that time frame. Very well, hand the questions to the clerk. Follow up questions to the questions from the jurors by the state. This is, this is incredible. Do you have any idea why the restaurant was chosen as opposed to other locations? I know you indicated that the, serge, that the sheriff picked it. I, I don't know. Was, it, was the area quiet enough where you were that you were able to conduct the interview? Yes. I think that's all I had, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Larkin. Just to be clear, you did not understand that Sheriff Hathaway had involved any officials from the Mexican government before conducting this investigation in Mexico, correct? Not to my knowledge. And did you, you didn't think it was odd at all that you were going into Mexico to conduct this investigation? Well, to my understanding and what was explained to me, um, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Um, he has a lot of background with DEA and they do that often. Um, they typically have authority to do that, correct? I'm not a federal agent, so I'm not sure what they have authority or don't have authority. All right. When you interviewed Daniel in Mexico, you did not record it, right? But right. then Sheriff Hathaway did record a portion of this after you had spoken with Daniel, correct? Well, it was immediately, it, it was not like there was a break in between. It was kind of immediately. So you spoke with Daniel for what, 40 minutes or so, right? right. And then Sheriff Hathaway recorded the next six minutes of that interview, correct? Correct. And you stated that you don't record, in, or you didn't record this interview because you were concerned about privacy, correct? Correct. But Sheriff Hathaway went ahead and recorded the interview, correct? Correct. So he wasn't, he didn't share your concerns, correct? Correct. Is it standard practice to do an interview and only record a small portion of that interview? That's no. not standard practice, right? No. Did this, did Daniel, did he ever tell you that his last name was really Varela? I don't, I don't recall. Okay. You never noted in your report that his last name could possibly be Varela, right? No. And also present at that interview were two family members of Gabriel, correct? That's correct. And some guy by the name of Juan Carlos Rodriguez, correct? Right. You didn't look into him at all, did you? Well, he was identified as the uncle and the facilitator of the, of the interview. That's what he told you, right? And the daughters confirmed the rel that he was a relative. You didn't confirm that independently, right? Correct. I don't have anything else, Judge. Thank you. Any other questions for this witness from any members of the jury? Whoa. Seeing none, thank you, sir. You can step down, and the state can please call your next witness. Can I call him, Tercy? Yeah. State calls Agent Tercy.
something something's wrong there. Something's wrong. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's just sloppy. I think I think you could infer that a negative connotation from that overall behavior. Thank you, sir. If you'd please come over here to the witness stand and have a seat. Good morning, Agent. Good morning. Real briefly, can you introduce yourself to the jury? Yes. My name is Joshua Tercy. I've been with the United States Border Patrol for 11 years. I've been a supervisor for almost a year now, and I've been at the Nogales station for about nine years. I'm going to hone in directly on why you're relevant in this case. Were you asked to produce some video, BP video surveillance? Yes, I was. Were you the video operator on the day of January 30th of 2023? Yes. And just so we have a background, how, off, how much experience do you have operating the videos for BP? Um, so I've been operating the, the cameras for Border Patrol for Nogales Station on and off for about four years, four or five years. -ish. And in that operation time frame, have you also trained other Border Patrol agents on operating that camera system? Yes. Um, I'm a certified trainer for several different operations or operating systems that we have for Border Patrol. So I train other agents and I also train DOD personnel, so Department of Defense personnel whether it's going to be National Guard, Air Guard, that come down to the border for their missions. And you were asked to provide some, some review of some Border Patrol surveillance videos in this case, right? Yes. You want permission to approach the witness? Yes. Agent Tercy, I just provided you Government Exhibit 146 and 147, and those are item numbers 3AF, A is in Apple, F is in Frank, and 6AF. Do you see both of those in front of you? Yes, I do. Did you review those uh, prior to testimony today? I did. And you watched those videos? I did. All right. And before I get into those videos, those cameras on January 30th, um, were they operational? They were. They were fully operational. Within specs? Yes. I don't know what I just meant by that, but they were, but Border Patrol, they were working fine. Yes. Usually once a shift, at the beginning of our shift, we always check um, to make sure GPS is right, times, dates, and everything like that before we start our duty that day. So the time and dates are correct on the video? Correct. And in, in that video, we see some direction of the, the cameras, right? Yes. Do you recognize the... the the location of where those cameras are facing? Yes, I do. What, do you remember the property? Um, yeah, they were facing the Vermilion Ranch. And Vermilion Ranch is? It's going to be, um, I guess, east side of Nogales. I mean, depending on which camera I was used, it's either going to be east or west of the camera system. Would you know, if you know, would, you, would it be the defendant's property? Yes. You're going to move to admit Government Exhibit 3AF and 6AF in evidence. Or uh, Government Exhibit 146 and 147. What is it? They're the two DVDs. Can you please hold them up for me? Let me grab them for you. Just red paper that we got. It looks like red paper. <laughs> Ask this witness a couple questions. You may. Um, in reference to states 146 and 147, there are a couple. Uh, is it DVDs 
that are each each exhibit has one. Did you have a chance to preview it before coming in? I did. And did you initial this? Did I initial the DVDs? Yes. No, I did not. So you don't know what's on this individual DVD and this individual DVD? Well, those are the ones that I saw, but I did not initial them. How could you tell? I guess I can. Okay. And then I will object until he has a chance to preview it. Play the link. Sustain. Sustain. All right, our break agent will we'll have you review these two items, but let's just talk that was about an oversight. Let's talk about the area around Vermilion Ranch, you said? Yes. And Vermilion Ranch, um, just so we know, are, are there any pine trees in the area, in the greater area? Yes, uh, the north end of the, or well, north of the ranch in like the Keno Springs Village area, there's a lot of uh, tall pine trees, or pine tree looking trees. And on the, on the video, we're not gonna publish the video, but on the video, you reviewed from start to finish the relevant time periods? Yes. Do you remember the, the first time, the, the first date where something was picked up, something was imaged? I believe it was around 2.40 p.m. on January 30th. And just so we know these cameras, I'm not going to get into the operational use of these cameras because it's Border Patrol sensitive information, right? Correct. These cameras, though, they span, how big of a distance do these cameras span? Um, they can see the immediate area within, I'd say, like a 10 to 20 foot radius of the camera all the way up to 15 plus miles, depending on the clarity of the day. So these, they're, they're operational miles. through a vast area of the southern border? Correct. And are they sensitive to motion? Are they sensitive? Are you allowed to, s to indicate that to me? Um, I mean, due to border security, I can't disclose exactly the operating systems of the cameras and their actual capability. but. Um, they're fairly sensitive, yes. And it, it becomes, and you're operating the, the camera, so are you able to, not get into some of the details, but are you able to direct where the cameras go if, if you get an indication that something's happening? Yes, I actually manually control the cameras. They're not automated. Were you, were you given a contact? Where, did someone inform you of an event that happened on January 30th around 2.42? Yes, around 2.30 p.m., I um, received a phone call from BPA Jeremy Morcel that uh, he received a phone call from George Allen Kelly about subjects on his property. And what was the next, what did you do in response to that phone call? Um, I immediately put the exact information that BPA Morcel told me. I put that on via radio to the agents in the area, and then I notified my supervisor so he could call the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Department and get them involved. And just so we know, um, we'll have you review these, but you, you've reviewed 3AF and 4AF. Yes. Or 6AF prior, right? Yes. And we'll, we'll get confirmation on this, but is there anyone on the video other than SO, Border Patrol, or the defendant and his dogs? No. That's all the questions I have, Your Honor. Thank you. Cross-examination. Thank you, Judge. The pine trees noted on Keno Springs Ranch, is that what you said? Um, I refer to it as Keno Springs Village, the immediate area north of his property. It's like a small neighborhood with pine trees around it. And that's at least a mile away from his home? Um, I couldn't tell you exactly, but I'd say it's within a mile. It's what? Probably within a mile. Okay. I mean, he has a large property, so it's not like they're next door neighbors or anything, is it? You uh, look at this terrain all the time. It's yes. a good distance away. Yeah, it's a decent distance. Okay. So there is no pine trees on his prop on, on George Allen Kelly's property, is there? I'm not sure about every single tree on his property. But you sure know about a pine tree on someone else's property. Well, it's in a surrounding neighborhood where there's a lot of them. Okay. So that's some other location? Yes, just okay. north of this ranch. And then you mentioned that you got a call from uh, Border Patrol, um, Marcel, and isn't it true that the information wasn't just that there was subjects on the property, but that it was even more intense than that, like there was weapons and backpacks and all the things that you should be concerned about, correct? Yes, I was just paraphrasing the phone call. Okay, but you left out the serious part. 
Yes. Okay. And now you noted in your report that speaking to uh, Border Patrol agent Marcel that the defendant that stated that the gunshots may have been in the distance but is unsure. That didn't come from Marcel. Is there anyone else you might have talked to? No, the only person I talked to on the phone was Marcel. And that was and the second. The phone only call. testimony that Marcel has to this court is he heard gunshots in his direction and he saw his horse running by. How does that change happen on your report? That's how was he misrepresenting it to you, or did you sum up again or misrepresent that on your report? Which one? I put on my report from what I remember the conversation was. So then you're saying that Marcel was potentially could have been misrepresenting if he testified as something different. That's not what I'm saying. There were other people that you observed in your videos uh, there was a group of three men running, of which Border, Pro Border Patrol intercepted them um, on a roadway, and one of them appeared to be hiding and getting uh, and avoiding that Border Patrol agent. Do you know which view I'm looking at um, that I'm discussing right now? I don't, because it didn't pertain to that area near his ranch. Well, it's all on your videos that supplied the state, which supplied me. And so there's these other incidences of some people on top of a hill also, hovering over, looking down, a small group maybe. Did you consider that in your assessment of what was going on? Yes. The, what you're referring to is the people on top of a hill that are looking down. That's actually going to be... I'd say approximately four miles to the east and south of the international boundary in Mexico. And it's closer to the 6 o'clock hour, correct? Which allows them the time from 2.30 to 6 to get in that general direction, correct? I don't recall the exact time of when okay. they record on top of the hill. I believe it was before the incident. It was the, before the shift when I came in. It's 6 p.m.? No, it was prior to that. No, sir. And the uh, different people that were around and the Border Patrol, anyone bother to take, uh, get information that you're aware of to determine who these people were? The ones on top of the hill? And the ones that I mentioned that were being chased down by a Border Patrol agent? The ones on top of the hill were in Mexico, so we can't really obtain information about them or who they are. So if they're on top of the hill and they might have a walkie-talkie too, maybe they're lookouts? Yes, it's possible. Okay. Because being on the hill allows the elevation to talk to people that are on the lower grounds to get to their locations, correct? Correct. And it's very hard for you to record all the activity because um, these people that are commuting in these areas understand where the cameras might be, correct? Yes. They also seem to travel through these ravines, arroyas, to get to their locations, which hinders the ability for you to see, correct? Yes, they usually take routes that are usually harder for us to detect them. And the fact that there's foliage everywhere, um, in some places more dense than others, makes it hard in that area to she locate people commuting like in that direction, correct? Foliage, two That's syllables. Correct. Now, foliage. we know that we have information to believe that first from Mr. Kelly, if there were five individuals traveling across this property, of which Mrs. Kelly saw two, okay? That's just earlier testimony. Then we also learned in this case, and I'm just setting you up for the question, um, of people that could have been at this location, okay? And then I have a camera question. There were possibly two or maybe uh, four people at the location around where the body was found. Now, with that said, you can't find any of these people, and yet we hear testimony and admission of being there. How does your cameras help this case? I mean, I don't know how they would help the case, but 
I'll um, pass the witness. Well, you asked the question. Um, is that your answer? I thought he said he couldn't ha how it help. I, I don't know how. Can you repeat the question? How would it help? All right, he answered the question. He doesn't know. Okay. Redirect. Boom. Oh, wow. Agent Tercy, referring to the message or the communication you had with Agent Marcel, um, do you know, do you remember, recall what he told you? Yes. He, uh, he told me that George Allen Kelly told him via cell phone that he saw five subjects carrying large packs with rifles and they had shot at him. And when you, when you, when Agent Marcel tells you that, I mean, Agent Marcel, Border Patrol is trained on conveying correct information, right? That is correct. Because lives are in play when there's an active shooter. Yes, especially with a situation with a call like that. It's taken very seriously. Okay, and, but you're not questioning whether or not there's veracity to that statement. You assume it's true because someone is claiming there's an active shooter. Correct. And going to the images, I just want to make sure we understand that the one image with people on a hill, that was in Mexico. Yes. Are there routinely people up on hills in Mexico as scouts and people who watch? So that hill that she's referring to and that I'm referring to, I remember seeing a subject up there wearing a red shirt. And it was prior to my shift coming in when I reviewed the footage. And there's typically people up there 24-7. And of the... The, the image about people being chased down, that's not anywhere near the location of the defendant's property? I actually am not aware of exactly where another group of uh, illegal aliens were caught. And subject to recall for admission, um, I'm done with this witness, Your Honor. We'll have him come after the break. Any questions for this witness from any members of the jury? Very well. Seeing none, you can step down, sir. I think the prosecutors might want to talk to you about what they might do George, further, and you can call George your next witness. Snickers. He's hangry. Eric Herman's going to call Detective Ienza. They're going to take the witness out to watch the DVDs. They have the evidence. They're going out to watch the initial very swear quickly. That the testimony you're about to give in the matter before the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Thank you, sir. You know the drill. You know the drill. Have a seat, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Ready, Detective? Good morning. May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Detective Ainza, can you please introduce yourself to the uh, jury? Nice. Good morning. My name is Jorge Ainza. My last name is A-I-N-Z-A. And I'm one of the detectives assigned to the Criminal Investigations Division in Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover some, some housekeeping things first, lay the foundation so we can get some admission of some evidence in this case, right? That's fine. And just so the Jury knows, were you the lead investigator in this case? Yes, I was. And just so we have the time period, when were you called in to assist on this investigation? I received a call from my sergeant, which is a supervisor for CID, named Sergeant Flores. I got the call at 629. And we'll start off with government exhibits. We're going to start with some photographs first, and then we'll cover some of the other physical items here before we get into our time period. So you were called to the scene, and you took photographs on January 30th? It I'm was, sorry. Sorry. The search warrant. I'm talking about... Let me scratch this. I'm doing a poor job. Let's go back in time and make sure we lay out the time period. I love you were that called sound to bite. the case at what time? At 6.29 in the evening. And where were you called to? I was called to respond to the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office CID. All right, that's the building next door to the courthouse? Yes, it's down the hill. All right, at 629, did you stay at that facility? Yes, I did. 
And what time did you actually eventually go to the scene? I arrived at the Cali Ranch a little after midnight, I believe it was 0039, which is 1239 at, uh, in the early mornings on the 31st. On the 31st? Yes. When you're at CID, you're, you're, you're communicating with officers on scene? Yes. You're communicating with Border Patrol? That's correct. You're communicating with dispatch? That's correct. And you also do interviews of Mr. Kelly and Mrs. Kelly? That is correct. When they come to the scene, we come that, to the CID building. That's correct. And then you also prepared the first search warrant. That zero, is correct. Search warrant 007, right? SW 23-007, that's correct. And then a uh, little past midnight, you go out and execute that search warrant. That's correct. Ms. Hulley's got 34. And you took photographs on that, that morning? Yes, it was the early mornings on the 31st. I'm going to show you. I mean, have you reviewed exhibit, government exhibit 34? Yes, I have. And those are photographs of the evening of the search warrant 007? That is. Inside and outside? That's correct. I'm waiting for Ms. Hunley to... We could talk about the electronic version. If Ms. Hunley wants to drive for me... Does Ms. Hunley want to drive? Is she going to be the designated driver today? And you reviewed that Government Exhibit 34, the actual physical disk that, in, that has been submitted to the clerk? That's correct. We'll find that disk. Um, I'm going to show you just for you. So you, we're going to admit, I'm going to move to admit all these photographs. We admitted some of them partial, but we're going to admit all of them. So when Ms. Ms. Hunley get them up? And this is just for the, okay, the, just for the witness. A little bit disgusting. Like yeah, I said, there's one. been subsets admitted. I you, you've been sitting the entire trial, right? Yes, I have. All right. So we're going to show. I got the, the screen up. If Miss Henley can go through that at, at a pretty brisk pace, those look familiar to you? Yes, they do. She's scrolling through those. I saw that those also include pictures from a different search warrant, right? That's correct. What search warrant was that? That is SW23-008. So there's also photographs in there from, the, technically there's two search warrants on the 31st. They're early morning hours and then later in the day, right? That's correct. And exhibit 34 contains photographs from both search warrants. That's correct. <laughs> And there's also pictures of autopsy on there? I haven't seen them yet. Okay. It's still scrolling.
There are the autopsy photos. Is she scrolling through? All those look familiar to you? They all do, yes. You're the, you're the photographer? Yes, I am. Those are fair and accurate representations of the photographs you took? Yes, they are. Was it? Yeah, just to just to make sure we comply. Okay, as they fight over all this documents and paperwork, sorry, I'm working on stuff in the background. the spicy meter because it's Wait, been crazy this morning. You're right, the government's going to admit, there's going to be a condition here, the government's going to admit, move to admit, Defense government exhibit 34, images 4168 to 4519. There are some... Slow down, slow down. I'm sorry. 4168 to what? 4519. After that is pictures of evidence and we want to comply so we're going to take out some of those photographs. So. For, for this time being, 4168 through 4519. Under uh, our 404B um, issues that we have, which are... Let's pick this up. Oh, that's, 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 I think I know what's going on. I want to be sure. Okay, I'm going to... We're going to listen in, guys. So we're going to try. Got to crank the volume to do that. So guard, guard your ear holes. Something redacted, omissions. You can only hear the judge, but you can't hear counsel. He's turning away from his microphone. It's hard to hear him. Judge is reviewing the pictures. He keeps saying, scroll up. 4, 5. Talking about specific pictures that might be objectionable. Still looking at more pictures. Prosecutor is doing a very poor job covering his mouth as he talks. Clearly, has never done much with uh, the NFL. There are at least two that are objectionable. Uh, so, uh, 
What do you, what do you intend to publish? Do you intend to publish anything? What are you doing? Do you intend to publish anything? Yes, the court's going to admit part. Court's going to reserve ruling on part of it as well. Okay. We found Exhibit 34, Enzo. So we're going to come at break. We'll come back to Exhibit 34. You also took photographs. of the outside of the property, right? With the tree? That's correct. And some, I believe some weathered shell casings, is that right? That's correct. I'm gonna show Defense Council Government Exhibit 46. So all this happened before, the morning of the jury view. So all this palpable tension existed while they all went on a field trip together. You took photographs of the outside where the tree branch was, right, Detective? That's correct. All right. I'm going to show Government Exhibit 46, and I have Bates numbers 16142. One six five six. <laughs> Lawyer's like, I don't want it. I don't want you look at it. Detective, as she's, oh, I don't want to distract. Uh, who made the video, Steve? Was it the Zoom, a Zoom video like this? Or was it a news broadcast? I did not watch it. No objections, Your Honor. 46, is that right? 46 of those bait numbers, excuse me. Uh, Exhibit 46 was admitted. Detective, I'm going to show you we we'll just put it on. This is just to remind you what 46 is. I'm just going to show you a couple photographs from this, okay? That's fine. First, I'm going to show you permission to publish your own. Granted. That's a picture of what, Detective? That is a picture of the horse that was located inside the paddock which shows two ladders on the first fence line. And just so the Horses jury knows, what is a paddock? It's a piece of property that's fenced in between two fence lines just to keep horses, cows, that is saturated to a certain area for a certain time. Fenced in, right? That's correct. I'll also show you, and just so you know, that's exhibit 46, image, base number We have a reference here. I'm going to show you Exhibit 46, base number 1646. Did the judge just get a note handed to him? You recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. What's that photograph of? This photograph is uh, depicting the rear of the residence. You can see the first fence line 
right behind the fence line is the smoker. And then you show the back of the residence. And there's a, there's a canine in this picture? Yeah, to the left bottom, there's a black canine. I'm gonna show you a picture. Base number 1649, same exhibit. What's that a photograph of? That's a photograph of one of the branches, trees located within the paddock. The broken branch. You also took photographs of. This is the first time I've watched it. I can't tell you what's at the next. autopsy, right? That's correct. I hope the jury all gets to climb the ladder. I'm going to show Defense Counsel, Government Exhibit 72. waiting taking their time reviewing stuff because they can they have the right to judge might not like it but they definitely have the right to review this judge doesn't like it no objections no objections your honor Thank you. 72 72 is admitted. You also did interviews of Miss Wanda and the defendant, right? Miss Wanda Kelly and the defendant, right? That's correct. Uh, it um, sounds like you're going to move into a new area right now. Is that right? So uh, it's a good time to take our mid-morning break. Is that all right? It's 945. Uh, we're going to take about a 20-minute break. I'll stay here with the lawyers. We'll come back about uh, 10.05, depending on how long this takes for me to talk to them. We'll be in recess until about 10.05. Thank you. Excuse, excuse the jury. The judge is going to talk to the lawyers. How does the judge look right now? If you could uh, just take a read on his demeanor, attitude, general feelings. He's going to talk. He didn't say I'm going to talk with the lawyers. I'm going to talk to the lawyers. I'm, I'm ready to up the spice meter to two just based on how he prefaced this conversation. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> the director show the absence of the jury. Ms. Larkin, you said you wanted to make an offer of proof concerning uh, Detective Barba. You can do so. The court reporter and the clerk will remain in the courtroom to record your, your offer of proof. Judge, in a, can you hear me? And he left. Oh, OK. He left. So in addition to obtaining testimony about the false report provided by Ramon, the cross-examination was going to continue to explore inconsistencies between Ramon and Daniel in terms of the inconsistencies that they made with each other, as well as inconsistencies that their statements were with the physical evidence. Um, the cross-examination was going to further explore the interview that took place with Daniel in Mexico, including exploring inconsistent statements between what he told investigators in that interview and what he testified to in trial in this case. Um, that interview is going to continue to explore the fact that Daniel provided fa a false name to law enforcement in this case. And the cross-examination would also go into 
generally the shell casing testing that was ordered, the forensic testing that could have been ordered, the forensic testing that was not ordered, and further exploring the double standard between the way these so-called witnesses were evaluated versus the way that Mr. Kelly was evaluated, and the cross-examination would continue to explore the inadequacy in this investigation in terms of interviewing people who came forward, who placed themselves at the crime scene as possible suspects. That's it. Wait a minute. And we, we just want to make a further record. Sorry, Denise. You okay? <laughs> make a further record that the fact that our cross-examination was significantly limited violates Mr. Kelly's right to confrontation of these witnesses and due process. And that the judge isn't here. Thank you. Now, Denise, you can go join your family on vacation. No, just kidding. No, you can't. Get a little break. Uh, what happened with the judge? What happened with the judge today? We're going to skip this. It's, that, was, that was a little, a little tense, a little bit tense. I, I feel like we need verdict music for when the judge comes back because it's going to explode. The judge, the judge, literally, his his like blood pressure is through the roof, right now. What the, the judge's hands were tied. He had to do what he just did. Not not leave the room. That was completely up to him. But when she says we'd like to make a proffer, that that basically says, hey, we we are objecting. We need to put for the record. We need, we have to, we have the right to preserve on the record, um, a, an expansion of of what we're going to do. Okay, that. Because when the appellate court reviews this, they have to know what was ruled out and what wasn't. So he says, fine, you can make your proffer. I'm out. And he says, court reporter, you stay. Keep. Where have you ever seen the court reporter preserve something for the record where the judge is not there to rule? What if there's an objection in the middle of her proffer? And I'd also like to proffer that, you know, aliens came down, whatever. She could say whatever she wants on, on the record. And the judge is like, not there? Not there to, to rule on anything that happens because you can't object during a proffer. Oh, man. Okay. Motion to recuse incoming. Let's, uh, let's, or I'm turning the spice meter down because let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's, uh, let's just see if um, possibly, let's skip ahead just a tiny bit. A couple minutes. They get a little break. We're almost halfway through the day. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Okay. So. Everybody, deep breath, deep, deep, deep breath. This is what we're going to do. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to attempt, attempt to soothe the situation briefly. Everyone, if you can uh, just close your eyes with me briefly, deep, deep breaths, allow, allow the fresh air to fill your body, fill your lungs. And then exhale. And with it, as you exhale, allow any tension in your muscles, maybe unclench the fists just a little bit. Relax the shoulders. Let your neck roll just a tiny bit. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. We've had some tense moments. We can reset. We can reset. We can take a, a deep breath. We can, we can be professionals. Okay. One more time. Deep breath. We're going to count to three. Breathe in slowly. One, two, Keep breathing in. Three. That was a deep breath. Hold it, hold it. And out. There we go. Do you not feel better now? Do you not feel like... Like it's a new day. Like opportunities are on the horizon and they are plentiful. We can choose our path from here forward. We are, we're not going to be corralled and forced into a direction that we don't want to go. The sky's the limit. I feel like a new woman, says Sadie. Okay. With that, we are going to uh, go ahead and invite the judge back in. Welcome. Thank you. Well, That's right. Oh, good. He's got a drink. Everything. When did uh, when did the court? When did you did you get a break? Yes, you are. All right. Come sit. 
when did she good, good. step back? Every, everybody's good. Everybody got a break. We got a break. All right. Let's reset and continue with court. Wow. That was crazy. Appreciate it right here. Denise, did you get enough of a break? When did you, did you step out? Yeah. All right. Are you good? You sure? Yeah. Judge is thinking about ready. Oh, he's got a fresh, a fresh cup. It's hot. He's sipping it. Fresh cup. There we go. Council's coming in. Is that almost, a, almost a little smile from the judge. It's, we've got a new man. We're good. I just stiffened up a little bit. Stiffened up. Did your legs stiffen up? Did you stiffen Did up? Did your legs stiffen up? Did you take oh, a walk? Yeah, she took a walk. I could lend you this pad, too. Oh, he's like, he's like, hey, I've got this soft chair. I've got this pad you can use. Do you need a new chair, Denise? It's all about comfort. I mean, your family's on the beach right now in Aruba or the Caribbean. But uh, here you are in court typing for all of us. So we can give you at least a cushion. All right. Here we go. Are we ready to call the jury and proceed? No? No? Still waiting for at least one uh, prosecution lawyer. Everyone's just walking nicely. Nobody's making eye contact yet with a judge. Let's bring in the jury. Yeah, bring the jury. We're good. Whew. All right. She's in the Bahamas. Wait. Court reporter's family's in the Bahamas. There's our, uh, our witness, Detective George Ienza. Hmm. Oh, wait. There's our, our witness. Did he just teleport and come through the door again? I swear I saw him just a minute ago. I looked away. Maybe he went out. He came back. All right. Got the red folder ready to go. Prosecutor's in place. Witness ready to retake the stand. You know, just for procedure, we're just going to have. I we rise. It's a glitch in the matrix. He entered the room twice without exiting. Please be seated. The record will show the presence of all the jurors. Uh, Mr. Jetty is here for the state, and defense counsel and the defendant are present. The witness can retake the stand. We're going to recall Agent oh. Tercy, Your Honor. All right, very well. We're calling Agent Tercy. So Detective Ianza is not going to be on the stand. This is the guy who forgot to initial the, the videos. So we're going to let him uh, authenticate these Looks videos. Looks like we're ready. You ready? Yeah, we're ready. I'm ready, oh. Judge. Agent Tercy, I just showed you, again, uh, Government Exhibit 146 and 147, which, which corresponds to items 3AF and 6AF. You see those? Do you have an opportunity to review those? Yes. An opportunity to verify that that's the images you reviewed earlier? I did. You're going to move to admit Government Exhibit 146 and 147 to evidence. Uh, noticed his initials, so no objection now. 146 and 147 are admitted. And the, no more questions. All right. And thank you, sir. Thanks for your patience. You can step down. You're excused. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor. Oh, wait, hold on. Cross. Uh, hold on. They added something to it. Do I have a right to cross that? OK, sure. I'd yeah, yeah. We're all good. We're all friends here. False alarm, guys. False alarm. Cross examination. Thank you, Judge. I'm just grabbing a couple of photos. I need to get these marked, Harold. 
Taking the spicy meter back down to just our regular confrontational spice. Back down to old spice. <laughs> Now you're going to get us sued, greeners. Judge is mad because I think he had to call one of the jury's employers and say, "Hey, you can't threaten the juror. You know they're serving on the on the jury." And the employer's like, "You said three weeks," and, and he's like, "Yeah, I did." And so now he's mad because the employers you know, sort of got some some beef with the judge. May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes, you may. And show you three exhibits that are now marked as K, uh, triple K, uh, defense triple K, defense triple L, and defense triple M. Okay, would you take a look at these? Yes. And you could just look at them at the table there. Also, show the jurors yet. Triple K. Mm, yeah, poor pick. Just take a look at it. Okay. Okay. Are you able to identify these three photos? The location? Are you able to identify? Is this something that would have came from your surveillance? Yes. Okay. I mean, I don't have access to your surveillance equipment, do I? No, you do not. Okay. So this had to have been provided on some of the videos that you may be within these two videos that has been already entered into evidence, correct? Correct. Okay. And so these accurately depict you possibly during this time period looking around for anyone that might be located in this area based on this call, correct? This is a separate area from the area of the call. It's your cameras though, correct? Correct. It's provided to me, correct? Yes. Okay. What area is this call? Um, this is actually, these subjects are climbing up to a road called Burdone Loop, which is going to be... Um, I'm going to call it east, northeast of uh, Aloha Loop, where it meets uh, Aurora. Okay. Do these photos accurately depict that? Yes. Okay. At this time, I'd like to enter all three exhibits into ev evidence. I've already showed the state. Without objection, exhibits triple K, triple L, and triple M are admitted. Thank you, Judge. Now, what are the dates on these three photos? 130, 2023, 130, 2023, and 130, 2023. And they're all about two, within two minutes of each other. What time? 609, 608.04 to 609 and 22 seconds. PM. Okay. In the evening? Yes, PM. In about, do you know uh, how far this location is from Mr. Kelly's ranch? Um, I would approximately probably. It's probably close to seven miles okay. to the now, west. Are these appear to be young men? Um, I mean, I can't tell. I would, I would assume that they are men, but I mean, I can't definitely tell from the images. Okay. Do they appear to be carrying backpacks? Um, one of them looks like he has a small pack on his back, and the other two do not. And do, were you able to check the other photos? Do they approach a road? Yes. Do they approach, ultimately, if you recall, 
Border Patrol intercepting at least two of them? Um, I don't recall that exactly. There's several operators that operate these camera systems, so it might have been a different operator at the time. Well, why would different operators put these on our evidence if this is what you're capturing for our case? Uh, I, you don't know. I don't know. No. Okay. So you're speculating when you say that, and you're speculating the distance a little bit. You don't know for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm approximating the distance. Okay. But... All right, now these look like healthy people that are out there hiking this terrain, correct? They don't appear to be injured, no. They don't appear to be heavyweight people. They look like they're physically fit just from appearance from this. Yeah, I would say so. Okay, can I have the photos? Mm -hmm. They're a little large, Judge, so can I just pass them amongst the jurors to look at? Any objection? Yeah. Yes, you may. Go ahead. Thank you. Look at the expression on the state attorney. Chin in his hands. So the problem is there were people out there. Should I wait, Judge? <clears throat> no, you're on. There were people out there, and now this could have been almost three hours later from the incident and there are people out there on the move amongst others that could be out there, correct? Yes. I mean, we would typically encounter several groups of illegal aliens a shift. Okay. So the fact that you can't show us anything on the ranch, only around the areas outside of the ranch, means the camera system offers no definite um, assistance in this case, correct? I mean, that's for you guys to decide okay. if it offers assistance or not. So that's a good answer. we do know there were people there. We just don't have anything that supports or doesn't support this case as far as his ranch is concerned, correct? As far as my video footage, yes. Judges get Nancy. And if there was interception, and and I watched the video, and jurors can always try to play it. It's very lengthy and hard to deal with. But there were interception of Border Patrol to, to these people when they got to the road. You would think there would be an incident report made. Is that a procedure that Border Patrol would do based on your knowledge and training? Yes, every apprehension is recorded through uh, usually two different databases or systems that we use for court apprehensions, location, dates, times, and agents involved. Nothing further. Any redirect? No report was made? I'm just going to collect the evidence. Thank you. Again, jurors, uh, we publish that now because it's in the context of, you know, we just heard the testimony. You'll have that exhibit. It's been admitted along with all other exhibits that are admitted when you retire to deliberate. Agent Tercy, um, you received a phone call from <clears throat> Border Patrol agent Marcel on the January 30th? Yes. Approximately what time was that again? 2.30 p.m. And after that phone call, did you manually move cameras over to the location where the incident I did. reported to you? I did. Any capturing of anyone other than Border Patrol, SO, or Mr. Kelly? No, not in the immediate area. And of those photos that were just shown to you, those are photos are from a distance away, right? Yeah, it's a good distance away. And do you know, if you know, when we ask Border Patrol for all surveillance along the, this region, we ask for everything? Do you know if that's what our request was? Yes, and typically when we pull the footage, we'll pull it um, before the incident, a good amount of time after it, and we'll pull all the cameras that could possibly see that area. We ask for it all, and then we give it all. Correct. You know, all right. No more questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Any follow-up questions for this witness? Many members of the jury. Very well. Seeing none, can this witness now be excused? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you again for your patience. Uh, I can take those. I'll give the clerk and your excuse. Thank you. I'll give the exhibits to the clerk. And I think we're recalling Detective yes, Bainzo. All right. Very well.
All right, making good time. Yes, please. Yes, sir. He had a bad morning. Permission for some leeway for the witness to put some gloves on. We're going to go through some physical events. Yes, sir. Detective Ianza, can you step down and put some gloves on for me? Glove up. And we're going to need uh, some scissors. Thank and you. And we need a microphone for the ASMR. Now you're going to feel some pressure. We're going to start off, Agent or Detective Ianza, with item number 16JA. I'll get the exhibit numbers once we start using them. 16JA back there. Exhibit 78, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry, my confusion. You can, you can see the letters are very similar. Just go ahead and open that for me. Sorry, what's the number? 78. Seven. Seven, eight. 78. Seven. 78. 78. Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. That, we're not going to have, this not a show and tell this time because we're just going to make sure we move to admit everything. Is that the backpack that you photographed or someone photographed on the day of? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, we should get the microphone. Now the microphone's contaminated. Oh, he's got a stand. Good job, bailiff boy. You're on it. It's been admitted, right? I want you to hold, can you hold that backpack up real quick? I know there's items in it. We'll keep the items in it. Is it zipped? Detective, on that backpack, is there any damage on that backpack other than the cut straps? The only damage is to those straps that were cut by Sergeant Rodriguez. I want you to take your time, review it. Is there any bullet holes, bullet strikes anywhere on that backpack? We got to see it briefly in the top left hand corner. Actually, when I was photographing this backpack during my processing, I did not notice any other damages aside from the straps being cut. And as you review it now, no damage, right? No damage other than the straps that were cut. All right, you can put that back in the bag. And I believe Exhibit 78 has already been admitted. And you can take it back over there with the table. We're looking for Exhibit 79. Apologize for the interruption, but can I have, before you tie it up, can I have a refresher what's in that bag, please? It's the backpack and belonging inside the backpack. Can we just, sure. does the court mind if I view it real quick? No, I was just gonna suggest that, go sure. ahead. And this is all omitted, correct? Yes. And would it be okay if we just pull one out and then put it back in and then I'll just go, Why don't you just go take a look at it? How about that? Want well, to get some gloves for her? Can you go get some gloves for her like, in case I'm, she wants to? I'm good. I'm good. I'll just grab it. Here, I'm going to hold a box of gloves with my elbows. I'm going to get bingo if one of these people puts on gloves and then touches their face. And just for the record, I've got April 4th as the date that Exhibit 78 was admitted. I guess I'm... Are you just asking to verify that? I'm just, I'm That's just okay. To verify. Is it, it is admitted? April 4th, you're on it. <coughs> April Fools. Defense is just taking a gander at everything. Why? Because we want to remember exactly what they look like for our, uh, our, our show and tell at the ranch. We want, why don't we just use these same clothes? Just have our, our stunt double wear this outfit.
prosecution pouring a victory celebration drink right now. Judges using the uh, the rarely used uh, porta urinal. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> it just looked like he was. <laughs> Apologize, I shouldn't have said that. Bright display coming off the judge's bench. Oh, it looks like a, the screen, like a blue or a white. And just so we have a clean record, Exhibit 78 also contains the fanny pack. Can you bundle that up and bring it back over? Tech, I want you to stand over there and just look at exhibit number 79. Open that exhibit just to yourself. I want to see if you recognize what's in that exhibit. Can you open it? Yes, please. And I think this has been admitted already. I want to verify on April 4th. Okay. You're on move to have him publish again. Do we have a cameraman back in court? Right, right above me? Like right I don't here? remember what, it, what is it? It's a wallet. I'm sorry. It's the wallet? victim's wallet. We have a cameraman back? Granted. Can you go, detective, can you go to the jury? The It's already been admitted, detective, so. And walk and open the, the bill and just, so you can take the cash out of there too and just show the jury what's in exhibit 79. Steve, I ignore you like I normally do. I'm sorry, I ignored you. Green shirt is cameraman. Okay. I'll, I might look for that, uh, that footage really quickly. And detective, as you put that back, how much? How much? How many pesos are in there? You make him count in pesos. What's the total currency value? That's that's what I should ask you. At today's exchange rate. Sixteen forty pesos, one thousand six hundred and forty pesos. That's correct. All right, you can put that in the wallet and return it back to the item. We'll have you seal up later. So, yes. the clerk should have exhibit eight zero for you. And this is why I want you to open it. Without, don't show it to the jury. I want you to open it and tell me what's inside that. I want you to open it. And what's inside there? It's a clear bag. What's inside there? It's a black and color Kenwood uh, radio. Is that the radio found with the victim? Yes. Council is Kenwood's a good brand. I've had some of them. We're going to move to admit Government Exhibit 80 into evidence. Just under a hundred dollars worth of uh, of pesos. Is that what appears to be the radio? Yeah. Move to admit government exhibit eight zero with evidence. No objection. Exhibit eighty is admitted. <laughs> Granted. Oh, you the jury box for me? Well, I go to the microphone and blow my nose. There we go. It's just a little Kenwood, Kenwood radio. I just had a, a Baofeng radio on my, my hip this morning, but... Good two-way radios. Good, good brand. So we did have a radio, yes. Thank you, detective. You can put that back in the bag for me.
not a sponsor. Next time I'll show you Government Exhibit 81, which I show as admitted on 4-4. Correct. All right. Open that for me, and you can permission to publish to the jury. What is it? What is it? It's the phone. It's the cell phone of the victim. Granted. The cell phone that did not show up on the geolocation ping, meaning it could have been powered off. You can publish. Those geofence, um, looks like a smartphone. The geofence uh, search warrants. If you don't know what those are, they're scary. You can literally go back in time and have I can help you the out. cell phone companies tell where, every, not just one person, but everybody who had a cell phone that connected to the network, where they were located and when at a specific time. It, it's basically going back uh, after the fact and saying, wait, where was this person on that day? within a specific area. So the, the search warrant's written geographically. So I, I'm looking for this county or this road or this city. It's generally not, generally not a huge area. But they can go back with records and see where everybody was. Are you taking that? I'm showing you on the ground there, Exhibit 80, 82. Can you put it on the, bring it over to the table? And I'm going to, I'm going to have you open it. I, I want you to, we're going to look inside. I want you, we're going to identify some items, okay? The state is doing this immediately prior to the jury going to the ranch to look. Are these submitted already? Mr. Judge, I gave you the wrong box. I apologize. Oh. Wait, hold on. We'll just keep this one. What, which one is this one? That one's 112. We, we just do 112. That's fine. Do 112. Is it admitted yet? No. the defense. You need to see what's in the box. All right, Tiff, go ahead and open that for me. So I believe, just for the record, 112 is the actual box, which we're not moving. I guess we have to admit the box, but item 112.1 is the jacket. That jacket, the clerk's going to give you the jacket, has been admitted on April 2nd. Detective Einz, I want you to look in box one. You can put that down. Put that down. I want you to look in the box one, one, two, because this is the, the other items belonging to the victim. I want you to, I, do you recognize those items? And let Miss Kathy, let, let Kathy take a peek in there to, to verify what you're, oh, you have to, there's envelopes, right? All right. Let's do one at a time, Detective. Pull one of those out. Move the box kind of to the, block the jury a little bit. I'll do it right here with Kathy. Which item are you pulling out? This 43.5 JA. 43.5 JA. And we'll call that 112.2. Take a look inside there and show show counsel. What does that appear to be? Relax, We're gonna to move to admit is, I'm sorry, is that belong does that look familiar to you? Yes, it is. Move to admit government exhibit one one two point two. No objection. One one two point two is admitted. You can keep it there since everyone's up there, just move that to the side, pull out the next one for me. 43.7 J. All right, do the same procedure with counsel. Does anybody know any news stations that carried this live? So we've got a cameraman, but I'm just not sure if we've got a pool feed or if they're just getting their own feed.
What does that appear to be, detective? <laughs> These are, these are some briefs, men's briefs. I'm going to move to admit government exhibit, we'll call it 112.3. Fruit of the loom. Any objection? He's like, do I have no to objection. hold the mic? Sorry. Pull out the next one for me. 112.3 is admitted. That's right. 43.6J. Detective, what does that appear to be? Not a pair of black socks. Here, no move objection. To, move to admit government exhibit 112.4. 112.4 is admitted. And we'll publish at the end, Your Honor. We're just economizing. Next one. Are, they, are these purported to be items that the victim was wearing? That's correct, Your Honor. Or what were in the backpack? Items he was wearing, Your Honor. He was wearing. He's wearing. Huh? Right. Just a random question from the judge. Items he's wearing. 43.4J. What does that appear to be, detective? The black um, hoodie sweatshirt. Black hoodie? So we're going to mark it government exhibit 112.5 and that's sweatpants, correct? Move to admit, Your Honor. No objection. 112.5 one, 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 is admitted. I don't remember seeing these before. You I know that they were in bags, but I'm Some not sure. of those on the ground to give you more room on the table, detective. Just throw the evidence wherever you need. 43.2J. I actually got the description on the back there. Can I just say it? Sure, you can. I want you. Don't worry about it. Just open it up the same procedure, and when you look inside, I want you to verify what's inside. What does that be? What is? What does? That item to appear to be? The brown color, tan color pants. A little on the brown color pants. Your Honor, permission to admit 112.6. No objection. 112.6 is admitted. 43.9 JA. What does that happen to appear to be, Detective? These are the uh, tan color technical boots. The boots? Yes. Move to admit government exhibit 112.7. No objection. 112.7 is admitted. 43.8J.
What does that appear to be, Detective? The brown leather belt. You are moved to admit Government Exhibit 112.8. No objection. 112.8 is admitted. 43.3 J. That's the last item in the box, right? Yes, it is. What is that I appear to be, Detective? Check the evidence. Mm-hmm. It's a Browning color. Multi-cam. Well, it's a wool land camo shirt. Camo shirt. Move to Government Exhibit 112.9. Just for the record, there was, upon viewing, some flakes that came off of it. It was collected and put in a separate bag. So I'm just, a, I'm agreeing to the jacket at this time. Sure. So there's no objection. It's not a jacket, it's a shirt, correct? It's a shirt. It's the, the undergarment shirt. The shirt, yes. yes. Not, uh, so no objection to the shirt. Thank you, right. 112.9 is admitted. We're gonna do some publishing real quick, Kathy, so if you wanna settle back yeah. in. Yeah, settle back in. All right, I, I wrote down some of the items and I'm not gonna show the socks or the briefs. I wanna look at, once you clear that, we'll start with the one that's on the table and I do So clear those off. No, the one that's open right now. You have permission to publish as we go. Granted. All right, so Detective, that's 112.9, that's the last item we looked at. That's your item, 43.J, right? 43.J. All right. I want you to take it out and keep it over the, the table there. If you can display it for us. Display the, whatever's easier for you, the back or the front, but let me know which, which side you're displaying. I, I want you to show the front to the jury. And is there a, a, a hole in that shirt? Yes, sir. Where is the hole on the front? Is there any braille on this thing? May I come closer, Judge? Yes, you Sorry. may. I don't want to take a seat. <clears throat> The link to the video was I'm sorry, from two weeks ago. I'm asking about some, there's your a table. cameraman in the courtroom yesterday I'm trying to see if somebody has that. I'm looking for an, an exit wound detective. Is there an exit wound hole in the shirt? Detective, as she's doing it, can you help clear that path for her? Can you, can you shovel a path through the evidence in the courtroom? Thank you, Detective. Okay. Um, we don't have much left today. I don't want to skip this part, but at the same time, because we don't have anything else after today. Once, once we're done with this trial, we're, we're done for the day unless something big happens. Uh, Heather, I do think it was strategy on the part of the state to, to wait until this moment to show the, the clothing and the evidence right before they went out to the, the jury view on the ranch. I think, Susie, I, I can't find the live feed either.
before you why don't you flip it and let council review the backside too before we publish the backside we just do it since she's up here the guy in blue is clearly taking pictures in the court clearly He might be a reporter. He's got a notepad. And while she's doing that, counsel, I have a question. Ordinarily, in cases such as this, there's a identification of evidence to be presented at trial by each side and access to that evidence given by each side. Has that been done with respect to these yes, items sir. in this case? All right, so this, these have previously been inspected as well? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, just wanted to know. Thanks. Oh. Detective, can you hold that up and shoot the backside to the jury? And is yes. there an entry He's wound on the back? Yes, Where is that located on the sweatshirt or the shirt? On the right side, back portion. Give me a relationship to the armpit. The armpit. Thank you. Thank you, Detective. And thank you, Kathy, for helping out. Hey, Kathy, thanks for uh, lending a hand with the evidence. No, I'm done. I'm, you can put that away. And you want to clean up real quick, Detective? Maybe uh, you, got, you got something on your, uh, yeah, right there, right there, just, oh, other side, other side, oh, that's it. Judge is mad because the defense is stalling, saying, we need to inspect this. You want to pull it out and present it to the jury? We have to see what it is. He basically asked and said, wasn't there a time when you guys both did this already? And the, the prosecution says, yep. We've, they've inspected it already. They know what's in this bag. And this is a stall tactic. So the judge, the judge though, he's like, oh, okay, cool. Inside, he's like. Next, I want to find those. If you want to put that in the bag and just put that back in the box for me, detective. The big box. Just put that in the big box. We keep it away. Uh, Detective, the, the little box goes in the I'm bigger box. I'm looking for it. I thought I wrote this down as 43.2 JA, the, the pants. Which is government exhibit 112.6. Can you make sure those are the outside pants? Can you take those out? Two dues. Two dues. And you found the victim. So we, we understand the dress, the dress layering. What time of year is the, the shooting happening? It was late January and it was uh, uh, winter time. Winter time. Winter time? Winter time, yeah. And the shirt we saw was a shirt and it was a jacket that was over that shirt, right? That's correct. All right, now these are pants. Was there this one layer of pants on the legs or two layers of pants on the legs? This is one layer. I know, but how many layers were on the victim? What's that? How many layers were on the victim? There was two. Two. We have sweatpants, right? Yeah. All right. I'm just going to show you the outside pants. Those are the outside pants? These are the outside pants. Hold them up for the jury front and back. Okay, those are We've used terms cargo of pants. tactical pants or would it be cargo pants? These are cargo pants. Okay. I, I know they're not fashionable. I love them. I love them. I'm done with that. I will wear Kathy's them. done with that. It's, it's like the, the person who wears those huge flare belt bottoms every day of their life. I will wear car, cargo pants till the day I die. I might get buried in them. You never know. Cargo pants. You can put that back Not in. today, of course, because it's no pants Friday. But how can, you, how can you not love all the pockets? And you can put all the other items except for 43... I'm sorry, except, except for 112.1. That was the jacket. So you can put the other ones back in the box, detective. Got pockets for days. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The boots. Can you get 43.9 out? Sorry about that. The boots. Thank you. Let's do that for the jury. Yes, please.
You can go ahead and publish to the jury. You can get closer a little bit so you can see. And also the soul too, detective. You guys want to know, just for your information, the best brand of cargo pants. I realize Old Navy has the best price, but the best brand of cargo pants. Thank you, Rip detective. stop, lightweight. Counsel, you done? Hands down, 511. 511 Tactical. They are they're amazing. They are literally amazing. 511. Heather, you're, you're on it. 511. Super spendy. Which means don't get fatter or else you'll have to buy another pair. May have, may have learned by sad experience. You can but, put those uh, back in the bag, detective. <laughs> and so we saw the undershirt, and I just want to put the two pieces together. Can you show 112.1, which is the jacket? And that was admitted on April 2nd. That's a great point, Red Finch. The cameras, the Border Patrol pa cameras, did not pick up. The other I really person, want to show the, the back person. side, detective. So let's show the jury the back side. Highlight the entry wound for me, or the entry hole. <laughs> Judy. They do seem to be worn. Does that appear to be the same location as people? the shirt? 112.9? Yes. Thank you, detective. Kathy's all over I'm this. done if... Council is done. Uh, we're going to up upgrade Kathy's name to uh, Kathy Vanna White. Do you put that back and then clean up that table for me? Detectives like I have a degree in criminology, and now I'm wiping down tables <laughs> for an aging prosecutor with the sniffles. What does my life come to? Court canceled today? For the record, I'm now showing you Government Exhibit 82, which is labeled 17JA. Is that correct, Detective? Yes. Can you put the box up on the table and do the same thing? Move the box towards the side. The judge might have to refuse himself. Sorry, the word just came out. He's not, I think I'm older than he is. Read your text. I'm reading my text. Live feed on Monday. No court today as it was canceled. It's at uh, fox10phoenix.com under watch live tab. Go ahead and open it. I'm sorry. I want you to pull out 17.1 JA, which is Government Exhibit 83, which, is, which was admitted on April 2nd. Which one is it? 17.1 JA. 
Oh, it came. 17.1J. Government Exhibit 83. Those are the boots. Can you just open that and make sure there's the boots in there? Those are boots belonging to the defendant. Yes. So we just got done looking at victim clothes. We're going to look at just a few items of the defendant's clothes. It's been admitted, but boots. All right, we're not, we don't have to show them. I just want to make sure they're, that's what it is. So seven, you can put 83 back on the ground. Find 17.5 JA for me. Lift with your legs. Lift with your legs. Which is government exhibit 87 for the record. Oh, de detective, to your right. Other right. Yeah. It's been admitted on 4-4. Just make sure what those are. Can you open that? You recognize those items in there, detective? Yes, sir. What are those items? Are yellow in color leather work gloves. Belonging to who? Mr. Cap. Can you take them out? Those are the gloves he was wearing on January 30th? Yes. Those have been admitted. You can put that back in the bag for me. You're good. Show the jury real quick, so just show the jury. All right, put those back in the bag for me. We only have a couple more items. Go ahead. I want you to find 17.7 for me. 17.7 JA, which is Government Exhibit 89. She has the clerk, because they've already been messed with, so. Detective. Not admitted. Huh? Not admitted. 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 On April 4th. Go ahead and pull them out. Yeah, admit, admit. Those are the jeans of the defendant on the night, day of? Yes. Go ahead and hold them up for me. For the jury. Bug Dugger, congratulations on Front the Front and back. The membership. Thank you, Detective. Some jeans. And you still got, I, sh I should have done this on 83. Go back to 83, the boots. I want you to take those out and show the jury for me. This is the defendant's boots, right? Yeah. I want you to publish the jury like you did with the victim's boots. That's Government Exhibit 83 being shown to the jury. Thank you, Detective. You can put those back in the bag, and there's only one more item in that box. Yeah. And you collected socks and briefs and stuff from the defendant, right? Okay. You collected things like socks and undergarments from the defendant too? Yes. All right, but I'm gonna show you the shirt. I want, this has not been admitted, so 
if you want to bring that box back up and do the same thing, I'm looking for your item number 17.8. Does it, does it, what's inside that bag? Does that appear to be what the defendant was wearing on the night of? Yes. Move to admit. What do you want me to call this, ma'am? It's Exhibit 90. It should have a, something. Oh, I'm sorry, it is. Exhibit 90. Move to admit Exhibit 90. I'm sorry. No objection. Exhibit 90 is admitted. Can you go ahead and take it out? You can take the... We'll move to publish, Your Honor. So can you walk the, the jury box front and back? Granted. Is this the outside? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. This is the outside garment of the defendant. Is that correct? Yes. There are a couple of reasons why, uh, why court uh, might be done. I'm just trying to check. It, one of them is that uh, one of them is if the state rested, there might be a break uh, before the defense is ready because they need to call witnesses. So that, that could be why it's canceled. It could, not be, it could be something completely non-nefarious like that. Hey, detective, you could put that. AZDCS, thank you very much. I'm looking at uh, KBOA. I'm done with it. If you want to put everything, all, all the items back in that box. We reported on this on today's events from inside the courtroom. And you can bring it back over there. I have one more for you, counselor. I'm going to show you government exhibit 111. And it has not been admitted, so I want you to open it and let counsel look inside. The 911 lady came back on yesterday. We had her after lunch as well. Detective, you recognize the items in that? So right now we're we're catching up on yesterday morning's events. And we're we're nearly done, I think. Might get some spice here because the judge is the judge is seating inside. I'm, I'm calling that he's seating. Move to admit government exhibit one one one. No objection. One 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 is admitted. Permission to publish, Your Honor? Granted. Can you go ahead and take the items out? Okay, I'm done for right now. Thank you. So inside government exhibit 111 is a, what appears to be like a Ziploc bag. What's in that bag? There's a white color chain with a cross. 
there's a white and color chain with a cross, a blue cell phone charger, and Mexican currency and, and uh, monedas or currency, uh, what we call in the U.S. dimes, nickels, but these are Mexican currency. Coins are the Coins. currency. Okay. And those are the victim's items found on his person? Yes, these were on his person. And you collected them? These were, these were collected actually by the uh, personnel at the autopsy. They were handed to me. Okay. So, and you watched that whole process? Uh, yes. All right. You can put that back in the bag for me, Detective. Okay. I remember the 9-11 dispatcher. Her husband was involved in a shooting a while before they attend therapy you can take together. A seat. Finally. She was going to be back on, well, I guess today. I'm going to show you Government Exhibit 57 and 131 through 133. Hey, witnesses back on the stand. Blows on his sweaty hands, smells them. I just call it like I see it, guys. Sorry. Couples therapy announced to the world. Honestly, uh, officer-involved shootings are... I, I, I don't uh, blame them at all to get, get, get therapy for that. First, I'm going to show you Government Exhibit 57. Permission to approach? Chris, uh, welcome. Good to have you here. Welcome to our little little family of addicts. Detective, you recognize Government Exhibit 57? Yes, I do. Is your initials on Government Exhibit 57? Yes, they are. What is Government Exhibit 57? It is a black and color USB or thumb drive. Do you know what's contained on that thumb drive? It's a synced interview with Mr. Kelly. When you say synced, what are you, what are you referring to? It's got um, subtitles at the bottom. And what language? English. All right, but you guys, your interview was in English, right? That's correct. Move to admit Government Exhibit 57 into evidence. Where is it at? I'm sorry. I, I'll, I'll bring it. The judge knows he stepped in at this May morning. I take uh, this witness? Yes. Some, some questioning reference to this? Yes. Okay. So you mentioned synced? That's what it is, synced. That's the wording. Who did that? I don't, I don't have an answer for that. I was just told to review it and note that it was synced. Then, therefore, Your Honor, I'll object to the state's Exhibit 57 as being altered, and he cannot authenticate it. Here you go. Give me, want to ask some more questions? Sure. All right, so uh, this is staying absent further foundation. You, you watched the, the interview? Yes, I did. And you're the one that did the interview? Yes. And did you watch the transcription that was embedded into the interview, the, the video? I watched the whole video in its entirety. Yes, I did. And the transcription? Yes. Were they in conformity with each other? Yes. They match? Yes. Your Honor, I'm making a valve. It was also done by a, a licensed transcriber, too, Your Honor. I don't, where is that certification, Your Honor? I just need a copy of it so I can agree. It, do you have, is that your objection, or do you have any other objection? Uh, again, it's altered not by him, and so I'm going to continue that objection. Right. The objection's overruled. And um, remember, and this is part of the reason why it's overruled, but instruction to the jury, this is a recording. It's a video recording, correct? And the evidence is what you hear from the recording. The, uh, apparently the transcription that has been synced is there again, it's for demonstrative purposes. So what you read, if you read it, is for demonstrative purposes. If that is not consistent with what you hear on the video or the recording, uh, then the recording the and what you hear is the evidence. 
right? So the evidence is the recording, what you hear from the voices. The uh, subtitles are just there to assist you for demonstrative purposes. Isn't that but a if what you hear is different from what's transcribed, what you hear controls. With that, the objections overrule. Take that motion. Yeah, exhibits, what is that, 57? 57. All right, thank you, Blair. The 57, with that, is admitted. Moshe, Government Exhibit 131. It's in English. Good, good. This is the first clip of this. Is there another objection? No objections. That was 131. That's 131. Without objection, 131 is admitted. Well, I don't, you hadn't offered it. Have you offered it yet? No, we should make sure you yeah, yeah. the way it is. Yeah. Let's lay some. So it'll be admitted, providing that additional foundation is laid. Detective Wes, say exhibit 131. It is a CD. It's white in color. I can see the brand name on it, but it has my initials. And it says first clip. First clip of Miss Wanda Kelly? That's correct. Thank you, Detective. And you reviewed that? So go ahead. I'm sorry. You reviewed the disc? Yes, I did. Does it appear to be what you're... Let me back up. You interviewed Miss Wanda Kelly, right? Yes, I did. Does that appear to be a clip of the interview you had with Miss Wanda Kelly? Yes, it is. All right, 57 is admitted. It's 113. Hold on. Let's see. Did you have any other objection? No, sir. Thank you. Okay, exhibit 57 is admitted. 131. Oh, I'm sorry, 131. Thank you. Okay. Are we almost done here? I'm surprised the defense didn't ask if, if parts had been changed or on the video, the one that had been altered and synced, if he knew what change had been made. May I have exhibit two? From the original. Because he can't, if he didn't alter it, he doesn't know what the change is on it. You should have, for the chain of custody, you should have the um, somebody to testify that this was the original or this is the change, this is the only part that was changed. We, we changed the frame rate. We changed, you know, whatever. We, we should know that. I believe Exhibit 59 has already been admitted, right? Okay. I have April, I mean, March 26. Okay, thank you. I, in reference to item def, uh, states number two, I object to the whole, but it would be agreeable to part. Uh, this is hearsay, but would agree to page two, which is noted as, as the um, number 38 at the bottom. And that part I would not object, the rest I do. Here, I, I'm going to show you the kind of approach you. Yeah, I have no yeah. idea what it is, so right. Also, for the defense, what was the problematic pages, now that I have it in front of me? Um, the second page from the top, I'm okay with. The rest, 
I'm not okay is just hearsay items. One's a, it's called a book inform. That's the one that you have no objection to? That's correct. All right. Um, you want to respond? No, I have it in front of me. I've reviewed it. Do you want to respond? It's, a, it's the entire booking form, Your Honor. It's complete. All right. And um, the objection is overruled. Exhibit 2 is admitted. As to number f states 59, it's admitted. it's admitted. Okay, so you're just showing it to me. Okay, while they're while they're doing this, I'm gonna we're gonna keep playing the audio, um, but I'm gonna show you a couple pictures that. Uh, were released by the San Santa Cruz Superior Court of the jury view that happened, well, yesterday, so it's shortly after this. Um, so we'll turn the spice meter down just a tiny bit for the pictures. Box source three will be seven. There As to um, We've got state some border 66, wall. object under foundation, not proper witness. Objection there. I, I, I was showing first. You down the, the road that parallels the border wall. You can see Let me the just take a look at it so wall. I know what it is. This is 66. One of the right. gates on uh, Mr. Kelly's ranch with, uh, it's, I think that's the prosecution team, possibly some bailiff. Not sure who all is, is in that picture. But definitely see the defense as well. The, uh, the same, bus, same the objection to states. Is this 67 or 61? 67. Going off roading, enjoying, enjoying the scenery and the, the terrain. All right, let me put uh, 66. I'll give 66 to the witness. Have to look down the ball. And this is 67. And Correct. the hole in the fence, where the fence ends and the stanchions begin, right here, which uh, seems to be well traveled. Looks like uh, enjoying a, a cool glass of lemonade out on the front porch of the Kelly Ranch or the back porch, can't tell. But uh, pictures courtesy of the Santa Cruz. 67 before the witness. Court. Yes, thank you. You said you were going to ask additional questions before offering the exhibit. Did I hear you correctly? All right, so. Uh, I'll, I'll wait until I hear the additional questions and answers to the questions before I rule on the objection. Detectives, we can go in sequential order. Exhibit, state exhibit number two is in front of you right on top. Yes. That's a booking form. Do you recognize that, right? Yes, I do. Booking form of the defendant? Yes, it is. And then exhibit 59? Do you recognize Exhibit 59 as being a voicemail from Mr. Kelly to Border Patrol Agent Marcel? Yes. All right, now we're going to look at 66 and 67. Government Exhibit 66, is that an ATT carrier warrant return? Yes, it is. For the defendant's phone? Yes. Is that how you received no, it? Yes, it is. From the carrier? That's correct. And did you actually prepare the subpoena for or the search warrant for... The carrier? Yes, I did. You're going to move to admit government exists 66 <clears throat> into evidence. May I revisit that evidence again? No, yes. sure. I'll grab it. All of it? Just the whole thing? No. I mean, if he's convicted, uh, the defendant loses his freedom. He goes to jail. Uh, it would take a civil suit to take his property. 
Now, it's possible the defense, that he and his wife might sell the property to pay his legal expenses, but a, a criminal conviction wouldn't take his property away. Just take a quick peek at uh, how long we have left on this one. And we're, uh, we're at 249 out of 323, so we're a little over half hour left. Uh, Your Honor, I'm going to object to 66 with an additional reason. There is no affidavit uh, from the custodian of records that regularly keeps this record to prove up that it's a true, uh, authenticated, complete copy of what was requested by the subpoena. And therefore, this witness would not be proper to allow me crossing to make sure it is complete. That's, that item was submitted, and we don't usually attach that to the exhibit. And there is that goes to the weight, and this is the exhibit that the detective has, can testify to as a return from the carrier. Well, without that, without me seeing that authentication, which is required by the rule, then the, uh, the, the, objection, the objection is sustained. Pending additional foundation, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to take 67 back from you, too. Same issue as 67. This is, this is a screw-up on the part of the state. So uh, same rule against exhibit 67. Thank this you, is, Your Honor. This is disorganization. Detective, you also are familiar with an AK-47 in this case, right? That's correct. And you sat here at table. We're not going to bring it up, but you sat here at table and saw that AK-47? Yes, I did multiple Gov times. Government Exhibit 101? Yes. And you also seen and heard in her testimony about Government Exhibit 101.1, which are the show casings, right? That's correct. Test fired by the expert. That's correct. And just for the record, 101. And 101 was admitted on March 26, and 101.1 .1 was admitted on April 9th. That's correct. Okay. You also reviewed, do you have Exhibit 74, ma'am? You also looked at spent shell cases in this case, right? That's correct. Those spent shell cases are found on site? Yes, they were. At the defendant's property? Yes, they were. And you took photographs of those? Yes, we did. I'm showing you what's marked as Government Exhibit 74, and it's been admitted on April 2nd? Yes. All right. Yep. Go ahead and open it for me. Casey Smith, uh, the, uh, this Apologies. morning, the judge was the spiciest I've seen in pretty much any court. 
took a break. We did a little yoga and relaxation, and I think we uh, we resolved a lot of that, that uh, pent up uh, frustration. Judge also got a uh, a fresh cup of of something, and that seemed to help a lot too. Detected that item seventy four has previously been admitted, so you can take it out. What does that appear to be? Suspense shell casing. Do you know what item number that is? It says 1JA. Do you know where that is at the scene? This was located at the rear edge, the right kind side by the porch. And I think we have, we have like a nice color tableau here. Is that the blue circle or the yellow circle? That uh, would be the blue circle. All right, we'll see photos in a sec, but you can put that back in the envelope. Just so we're getting done with the shell casings, you also have government exhibits 103 to 110, the other envelopes. Just open up one of them and tell me which item it is. This will be uh, exhibit 107 through 110, state exhibit. Are these spent? Spent show casings also found on scene? Yes, they were. And using our color tableau, we have the blue circle and the yellow circle. Which one? These were located on, in the yellow circle. And you've seen testimony already about that, Detective, right? Yes. Those are the same show, show casings you took photos of? Yes. All right, you can put that back in the envelope. Next, I'm going to show you government exhibit 102, which has not been admitted, so I'm going to have you open that box. And council has full reign to look inside. So I'll ask you to open the bag. I'm fine. Yeah. It's double, triple bag. <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, are you offering it? Why? Well, we'll be setting foundation here. Uh, Detective, what's 102? This is a black and color magazine with live ammunition. And where'd you find that? This was um, inside, we're actually adapted to the AK-47. It's what, I didn't hear it. It was placed on the AK-47 in the chamber where you chamber the magazine. That's actually the, the oh, magazine that got, was in the chamber when you recover right the, the gun. Yes, it is. So government exhibit 101, that's the magazine that was located, actually inserted into the weapon. Yes, it is. Okay. Moved. Huh? 102. What did I say? 101. Oh, well, I meant the gun with 101. So I'm going to move to admit Government Exhibit 102 into evidence. investigators how to open packages at uh, detective school in Las Vegas. No objections. Exhibit 102 is admitted. I'm done up there, counselor. I'm done if you want. You want to stay up there with me? <laughs> yeah, let's go. At least you they're friendly. Can you take that out of the box for me? Can you hold it up so the jury can see? Actually, Permission for him to, to walk 
And publish, Your Honor? Granted. There's two items. That's fine. Thank you, Detective. When you get back seated up there, can you tell me what the brand of one of the rounds are? The brand is identified as Wolf. Spelled W-O-L-F? That's correct. Is there a cartridge size or? It's a 7.62 by 39. I can collect that. Let me collect those for you. Those were not jurors. None of the pictures showed jurors. The court provided those images uh, and made sure no jurors were. With some photos. Visible. Yeah, an opportunity to review government exhibit 117. I'll be those are the photos. I'm gonna show counsel. Those are the photos that we scroll through. That's correct. And for the court's record in compliance with the previous order, we have eliminated certain photos. If we end here soon, we're going to go back and rewatch the spicy bits from this morning together because that was unbelievable. So there's two discs in one of them? Yeah. There's two discs. Yeah. Yes. Are they both in the same envelope? They say on them. So it's my understand, understanding they've deleted what was discussed. Do I need to proof it up or the court satisfied with that, that they did? I mean, we're officers of the court, you're right. Well, I, yeah, I just, for point of clarification, there were some photos that were objectionable and some that weren't. Um, I doubt that they've been deleted from the disk, right? They have been, Your Honor. They have been? I yeah. deleted them. Uh, Can we go on headset, Your Honor? Oh, well, well, all right. Okay, while they go on headset, we're going to uh, listen in because we can. State's making their silent uh, motion. Judges following along on paper. Looks shared back and forth between council tables. Are you going to publish any of these? Photos? Are you going to publish any of these photos? Says the judge. This time. This time. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, All right. Um, well, I want to break pretty soon. I'm going to break pretty soon. I just want to verify it. But I just want to verify it, but so, so. Understood. Understood. All right, so. All right, so um, what do you have next? What do you have next? 
photos other than what's in this exhibit? Photos other than what's in this exhibit? Okay, all right, let's do that. Now, we'll, I'll withhold ruling on objection until counsel's had a chance to verify. All right, I'll do that. that. Let's do that. Are, I'll withhold course. ruling on this objection until counsel's had an opportunity to verify. Holding ruling on the objection until a council's had further opportunity to examine the subject exhibit. So we'll return to that later. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to show you, I think, we admitted 46, right? It's just quiet, and there's some static, so I'm repeating it for people who can't hear. Where it's too quiet. No problem. I don't want to duplicate. The sidebar like that, the headset, that's just so the jury can't hear. It's just so the jury can't hear. Did you say 46 or 146? Yes, 46. 46. I have it as admitted, but I want to make sure. It was done earlier this morning. Yes. Okay. And 72? Yes. I know. You, you can hear it because I'm yes. cranking it up 30 decibels. <laughs> Uh, beyond 100 percent. Just one second, Your Honor. Let me just check with counsel real quick, Your Honor, I think. I think we can break, Your Honor. I think. All right, good. All right, um, so we're going to take a recess. Now, as I mentioned to you yesterday, this afternoon, we're going to do, uh, and Detective, you can step down if you want. Yeah. You're welcome to stay, obviously. All right, so we're going to do a site visit this afternoon. We're going to recess. I'm going to ask you to be back in the jury room at 1.15. Um, we're, so we're recessing a little early. You'll have an hour and a half for lunch. Be in the jury room at 1.15. The bus is leaving at 1.30. If you're not on the bus, you miss the bus. Okay? Don't miss the bus. Now, um, this is have to be a very strictly controlled situation. Um, think of it as the fact that, uh, think of what we're doing as taking this courtroom and taking it out to the Kelly Ranch, all right? So all the same rules still apply. We're just having a movable courtroom for purposes of this afternoon. So when you go out there, all the rules that we previously discussed apply. Um, there are 14 different locations that the parties have identified and agreed to that you will see. You're going to get something that's like a key to a map. It just says 1 through 14, and it says what these locations are in a very objective, non -dis you know, basic description. So for example, Number one is the driveway, then you're going to go into the house, in the kitchen, in the living room, in the hallway, in a bedroom, on the patio. They're all the, they're all the uh, locations that I'm sure you are familiar with by virtue of the evidence that's come in and that you would expect to see. You're going to go into the house in these locations so that you can look through the windows that have been identified as the windows through which uh, witnesses or evidence has been seen by uh, and has been produced um, by the parties. There's no talking, okay? There's no talking as you walk around with each other or with anyone else. We're going to keep ourselves at, at a distance. Uh, someone's going to lead you around, and there will be some walking. So there's no talking. There are no cell phones. Cell phones have to be sh turned off and put away. If any, if anyone, including anyone here, is seen with a cell, fo cell phone on and out, it'll be confiscated, and it'll be kept until it's had, we've had a chance to review it. All right. Um, With cell bright. Just laying down. You're know, wandering wall. off, you know, in the house or anywhere else. You've got to travel as a group. Go from point to point to point of what you're going to see. And after you've viewed the 14 locations uh, at the residence and on the ranch, uh, our hope is, with time permitting, that we will take you to a portion of the border with Mexico that has been discussed in connection with this case. Again, same rule: no talking, no cell phones. Just follow the direction. When we're all finished, all right, I, we, 
the bailiff is going to give you notebooks or something like that, so you can take notes. When we're all finished with that process, if you have questions, or if there's something else that you think you might want to see, what you're going to do is write them down in your notebooks and submit them as a question, just the way you have here in open court after a witness has testified. Then I'll meet with the parties and we'll discuss whether or not we're going to answer those questions uh, or accede to whatever the requests that you have to see something else. If there are questions, we may come back into court the next day and answer those questions here. It just depends if you have questions and what they are. And if there's something else you want to see, it depends what it is. But, so keep that in mind as you're walking around. You'll have paper and pencil, pens, write down those questions or something else you might want to see. Now, um, if you violate any of these rules, or if you, if, you, if you don't do what I'm ordering you to do in the way I'm ordering you to do it, and it comes to my attention and I confirm it, I'm going to excuse you as a juror. And you'll be excused from this case, all right? Same rules as apply in the courtroom. I'm not trying to scare anybody. It's just my practice that you know exactly what's expected and exactly what the rules are. And I don't have any doubt about any of you ability to comply and that you will comply, but I just want you to know what the consequences are for failure to comply with the rules. One other thing, um, we're going to have security out there. You know, Wherever I go, wherever the court goes, we have security. We have to have security. Don't read anything into the security. This is security that I have ordered for purposes of of just like we have in the courthouse. There's security when you walk in the front door. There's security when you folks, folks walk through the back door. What did he There's call a deputy him? here. There's other security. There's cameras here. We have a lot of security in this courthouse. We're moving that security to the scene. Do not infer anything from the fact that that security is out there. Do not infer anything. There's no reflection on the security situation at that ranch. This is courthouse security. It goes where I go. It goes where the court goes. That's all it is. But because this is such a tightly controlled situation, we're going to have security there just to make sure there's no any kind of disruption or interruption. Part of this is because, obviously, there's a great deal of public interest in this case. It's not going to come as any surprise to any of you. I don't want any member of the public who's aware that this might be happening to try to participate in it or view it or get there or any other disruptions or interferences with your ability and our ability to do this in, a, in an orderly manner. Okay, so that's what that security is all about. Um, you're going to be put on a van, and someone from our court administration is going to drive you there separately. We'll travel there separately. Uh, I think they're planning some drinks and refreshments to go along because it's going to be kind of hot. It's I understand. Mayo, peanut and if you have some snacks sandwiches. or something you want to eat, if you need that, you know, to sustain yourself, because it's going to be—I don't know how long it's going to take. It could be a couple hours. Whatever it takes, we're going to do it. But if you need something, take some snacks with you to sustain yourself. You're welcome to do that. All right. Any any questions about that? Did you have a question, sir? We, yes. Where are your juror badges? Right. Excellent. Good question. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Juror number ten. Can I have a mask? Over there? Yes, sir. Yeah, anyone can wear a mask anytime you want. Absolutely. Thank you for asking. Good. Any other questions? All right. Anything else from council that you want me to raise um, now concerning the visit? We'll discuss some of the other little logistics that I think are, might be at issue of how we're going to move them from 1 to 14. But for purposes, of, for purposes of informing the jury, anything else from counsel? No? Nope. All right. I don't know, Your Honor, if it was discussed, the person that's going to walk the jurors to the different station. We're going we're to discuss that out of the presence. Outside of the presence. Thank you. But thanks for bringing it up. All right. Uh, 115, back in the jury room. I'm going to stay here to iron out some details with the counsel. And uh, we'll see you at 115. You're excused. Until then. Right. Cool. Once this is over, we're going to rewind to the beginning. We're going to cover a little bit of uh, serious spiciness this morning. Doors closed, the jurors absent. I, I thought about that issue some more. We're talking about the issue of how uh, the jurors are going to be led from uh, locations 1 through 14. Um, now, I don't have any problem with counsel you know, and the court and the bailiff and court security being 
Yesterday I said I didn't want us anywhere near them. Um, I don't have any problem with us moving with them, or at least you. Um, and it's just that way you're there, you can see what the jurors see, you can see if there's anything that they do that you consider to be problematic and you want the court to intercede or something like that. So I can see why you would want to do that. But um, there is no talking in front of the jurors, all right? You know, if they, if someone says, oh, you know, was this curtain here or something like that? There is no talking by the lawyers that can be audible to any of the jurors. Agreed? All right. And all we're going to do, they all I mean, nod obviously, silently. the driveway inside the, inside the house, but then leading them around, you know, we just point them in the direction, and we can go in that direction. Or you can, you can talk to the bailiff or Deputy Martinez, who's going to be with us, and point them in the direction where the next location is. That's fine. All right? I just don't want there to be any discussion by the council, among yourselves, within your group, or with me, or with the bailiff, or anybody else that can be audible to the jurors. You think we can do it that way? If there's a problem, we'll modify it, OK? All right, you're all going out there separately, I assume, or find your own way out there, right? And just for the record, the victim is not, the victims are not attending. And so oh. it's just the three of us One of them is not All right, thank you for letting me know. So we don't need your detectives out there. And Judge, we just wanted to address um, where everybody was going to be parking. Um, we didn't want them all in the, I guess, the far end of the driveway because that can disrupt the view of the actual scene. So we were going to ask people to park. Where do you want them to park? Outside of the gate? Can I, can I speak? Can I speak, Judge? Yes, sir. Uh, it, the in order for the jury to have good access... You can just tell me where you want us to park. We're going to go through the main locked gate. Then there's a double green gate to the right. They're to go through that green gate, and they're to go up to a point where there's a small green gate. Now, my, my concern is gates. that if there's a black and white out there that he be the number one vehicle, then the jury truck or van be the number two. That way he can stop at that green gate, and they will have full access to the gate, then to the house, then the other points, and they'll be the lead vehicle to go to the barn. So how they park, and may, I'm asking if I, I won't say a word, if I can direct them through the right gates and stop at the right point. All right, no. When are you going, when are you going out there? We'll be leading the escort. You'll be leading the escort? All right, who is someone, someone is gonna be, someone else uh, is gonna be out there before we get there, right? Who is that? Is that Kent? Yeah, Kent coming up behind me. Is somebody going to be on the site before we get there to kind of designate a parking area? Prior to the gate being open, up to the gate. All right, so. Judge, I can, I can be out there and, and direct and, and show um, Deputy this? Kent where. If you just mark it with some cones or something, and then we'll all wait at the gate to make sure that we all go to the right, correct designated spot. Okay. Do you do valet parking too? Or no? Yes. Oh, yeah, no. Mr. Larkin. Yeah. Valet parking. Two more, two more real quick issues. Sure. sure. One is um, council and I like to be there early. Council and I like to be there early to make sure the placards are in the place. I have no. We just want to make sure this. I got visual. it. Mr. Larkin, are you going to be out there early? I'm going to be heading out there right now to make sure the placards are where we put them. So Mr. Larkin can walk you around. Sure. I got it. No problem. The second issue, I, I, me and Ms. Hunley thought there was a stipulation about the, the vegetation and the grass being different than it was on January 30th. No vegetation. vegetation and grass. But clearly, there, Not as we heard, there's no agreement. So we just want to bring to the court's attention. As the jury is out there, they're going to see probably some trees with some fresh greenery on it, which is Called not the scene foliage. on January 30th. And they're obviously going to see grass that has been grazed, which is not the scene on January 30th. And so we tried to get a stipulation. Evidently, that broke down. And so we just want to bring the court's attention. And Judge, we did propose the following language. 
The parties stipulate that the grass on January 30th, 2023 was longer than the grass is today due to grazing. Photographs of the crime scene depict the state of the grass on January 30th, 2023. That was disagreeable to the state. They wanted to add additional language regarding additional foliage and there aren't new leaves on the trees. It was, what? we were just talking about the grass. So well, I don't know why that stipulation was well, not sufficient. Stipulations are between the parties. I'm not gonna get involved in negotiating or trying to resolve that. If there's a stipulation, fine. If there's not, that's fine. If there's not a stipulation and obviously uh, Detective Ames is going to be recalled. You can recall another witness if that's what you want to do to uh, make a record for how you believe the, um, the vegetation and grass was at the time. I don't think the foliage is out. Um, it, it might be out in Tucson, but here it comes out usually in late April, early May, just depending upon the climate. And it really hasn't been warm enough. We were there yesterday. They were barely budding. Yeah. But, I mean, when the mesquites come out, they just explode and it's really beautiful, actually. But um, I don't think they're there yet. Okay. So but, whatever, but whatever it is, whatever it is, the state is welcome to make a record through additional testimony if you di if you believe that the conditions have changed, as is the defense. So. Uh, what I was trying to bring up said to wait, and I think wh whoever was going to lead them, if they would come in advance, and we were going to make sure they saw all the placards so they could guide them, and we don't have to put in any information where the next placard is that way. Well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. Well, you. But well, you're going to lead them. You're going to lead us out there. Is that the idea? Yes, sir. The jurors. I'll be in front of the jurors. All right. Um, why don't you? You want to go? Why don't you? Uh, were well, you all going out there a little early? You're going to go out there earlier. Well, then why don't you? Uh, we send Jose out there, the bailiff, with you. All right. And then so you can walk him through um, where the locations are. And, and I do have a, just a schematic sketch. All right. Well, you can be out, you can be out there too before the jury gets there. All right. Well, you can be out there as well, Mr. Larkin, before the jury gets out there and help uh, show the bailiff. Are they going to print out for the jurors the stations and the stipulations? We well, we don't have a we have a we're going to print out this key that you all agreed to. And it should be 15, not 14, right. Judge. Do you have the list with 15? No, I have something with 14. Okay. And the 15th spot, the jury has to be. I would assume they're going to want to be driven to. It's about a quarter of a mile, I think, down to the pump house, maybe a little less. But I would defer to the court on that. It's got some, a steep part to it. It does. Yeah. Well, um, all right, why, why don't we leave that off for now and the field we'll take a look at it. Really After 14, it looks like we're able here. to, uh, was this hard to walk to or something? Or? It's just a little bit far. It's the second pump house where we found Mr. Kelly. We think it's... It's pretty rough. Yeah, I'm just trying to determine how far away it is and how hard it is to get there. I, I think it's about a quarter of a mile, it, maybe a little less on the road. It's not a walk that the jury is going to want to do. What's that? It's not that we don't want to do It's not a walk that the jury is going to want to do. It's well, a hard path, but it's just, it's got a big, steep area to walk. It's steep and it's lengthy. Well, I'll go out there and we'll take a look at it. If it's doable and walkable, and we'll have them do it. Um, okay. It's supposed to be kind of hot, too, which yeah. I don't know, probably better than cold, but. Uh, so I think let's just leave it off the list right now, and that way it's not on there, and that way if I decide they're not going to see it, then they're not questioning why they didn't see it. It is easy to drive to, Your Honor. It is on the driveway, just right. so the court knows. I'll go out there, try and take a look at it. Okay. All right. What uh, time are we all getting out there? Well, I want to leave here by 1.30 with the jurors. That's the jury, right? Uh, Be people who want to get there early, what, what time are we? Uh, before well, then. You can all work okay. that out. How are you? We've got to get you out there. One. Can somebody give him a, somebody driving out there and yeah. give him a ride? Kent or something? Yeah. Take, take, take him out, him out there now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Louis will get you out there now. Is that all right? Grab some food or something. Okay, good. We'll see you out there. We're going to leave here by 1.30. All right, we are in recess. Okay, so we need we need to back up a little bit. All right, Oops, everybody's sorry. here. We can bring in the jury. Thank you. We need to back up just a little bit because. Let's see, day 12, that's where we are, right? Seventeen hours ago. We're gonna show once again what happened this morning. Um, are we on? Are we? Yeah. All right, you can be seated. We're on the record. The record show the presence of counsel and the defendant. The jury is absent. Um, Mr. Jetty or Ms. Ms. Hunley, 
What I need to know what remains of the state's case in chief. We're currently in the cross examination of uh, Detective Barba, and after De Detective Barba, we have Border Patrol agent Tersi, which should be quick. I mean, this is from the state's perspective, quick from our perspective, and then we have the finishing up of dispatch witness on Friday and Detective Ienza, and that's it. Thank you. So we still need to dispatch um, what, what is dispatch the defense witness. anticipating of its case in terms of how much time you're going to need? Your Honor, we're hoping to get through it fairly quickly. We have Sheriff Hathaway, we have Border Patrol Agent Lyugan, Border Patrol Agent Gorman, and Detective Raul Rodriguez that we anticipate calling, and then possibly the defendant, possibly not. Maybe five. Give me an estimate of how much. Two days. Two days? The way I'm just asking. Going, I'd, say, I'd say yes. Well, all right. Um, I'm going to start imposing time limits in this case on direct and cross examinations. Detective? This is the spice when of we, advice. Uh, Buckle up. We've been discussing this case, leading up to the case, and during the trial, uh, counsel informed me, advised me, that this case would take three weeks. Um, I have to rely on what you tell me. I don't know who the witnesses are going to be, what they're going to testify to, or what the duration of time is going to be. I was told it was going to be three weeks. Today is three weeks, right? Today is three weeks. We started on March 21st. Today is three weeks, and the state's still in this case. As I've also been monitoring and asking counsel for how we're doing, how we're progressing on this case, so that I could decide whether and determine whether I needed to exercise any authority over the pace of the case. I was informed uh, by the state that there was a possibility that they would rest last Friday. Here we are on Thursday. Uh, the state's not going to rest today. And um, if we continue, then the state will maybe rest at the close of business on Friday. I assume Detective Ainza is going to be a lengthy witness. Um, so clearly, we are behind schedule. This case is going to go to the jury next week. It's going to go to the jury next Thursday. And I'm going to move this case so that that happens. Um, and I'm going to start imposing time limits. Um, this line of cross-examination of Detective Barba, tell me what it is Tell me why it's relevant and what you're trying to do. Talking to the defense now. Are you referring to Ramon, talking about to Detective Barb about Ramon? I am. Ramon is somebody who came forward in this case. He made a false report to law enforcement. Law enforcement collected information from Ramon that was verifiably false. Law enforcement failed to exercise any kind of standard of care over this investigation. It shows law enforcement's bias, and it shows their ineffectiveness in actually being able to investigate the case. It's crucial to the defense to be able to put on this information. So the line of questioning is basically, well, first of all, Ramon's not a witness, right? Correct. He's not going to testify. Ramon came forward. He gave information. Is the defense point of view an argument that he gave false information, correct? correct. All right. Uh, they looked at Ramon. They decided for whatever reason not to use Ramon, maybe in part because he wasn't an honest witness or he's not available. But so basically what you're trying to prove is that as I understand it, through this cross-examination, is you have a witness who gave false information, he's not being used, and you're just trying to determine that the state didn't adequately investigate his he false is. information? That's true. He's also a potential suspect. Judge, anybody who comes forward to put themselves at the scene of the crime should be looked at as a person of interest. We had a witness testify that because Mr. and Mrs. Kelly were at the scene of the crime, they were persons of interest. Anybody who puts himself there is a person of interest, if not a potential suspect. And we have a right to question the investigation and to challenge them and to get to the bottom of why they didn't pursue pursue other people who are making false reports and maybe potential suspects. Very well. You can do that, but this is this is examination is way beyond the scope of the direct examination. This is uh, evidence that is more properly presented in the defense case in chief. You can present that in the defense case in chief if you want. We're not going to go into it any further right now. It's beyond the scope of the direct examination, and it's more evidence that's to be presented in the defense case in chief. If you wanted to present that in the defense case in chief, you can do that. And if you do that, because of the way we discussed this yesterday in the ruling of the court, is that then um, we're going to play the entire video of the interview. 
And I don't know, did you determine how long that's going to take? It's only 20 minutes, Your Honor. 20 minutes, that's good. But that'll come out in your case in chief, and that'll come out of the defense time. I just have to object, Judge. I, I think that's going to cause this to take longer. If we have to recall Detective Barba to go through that, it'll take longer. I'm allowed in cross-examination to exceed the scope of direct. I'm not in any way limited by what the state asks this witness on direct. And if I have to call this witness in our case in chief, in chief, then I'm not able to lead the witness, so that's going to take even You'll be able longer. to lead the witness. He's an adverse witness. I'll allow you to lead the witness. The rules provide that if you call a witness and he's associated with an adverse party, the court can allow that. That's the ruling of the court. Let's call the witness to the stand. We're not going to question the witness anymore on this particular point. You have five more minutes with this witness on cross-examination. Judge, I have to object. This witness is very crucial to the defense. I've never been limited to the lead detective. This is the witness who's supposed to be the lead detective. I've never been limited to just five minutes of cross-examination. And this witness testified to all sorts of involvement in this case. This is one of the defense's main witnesses that we have to get to. Judge, limiting me to five minutes of cross-examination with this witness violates Mr. Kelly's constitution. You now have four minutes. Call the witness. Make a bill. Do we need to make a bill? Yes, please put forward and have a seat. Okay. Pause, 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 pause just for a second. Okay. Because uh, l- let, let me just zoom in on, on what the judge is, is feeling right now. Uh, it got heated. It got heated, very, very heated. He's, he's shut them down on the cross-examination of the main witness. <laughs> he says, you've got five minutes. And they're like, judge, that's not fair. You know? And he says, you four uh, this this is this is like parent to disobedient child level uh, spiciness. <laughs> the spicy meter is on fire. It is. They, they now, uh, to the judge's credit, he gives them seven. He gives them seven, but he cuts them off. And I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, see if we can skip ahead just a tiny bit because there's something I think there's something right in here that we want to get. Let's see on to. Who goes next? Let's see. Wait for it just a second. So obviously the defense the defense is frustrated, right? They're they're saying this is not fair. You can't just you can't just do that and and kick us out and not give us the opportunity to talk. Uh, we would like to make a record, Judge. We'd like to make a record of of what's happened. So let's back up just a tiny bit. Let's go right back here. Yeah, to the left bottom, there's a black canine. Gonna skip ahead just a tiny bit because they're just wrapping up. He cuts the state off as well. I'll show you a picture. You also took photographs of the head. I'm gonna turn down the spicy meter because it's the victim at the autopsy, right? That's correct. Skipping ahead, just trying to let them finish up what they're doing. The judge is ready for a break, and he's not done seating. I think the de- defense should have moved for mistrial. Definitely. I think they should have. Long, long pauses, slurp, slurp, slurp. Right, so uh, it's a good time to take our mid-morning break. Is that all right? It's 9.45. Uh, we're going to take about a 20-minute break. I'll stay here with the lawyers. We'll come back about uh, 10.05, depending on how long this takes for me to talk to them. I'll we'll be in recess until about 10.05. To Thank talk you. to them. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, now's the time for a break. Okay. Break. Both sides got a few minutes more about seven minutes each. 
Uh, he says, I'm going to I'm gonna just wait here. Jerry, you, you go out, go start your break. I'm going to stay here. It's going to take a bit. I'm talking to the lawyers. Still not happy. We know that the defense has requested an opportunity to, put, to proffer what they would have gone into. And the uh, judge is going to respond to that here right now. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> the director show the absence of the jury. Ms. Larkin, you said you wanted to make an offer of proof concerning uh, Detective Barba. You can do so. The court reporter and the clerk will remain in the courtroom to record your, your offer of proof. Judge, in a, can you hear me? She's walking away. She's oh, walking okay. away. So, Whoa. in addition to Jesus. obtaining testimony about the false Whoa. report hang on, hang on. provided by uh, Ramon, go back. the cross-examination was going to... We're going to back up just for a minute, get the judge back on the bench. I'm not going to talk, just listen. Just listen to the, what the, the, the uh, counsel says as this goes down. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> The director show the absence of the jury. Ms. Larkin, you said you wanted to make an offer of proof concerning uh, Detective Barba. You can do so. The court reporter and the clerk will remain in the courtroom to record your, your offer of proof. Judge, in a, can you hear me? Oh, OK. Cool. So in addition to obtaining testimony about the false report provided by so Ramon, then, the cross-examination then was proceeds going to, to uh, make a record. to explore inconsistencies oh between Ramon and so, Daniel. Yeah, she, she continues to make her record, but yeah, the judge walked away. I've never seen that before. I've never seen a judge literally stand up and walk away out of the room, out of the room. Can, the phone's ringing here. Let's see if I can get this one. I need to send it to Roadcaster. There it is. Answer the call. Hello. From Ada Brown Law. Oh. To accept, press 1 to send a voicemail. Ada Brown, welcome. This is R.A. How are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I barely can. I'm reading it, so we're good to go. Oh, I'll, I'll change oh my gosh. Settings. You go know on. I have. You know I have watched every minute of this trial. Right. And I have some questions. First of all, what did the defense do to piss off this judge? <laughs> I don't know. I, a lot of things could have happened, and, and I don't know what happened overnight. But um, I think the judge is aware that there's still some, the two teams aren't working together well. And the time frame seems to be the big factor, right? They, they said there's supposed to be three weeks. We're now going into four. Okay? Yeah. It's a four week, we've, which means we're 25% over our allotted time yeah. the judge has has probably made some sort of you know you know statement to the jury saying hey you're in for three weeks guys i realize it's a long three weeks but it's, we're gonna get it done we're doing everything we can and every day he has to look at the jury and he's like and by the way you're coming back tomorrow and by the way you're coming back tomorrow and and some of them we know at least one of them says judge you've got to talk to my boss because they're not having it Okay, I told them three weeks. You told me three weeks. I told them three weeks. Now they're coming at me saying, why are you not back at work? And he had to make that call. He had to call the employer and say. I, I, think, I, I think you're right. I think that was a trigger. But something else I've noticed today, or the viewing that we did today, mm -hmm. yesterday, yeah. if you watch the entire thing, the prosecution was moving at a snail's pace. A lot of stuff was going on. I was like, are you kidding me? He just complained about you taking forever, and now you are even slower than molasses. But I want to bring something up. Yeah. If we go back to the witness's testimony, and he said they heard gunshots, or they had um, were told by the coyote or whoever was with them that there was border patrol, and they all ducked. And then when the vehicle moved past, which they did state, they didn't see it, they heard it, and then they all scattered and Gabriel and the witness, what was his name, um, begins with a D. Daniel. D Daniel. Uh, ran off together. And after running for a short while, they stopped because they had, were carrying six liters of water. Now, this is on the ranch. What I want to know is where's the six liters of water? Why have the sheriff not found the six liters of water? And, um, I mean, there's so much inconsistency in this case. 
It's, it's terrible. And I've been waiting for the aha moment to say guilty. And I just think a lot of the prosecution is trying to, they drum up this big moment and then it flops. But um, I'm really concerned that the defense is not getting a fair and equal time. And I, the third thing is, is yeah. that the situation, I, I don't know the law, you know more than I do, even though I'm getting ready to go to college for criminal justice. But <laughs> yeah. um, my biggest thing also is, is why did they go into Mexico? Is that legal for them to go into Mexico without notifying the U.S. consulate or the Mexican police okay. to, win, so, to talk to people in public? So let, let's, let's put on our tinfoil hats for a minute. Okay, and think conspiracy, and and say, okay, uh, at what, yeah. uh, what point did the judge interrupt the the, the questioning? Okay, at uh, what point did he say exactly? What you know? What was the information that you know? If we think this is a conspiracy, and the judge was intentionally trying to stop this line of questioning, what didn't come in? And that was where he cut it off, right? When exactly. she starts talking about authority and jurisdiction, and without working mm-hmm. with the you know, at, at, is is he covering for somebody? He's got the sheriff of his county, okay, who, who'd made this decision to basically sneak into Mexico without any, you know, you don't have authority across the border. Okay, so talk about subject matter jurisdiction. Nope. There is no jurisdiction across the border. They can't, they can't take a step over, put the cuffs on somebody and pull them back to the U.S. That takes paperwork and red tape and, you know, at, at every single level to make that happen. Okay, and so just going down to Mexico and conducting a criminal investigation like what you just decided to do that on your own and where did you do it oh we just went to some what hotel and sat down in a public place but then Can't because we not? didn't want did, yeah <laughs> went to a restaurant we gave him a few uh daiquiris i don't know and uh and got him talking for 40 minutes with, and then we recorded him for the last six and then with the victim's family members yeah what I'm but like, we didn't. We didn't crap. check any IDs. We just took everything at face value. They said, "Oh, I'm I'm sister. Great. Well, and that's uncle. It... Good. Nice to meet you, uncle." Oh, okay. Here we go. Roll tape. Yeah, exactly. And why didn't the defense argue to dismiss this? Because I... anything you find from ill ill gained evidence should be thrown out. If I'm not correct, because this isn't legally gotten. Uh, fruit of the no poisonous tree, no right? Nothing. Fruit of the poisonous tree. It's fruit of the poisonous tree. So why is it even, why did they not object and say, throw it all out, Your Honor? I think the judge may be actually, okay, and here's something else I thought real quick. Could the judge actually be helping the defense in a way? Because this automatically screams uh, mistrial. It is appeal. It's, I mean, like you said earlier, this is setting them up for an appeal if he's found guilty. Uh, I just think that, that there is so much here that, and also, do we have a lawyer? Do we have a cop? Do we have a doctor on this jury? Because some of the questions they're asking, they've used medical terms like the positioning of the body. I mean, I, I think we've got some really smart cookies on this trial. We've and got somebody who knows a little bit about the border defense. and about how the exactly you know, how the you know the different options were available for an interview. Why couldn't you do this at the consulate? Why couldn't you do this? You know, they present a couple options, saying, "Hey, you know, this we know this isn't normal." Okay, going to the cantina and, and popping a tape recorder out for six minutes of a, an interview with somebody. Th- this was not normal procedure. And then you have Border Patrol up on the stand, and they ask questions like, um, you know, if someone leaves a backpack which may have illegal content mm-hmm. or a weapon laying down, I mean, would you not? I mean, they go, well, they could, they could be farming or ranching or whatever. And I'm all like, you know that anybody carrying binoculars, a radio, a gun, a backpack, or kayaks, or mules. I live on close to the border of Texas, and I'm not even in the border patrol, and we know what that looks like. And, and Mexican I mean, change, like money. They don't know. Um, they've got money from money, Mexico money, in their money. pockets. They're they're not staying exactly. here. This you don't cross over the border. It's like hey, the dove hunting is better one mile on the other side of the fence. Uh, there it, are no doves. <laughs> <laughs> no doves. <laughs> what what do you, what do you hunt down there? Is it? Uh, Lizards. Lizards. Snakes. But here's the other thing. The other thing is, is that even if you're smart in the jury, there are photos on the victim's phone months prior wearing the same clothing and all of that over the border. So you know he's either a mule or a coyote or a scout because he's coming across back and forth. And the thing is, is that the witness 
is that it's from Haiti. Uh, um, it's from um, Honduras. Honduras. He states he's illegal in Mexico. That's why he didn't go to the U.S. consulate to the border because he's an illegal in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And if he got and if he was over there, then the Mexican government can deport him back to Honduras. And then he's trying to cross back and forth over in the United States illegally. I'm just saying that's probably why he didn't want to be meeting at any governmental facility because because his ID was not a legal ID. Yeah. The, so he even stated, I'm not a legal Mexican citizen. I, I have concerns about the radio. Can, can we go there? Yeah, me too. The radio. I, I'm holding one right now. I'm holding a little radio. This is this is a this is actually a ham radio, right? Because I'm a, a licensed ham radio operator. Uh, the radio has. I'm not going to turn it on, but it has memories. It has channels. It can talk to different things. You turn it mm -hmm. on. There are saved frequencies. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. You can literally turn it on and get a good idea of who I talk to, and and what what things I talk to based on the saved memories, based on the settings. Exactly. Uh, you've got a radio that that e either is a it's a like a. Um, a commercial band radio where it's got a saved a, a pr program chip, like a frequency crystal where it's plugged in and says, this right. is the, the frequency it talks to. And it's, it's not going to be like your, your family radio service. Hey mom, are you guys ready? You know, we're behind you in the car. We see you. It's not going to be one of those. Kenwood is a good brand. Okay. These are, these are professional radios. They're not your little FRS radios. They're, they're industrial. Right. They're, they're commercial. They're, they're right up there with the, the type of radios that are used in police cars, um, in businesses and things like that. They're not cheap. There's, there's evidence right there in their hands that would, that would point to the fact that, hey, this is not a hunter. Okay? Hunters don't get commercial band radios to, <laughs> to go up and, and scout across the border and, and do hunting. But I don't know. <sighs> well, see, I'm a volunteer firefighter, and my radio was $1,200. Yeah. I paid for myself. And I know the radio is just like you're talking about. And one thing I said on my channel when we were live I said, why didn't they, if they're laying, if a radio was laying next to the body and you've got people standing on a ridge, now let's think about this. An average person can go two to four miles an hour, we'll, we'll ballpark at three. And it's almost four hours between the first shot, the phone call for the first shot and the phone call for the body. Mm -hmm. People can get 12 to 15 miles away at a walk. Okay, not even a full run. And these are healthy people. So why didn't you put your gloves on? Pick up the radio and in Spanish say, "Hey, bueno," you know, <laughs> and see if anybody answers. I'm, I'm like, there's so many things they left undone, and then to go back seven months later to saw off a piece of a tree that you were adamant it was shot by a bullet, y'all. I've shot many a trees with an AR and an AK bay. AK, I call them an AK bay, but I have shot them, and they don't. I mean, it's like they got all these animals and you wait seven months to cut off a piece of tree. Yeah. I'm just saying there's so many holes. There's so little. And then, the, and then to sit here and detain an old woman and say that she was free to go, locked in the back of a car, take her to a police department, bring her home from 2 a.m. I mean, it's just, and here. why did we you not just... take the gun and then question the rifle and question that night? I just think they screwed. Hang on just one second here. Um, okay, are you still there? I'm here. Okay, I'm, I'm having tr trouble with my audio. I'm trying to bring in oh. video at the same time I'm talking to you. Uh, it looks like there's some live feed out of court today um, coming from KVOA that, that I'm watching, but the audio is on the same channel that you're on, so I can't have one and not the other. Um, okay, well, my thing is, where is that? Because I want to pull it up. See, I don't know how to, is it on YouTube live uh, no, or it's is on, it on? KVOA has a live stream um, right now on their web page that I'm looking at. Uh, it looks KVOA like. KVOA what? KVOA, KVOA News is, is who we're dealing with. So this is, um, let's see. They, they've been showing, you know, you know, everything from commercials to everything else. So. News for News for Houston, KBOA.com live stream. The the page I'm looking at specifically says watch live third full week of Arizona Rancher murder trial, and they have a live stream link on that. That's the only place I've been able to see it. But they're talking about the the tensions and it taking longer than it's that's the wanted. It started about wow a little bit ago, but it, it's live. So they've got that's this is the okay. Can I ask camera. you because of my hearing? Yeah. Because of my hearing, I'm having a problem. Is it KB? Kilo, o -A .com? Kilo, Kilo Victor Oscar Alpha. 
Ah, see, B and B sound the same to me. Yeah. That makes sense. K B O A dot com. Well, I will gladly go in there and watch that, but I I'm just anxious to know what pissed that judge off, and to to take it out on the defense team is just inappropriate. Yeah, it's. Uh, I I think they've got grounds for a mistrial. I think they need to move for a mistrial first of all. Um, I think they should have already moved for a mistrial. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't know where. Obviously, if court is in session today, we got word that it might have been canceled. It looks like it's not, because uh, this is live. We're going to try to join. I'm not finding it. Um, let me see if I can share a link directly, because it took forever to find this. I, I tell you, this was not easy to find. Um, we're going to try to listen. But I just want to thank you for all your help. You've been awesome. I will order that big board uh, at a later date because it's quite pricey. But um, yes, I'm sorry. I found out that I can Bluetooth my phone to my Rodecaster and do exactly what we're doing. Yes. Isn't that fun? Love it. Okay. Yes, it's great. Give me just a second. Okay. okay. So uh, Ada, Ada Brown, right? Is that, yes. Is and that I'm you? trying to find your Did You Post It? I'm, I'm going, I have to pull up the feed on this channel really quickly. So I can post it just one second. Okay. It's a long link, but I just posted it. Hopefully that fit. Did you see that in chat? I did, okay. and I'm trying to pull it up. And there's four. Okay, thank you very much. Wendy. We're going awesome. to watch for a little and bit right now. thank you for listening. Not a problem. Thanks for calling. Yeah, me too. We'll see you. Bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I can't take any calls right now. Um, we're going to turn on the audio from court. Uh, let's turn this up. Let me, I'm going to work on the audio as well. This is the, is this the 911 dispatcher again? And then on the far right, is that the comment? Yes. Okay. And so I think you said that defense counsel. Let me uh, get it. It's both theories instead of just Rodriguez mono. was asking dispatch to confirm that Border Patrol told you that the oh. defendant said he shot something. Is that right? And he wanted you to check with Border Patrol to make sure that was accurate. Yes. And then down below, you talked about a couple of comments. Does this comment at 1845, just a few minutes after that request from Sergeant Rodriguez, respond to his request? Yes. And is, can you tell the jury what, what the dispatcher is conveying to Sergeant Rodriguez with this comment? She's conveying the first initial call. She Audio is so bad. The first call at 1440 hours. Um, that they advised they got a call from the rancher who advised they were shooting at him and he was shooting back. And did you listen to this call? Yes. And is that accurate? Yes. And then the next comment is at 1858. Is this another responsive comment um, to the request by Sergeant Rodriguez? Yes. And what is this comment conveying oh, to sorry. Sergeant Rodriguez? I'm sorry. This, are you? I'm is sorry. this about I'm sorry. the second call or the second? And when I say call, I mean the second time Border Patrol car called, not the second call, but the second incident. Yes. Okay. And what is she conveying to Sergeant Rodriguez in this particular? That at 1756 hours, um, the supervisor, Lagan, called and advised the rancher from the sagebrush called their ranch liaison again and advised he possibly struck something and needs an officer there now. The subject was being intentionally big. And then a few minutes later, your dispatcher actually talks to Mr. Kelly, is that right? Right. And she has a conversation with Mr. Kelly as well. Right. And as Mr. Um, does your dispatcher describe Mr. Kelly Doing also everything I can to keep this. I'm objecting to the better. line of questioning is leading. What does your dispatcher say um, in her comments 1804? Regarding the dispatcher, on line one, two, three, four. I'm sorry, can you read the question? Sure. Can you see 1804? Yes. Do you see line one, two, three, four, five? What does your dispatcher say about the reporting party and how he's interacting with her? Our view is 
evasive and not willing to give me any said could be used against them. Captions are not working. Any information as to why he needed a deputy? Okay. Did you refresh your recollection regarding whether, by listening to some calls, regarding whether you actually connected with Border Patrol on Sergeant Rodriguez's request to make another contact with them? Yes. And can you tell me, did your dispatch department actually reach out again to Border Patrol to attempt to verify the information directly with the ranch liaison? Yes. And when did that happen? Let me know. Notched out two of the frequencies here um, to make at it a little bit better. At 1952 with eight seconds, um, there was a conversation noted. Uh, the ranch is on as Agent Jeremy Marcel, November 379. Lagan will send an email with contact info. And is that the information I just highlighted here? Yes. Is that, and that's at 1952, you said? Yes. And did you review that phone call? Yes. And I can't was rewind, this is live only. Did you send an email or the contact info? Yes. And that information isn't detailed in your radio calls or in your, and when I mean that information, I mean whether those emails actually happened or that contact actually happened wouldn't be documented in your call logs or in your call detail reports, correct? Correct. And earlier you said sometimes deputies and other agencies have have contact that you're not part of in terms of dispatch, is that right? Correct. So that could have happened here and it wouldn't be detailed in the report, correct? Correct. Now, I just want to clean up a few details um, from earlier. We'll get to go back and watch this in the Zoom feed uh, probably a little bit later today, maybe this afternoon. And this is a, a small note, but I recall Defense Counsel asking you about these contacts between Sergeant Rodriguez and dispatch regarding the body starting around 1821, 1824, or 1824. Is that right? Right. Do you recall that? Right. And then at some point she indicated that Sergeant Rodriguez later detailed that he was en route to the call in 1837, which was after the information he put in. Do you remember that questioning? I do not recall. Was it actually Sergeant Rodriguez who said that he was en route to the call in 1837? No, it was this states it was uh, Detective Mario Vargo. So, and when it's en route to the call, does that necessarily mean you're going to the scene? Could it also mean you're going to the station or some other location? Correct. This is live. Green shirt cameraman, I think, is back. I don't know. Don't know and what he's wearing today. this time was definitely not Sergeant Rodriguez, so is that right? Correct. This is still in the state's case. This is the dispatcher, I believe. Um, that she's back. And the number and that's on should be there, right at the end of their um, case. That's the deputy badge number, is that right? Yes. And that's how you know that's Detective Arthur? Yes. There was also can, a reference. I can do that, but it sounds choppy because there's so much noise in the background. I the noise gate. I'll turn it on. I just. Call and it's page two of that call log. There was a reference at 1606 by dispatcher Kanyas about a coyote. Are you familiar with um, who that who that um, relates to? The word coyote. Yes. Is that better or worse? A street name. An is actual this, street. Is this a deputy calling off duty at his house? 
No, this is a deputy. We asked for a welfare check on them. They said they were okay. Um, their location was by a Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then there was some conversation about who, who is reporting party and who is complaining in the comments on the call log. Do you recall that? Yes. Is that better? Do you like Are the they, noise gate? It's you choppy. Do you use reporting party and complainant necessarily always to relate to the person who made the call? Not always. Do you have to read it in context to figure out who they're talking about? Yes. There is supposed to be a pool camera on this. The 911 call we've been talking about who initiated that call? Uh, e, my, it was dispatcher Ivana Gunnings. So that's not a call that was received, that's a call your dispatcher made, correct? Correct. I really want to get a professional soundboard so I can really tune these streams properly. I, mean, I, I, got, I could do it with software, but... Any questions for this witness from any members of the jury? Very well, seeing you. Thank you very much. This is the time So you can call us next witness. Please no recall to take it by So we're going to go back. We'll, we'll be watching this part again on Zoom so we'll get anything that happened before this. But right now, this is live happening today. Yes, sir. And uh, you obviously remember that um, you're still on the road. Yes, sir. So you brought your own papers. <laughs> Crowdsource. <laughs> it's 3000 bucks for the... I, I want a Behringer X32, which is a, a low... It's not like a... A concert level audio mixer, but it's a 40 channel mixer that uh, that's powerful. But uh, just wait, I'll save up and I'll get one. There's a good chance this is the last witness. Good morning again, Detective Ayanza. Good morning. For the state. Yesterday we, we did a lot of exhibits. Do you recall that yesterday? Yes, sir. Today we're going to go through the timeline and go through what your involvement in this investigation was, okay? Yes. I may refer to some of the exhibits, but we'll try to keep that to a minimum. But let's start off. This, Start off by first having you introduce yourself to the jury again. Uh, good morning again. My name is Jorge Ainza. Last name is A I N Z A. I'm one of the detectives assigned to the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office, Criminal Investigations Division. Give us a bird's eye view of your career path at the Sheriff's Department. So I began my career back in 2006. I started as a detention officer. I attended what's called the Correctional Officer Training Academy. Uh, it was a nine-week academy, and I successfully graduated from that. I was there for approximately 18 months at the detention facility. And in the early year of 2007, there was a position that was uh, open for deputy sheriff. After successfully going through the hiring process, I was offered the position for deputy sheriff. And June of 2007, actually 2000, uh, 2008, I'm sorry. Um, from there, I, attend, I was successfully picked. I was offered the position. I attended a 17-week academy, identified at Selexi, which is the Southern Arizona Law Enforcement Training Center in Tucson, Arizona. And I successfully graduated in October of 2008. And since 2008? And from 2008, I came back to the department where I went through another training.
training as he's doing his CV. Of, uh, program, this is after problems. editing, and this, and then I'm going to turn um, it to before. This you is go before. through different FTOs, different trainers, and I successfully after passed I fixed the FTO it. program and was assigned to the patrol division. And how long were you in patrol? I was in patrol approximately nine years, and I started as a regular patrol deputy, which is deputy one. Through the years, I went for deputy two, and then. Four or five years into patrol, I got promoted to corporal. And I was a second line supervisor for my squad on patrol. Dude, that is a nice board. Well, That's a really nice board. Patrol period of your, of your career. As a patrol officer, have you received code threes? All the time. What's a code three? Code three is where we are authorized to respond to a call for service as fast but as safe as possible. This is with lights on, reds and blues, and emergency siren on. And so when you respond to a scene as a patrol officer, are you questioning the, the veracity of whoever is calling in about the scene? No, we don't. You understand the question? It, well, we, go ahead and repeat it again. Are you second guessing, whoever called you out to the scene, are you second guessing the information when you respond? No, of course not. So you don't know if it's true or not? That's correct. But you're responding? We're responding. So after your patrol time, you said about eight years in patrol, what else do you do? Walk me through the next phase of your career. So during patrol, um, I obtained some certifications, some training, specialty trainings. I became a field training officer myself. Uh, I'm a phlebotomist for the department. I, I take blood for DUI investigations. I am also HGN certified, which is an exam that specializes in detecting under the influence drivers. I am also a senior team leader SWAT member for our team. After that, approximately nine years on patrol, there was a position that was offered for the criminal investigations division. I submitted my letter of interest and after uh, several months, I uh, was offered the position, and I've been there to this day. How long is that in uh, years? Going in s seven and a half years now. And your time at, at the, can I say CID? Yes, sir. And that stands for? Current Oak Investigations Division. Okay, CID, seven years. What kind of cases do you work at CID? So basically, the role of CID, we take over investigations, war patrol, run out of... Um, um, I can't remember the word, but we take serious cases. We continue with cases when patrol deputies run out of resources, anywhere from serious bank frauds, um, sexual assaults, uh, crimes against children, robberies, burglaries, auto thefts, homicides, any serious incident that patrol cannot or doesn't have the function to continue with the investigation. That's the one we jump in. You take over the investigation. Yes, we take over the investigation. You mentioned homicides. How many homicides in your seven-year period as a CID? In CID, I've been directly, indirectly involved. I believe it's seven. And those homicides, do they involve weapons at all? Yes, they do. Do you remember if all seven did? Actually, yes. What kind of weapons are we talking about? We're talking from a small pocket knife to high power rifles, shotguns, handguns actually too. And within CID seven years, um, did you obtain the position of a senior detective? Yes, I am actually uh, the senior detective right now. We have our supervisor, which is Sergeant Flores. Yes, he's retired, came from another age, has a background, but I am the senior one right now, under him. And how many CID detectives are in the unit? So right now it's myself, Detective Porta, Detective Barba, Detective Muskies, and our sergeant, so it's five of us. Five total, including the supervisor? That's correct. Small unit? Yes, it is. And as a small unit CID, obviously we see cases, you've seen cases that get kind of complicated, right? That's correct. You often ask the, the assistance from sister jurisdictions like DPS and in neighboring counties? Yes, we do. We, we don't have the luxury of being a big department, so our resources are limited, especially with these cases. 
we have a real good relationship with surrounding agencies, and we do call them, and they always assist. Is that common or uncommon? It's common. Does that include DPS? Yes, it does. Does that include Pima County? Yes, it does. Does that include the FBI? Yes, it does. Does that include Border Patrol? Yes, it does. Does that include DEA? Yes, it does. Just the alphabet of agencies that you guys can call upon for assistance. That's correct. And specifically about the medical examiner, do you guys in Pima County, I mean, in Santa Cruz County, do you guys have your own medical examiner? Unfortunately, we don't have an OME, which is the Office of the Medical Examiner here in Santa Cruz. What do you guys do then? We have us, um, which Pima County? That's what we use. It's the Pima County um, in Tucson, Arizona. And do you know, so that's, that's the person that helps perform any required autopsies for you? That's correct. Do you know if there's a separate group at the Pima County Office for Death Investigators? They do. They do. Is there a contract between your office and their office? We do have a contract, but it's only for our autopsies, not for the actual investigators to come out and help us. And you don't have any information or knowledge about why that is, right? I do not know. Let's talk about involvement in this case, okay? We're going to shift now to this case. Yes, sir. Do you recall who, you're a senior detective, so do you recall who was first on scene in this case? During the first call? Yeah, during the first call. Uh, during the first call, there was several deputies along with the United States Border Patrol. And what's, when, when someone is first called out, what's the goal? on a first call out for people responding? When a call like this, or every call actually, it requires first and most important is preservation of life. Okay, anything else? From there, once we arrive, is preservation of the scene. From there, we go on to identifying victims, render aid to any victims that need be. We identify witness or witnesses, separate them, we identify suspect or suspects and separate them as well and once that is done we go ahead and start the crime scene log if it's it depends on the call not all crimes and scenes require crime scene log but in this case there's a crime scene log that it's it's um perform. first goal preservation of life that's correct and then with cid so we have officers who respond Code 3, lights and sirens. When CID responds, just reiterate, what's the goal when CID gets on scene now? Once CID gets there, we, we make sure the scene is preserved. We make sure that everything, like I stated right now, witnesses get separated, victims get separated. Once the initial deputy starts getting the, the, all the information, the who, what, when, where, and why, why we're there. And from there, we start our investigation. Are you familiar with the time the first call came in? The first call, it was at approximately 14, 40 hours. Yes, we're, we're going to use civilian... 2.40, I'm sorry, 2.40 p.m. And that call, um, what, what was the next step that the Sheriff's Department did in response to that call? The several deputies, along with Border Patrol, arrived at the residence. Are you familiar with the term security sweep versus, are you familiar with the term security sweep? Yes. You guys have left the court with, reporter. With search warrant is. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, you've done several search warrants in this case. Plenty. And in your investigation experience, you've done a lot of search warrants. Numerous. All right. Explain to the jury the difference between a security sweep and, say, a search. So a security sweep is basically you get to a location and you are looking for any possible people that can be an immediate threat to responding officers. Basically, you're searching for people. What's the reason? For officer safety, make sure everything's secure around the perimeter, the residence, the field, whatever needs to be protected. And once that person is identified, 
what happens to you? What happens to all the anxiety that builds up about first on scene when you find the person? What happens? There's a lot of adrenaline that comes with this once you do find the person, whether it be a suspect or victim, everything is still chaotic, but it, it, you calm down a little bit. And at this point, do you recall, the detective, do you recall if there's a body found on the first call out with detectives? No. Not by SO? Not by the SO or a Border Patrol that were assisting that day. But you, they found the defendant? They did. You know what time they cleared scene on the first call out? Do you recall? I don't recall the exact time. But sometime in the afternoon? Yes, late afternoon. Yes. And then sometime after people cleared the scene, there was a subsequent call out. Yes. We've got two call outs, morning or, no, sorry, early afternoon, and then early evening. That's correct. All right, I'm going to hone in on this early evening one, okay? Do you remember approximately what time a phone call came in to the SO? So approximately 1756 or 36 hours. I can't recall exactly the time, but it was around that time. Civilian speak. Five, six, I apologize. Around that time. When did you get called? I got called at, at 6.29 p.m. And what were you asked to do? The initial request was from my sergeant. He wanted me to respond to the sheriff's office, CID. Did you know why at the time? He just told me of a possible homicide that occurred in the Kino Springs area. Did you go to the scene on either the first call out or the second call out? No, I did not respond for the first or second call. So you're over here at CID, the Sheriff's Department? Yes, sir, down the hill. Eventually, the defendant shows up at CID, right? That's correct. And, and you remember approximately what time that was? I can't remember approximately what time he arrived, but I, I know the time I began my interview with uh, Mr. Kelly. What time did you conduct your, start your interview? I started my interview with Mr. Kelly at 8.29 at night. So you arrive at the Sheriff's Department around 6.30, and you're conducting an interview with the defendant at roughly 8.30. That's correct. Cool. In that period of time, that two hour period of time, what are you doing? So prior to Mr. Uh, Kelly being transported to the Sheriff's Office, I was in contact with several people trying to get or gather more information as to what happened. I came into this blank call in a blank state. I, I had minimal information. Once I got there, I started making phone calls. I made contact with my sergeant, Sergeant Rodriguez, um, United States Border Patrol agent Marcel, and our dispatch. So you called officers on scene? Yes. You called Border Patrol? Yes. And you specifically said Marcel? Yes. You also talked to dispatch? That's correct. Why would you do, why would you do any of those things? Because like I stated, I, I came into the office with minimal information and I knew Mr. Kelly was being transported. I wanted to gather as much information I could before I could speak to Mr. Kelly. And during that two-hour period, did you listen in? Did, did, did you, you were here. Did you, at that moment, that two-hour period, did you listen to Government Exhibit 56, which is the recording of the dispatch call? Yes. So you've got a bunch of information now ready to interview the defendant. That's correct. And what time was that? Did you start that interview? At 8.29 p.m. Do you know how long that interview was for? Approximately 45 minutes. I believe I completed my interview with Mr. Kelly at 9.19 p.m. It would be about 50 minutes? 50 minutes, 40 minutes. Not good at math, sorry. That's fine. Um, after you've interviewed him, the investigator did you not make after you interviewed him? Based on the, all the information I received, um, Mr. Kelly's interview, I had probable cause to uh, arrest Mr. Kelly. 
We're going to get in that interview in a bit, but I just want to continue with my timeline, okay? Did you book him? Yes, I did. <coughs> I should not physically book him, but I was involved in the booking form. charge you booked them for it. I did. It was first degree murder. First degree murder. And what standard of proof do you use to book a defendant into custody? The totality of circumstances leading um, what was committed here. Why? Well, I, I got the totality, but I'm talking about is it probable cause Clear and convincing, beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you know the standard that you use before you book an individual? It's probable cause. Probable cause. And in your... to approach with government exhibit number two, which has been admitted, I believe, yesterday. No, I recognize it. Right. Thank you. I'll show you the first page. You recognize that? Yes, I do. Can you circle for me the name of the defendant? You go right on the board. Thing. Okay, I've got to. I've got to cut away. Clear it for me. Sorry, they're showing some personal information that I can't. Show. The address for me. Very clear it. And how tall is Mr. Kelly? He is six feet zero inches. Okay, sorry, sorry about that, guys. Let's show it here. There we go. Okay. Go back. You have the time there when he's arrested? Yes. Yes. What time is that? It's 21 21. 9 21 p.m. And how? How far after your interview with him concluded did you make the decision to arrest him? Just minutes. We show you the second page of Exhibit 2, page 3 8. You recognize that? Yes. So what is that was the booking form with all pers his personal a information. Comment section. Do you see that in the middle? Yes, sir. Yeah, can you read that for the jury? Mr. Kelly was involved in a shooting at 100 Willow Cross Circle in Nogales, Arizona. Mr. Kelly was discovered carrying a rifle on his property after it was learned he was chasing undocumented foreign nationals. Mr. Kelly was interviewed and admitted to shooting at male subjects. A deceased male subject was discovered on the property. There's a couple of things I want to ask you about in this. Is there any information other than from the defendant that there are other male subjects other than the victim and Daniel on the property? That's correct. That was a question. I said yes or no. Uh, no, no other information. No other information other than what the defendant said. Would object to leading an argument? I'm, I'll be, let me go to the second point here. You said on here there was, so towards the second last line or the last sentence about Mr. Kelly's shooting. Can you reread that part for me, detective? Um, let me see. Which one? The 
where he's, he was involved in a shooting or discovered carrying a rifle? I'll just read it. Submit it. Mr. Kelly was interviewed and admitted to shooting at male subjects. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Where's that information come from, detective? It comes from him. And? And United States Border Patrol. And your interview with Mr. Kelly? Was it voluntary? Yes, it was. Did you offer him any promises? No, I didn't. Did you, offer, did you threaten him in any way? No, whatsoever. Objection, Lee. Overruled. Overruled? We're going to play this. We're going to play this. As, depends on the timing here. But how long into the? It's a 50-minute interview. How long into it does he admit to shooting at the direction of these individuals? Approximately 30 minutes into my interview, Mr. Kelly finally admits to shooting. After the booking form said. 921, what should you do after 921 after booking the defendant? At this time, I sat at my desk and started preparing an affidavit for a search warrant. Did you interview Ms. Wanda Kelly? I guess that was before. Yes, after Mr. Kelly, I apologize. After Mr. Kelly, I did interview Mrs. Kelly. And I, I forgot to ask you, who else is with you in the interview with the defendant? Detective Mario Barba. Who was lead on that interview? I was. When you interviewed Ms. Wanda Kelly, was it voluntary? Yes, it was. Did you promise her anything? No. Did you threaten her in any way? No, whatsoever. I'll show you. In both interviews with the defendant and Ms. Kelly, recorded? Audio and video recorded. Are you trying to make something? No, no foundation. Okay, do that first? Yeah. Okay. That first exhibit 131, that staple is all funky, so just be aware. Okay. 
Um, do you recognize state exhibits 131, 132, and 133? Yes. And what are those for the court? These are white and color CDs. Um, they are labeled first clip, second clip, and third clip. And those are clips of what interview? Um, with Mrs. Uh, Wanda Kelly. And you conducted that interview? Yes, I did. Right. And you reviewed those discs? Yes, I did. Did you initial those discs? Yes, I did. Fair and accurate representations of the interview? Yes, it is. Move to admit government exhibit 131 to 132 and 133. Uh, Your Honor, I'm going to object to hearsay. This witness has already testified. They had fair chance to question on any part of this. None of it was used to refresh recollection or for impeachment. Therefore, this is purely hearsay. I mean, I think Ms. Wanda Kelly had testified that she disputed some of the things, and these, these clips go to contradicting Ms. Wanda Kelly's testimony on the stand. That's improper impeachment. There's no way you can tell from that. We'll, we'll, we'll circle back after lunch. We can we'll, we'll continue. I don't know. We can continue. They're going to impeach Miss Kelly with this witness? I don't know if you heard that. The clerk says that 131 has already been That's correct, Your Honor. And you indicated when I used 131 that I needed to lay the proper foundation and that I didn't have sufficient time on the redirect to do the other two clips. So that's why we're playing them with this witness. But I did already confront her with the issues. So it was impeachment. And I have the transcript that I provided to the court and counsel previously for the court. Well, as I understand it, the request of co-counsel co -counsel is to, is to wait and not address it this time. We can address it after the break. All right, so no ruling on the um, objection because the uh, offer of present to admit at least the other two exhibits is temporarily withdrawn. Enough? All right, go for it. Thank you. The judge has no mic. And after you finish your interview, with Ms. Melinda Kelly, what, would, what task did you start doing? And so at that time, that's when I sat on my um, my computer desk in my office and I started preparing a affidavit of probable cause for a search warrant. And then, what time do you recall? What time you requested approval of the search warrant? It was a little bit after 11, 19 or, or 20 hours. So I'm not exactly the time, but it was past 11. Yeah. Would 11.30 be approximately right? Sounds right, yes. And what time after the approval, what time did you go and serve that search warrant? I arrived at the Kelly residence early morning of February, I mean January 31st of 2023. It was a little bit after midnight. It was 12, 29 or 12.30 in the early morning of the 31st. So now we've just passed that midnight hour into the new day. That's correct. Right. So this is January 31st, 2023. That's correct. You remember the, the number of that search warrant? It was SW23-007. And before we talk about the search warrant, what's the standard practice of serving a search warrant on a resident? So our standard practice for our department and how we do it is even though if, if there's people or not people present, we arrive, we knock and announce three times. We knock, chair's office, we knock, chair's office, we knock, chair's office, and we why would it search one, search one, search one. And continue on. So you announce and what if someone comes to the door? Someone comes to the door and make sure um, this person is kind of it's not armed, not hostile, and we control the scene if that happens. We and if there's someone inside, we ask we escort them out of the house. Why can't they be in the house? Is it due to search warrant? Yeah, this is to prevent any further tampering of evidence, hiding of evidence, destruction of evidence. And did you go inside the house in this case? Yes, we did. And how many people are going on the search warrant? So at this time, during this uh, particular incident, there was three detectives assigned to CAD. And what, what's the role for Agent Wayne? What's the 
go for each of these detectives. So we all help each other out. We work as a team. Once the photographer, um, we label the house. We we have a scriber. Also, and we have a photographer. And sometimes we describe. do multiple roles. We bag, tag, and and secure evidence. And how do you treat the belongings in that house? Uh, all the years I've been with the sheriff's office and patrol and CID, I've assisted search warrants on patrol. Now being directly involved, I treat every house as it was mine. We treat it with the most respect. And uh, she photographs, pre-photographs and exit just to show that nothing was damaged, broken. I treat that as my home. You guys collected some stuff from that search warrant, right? We collected several things. Yes, right. we did. And you also did some searching outside, right? Yes, we did. All right. And did you guys ask for the assistance of another agency on that night? That night, um, I was informed that they had requested the assistance from ATF. And what does ATF stand for? It's, it's called the Alcohol, Tobacco, Farms, Explosive Unit. It's a federal agency. Okay. What was the purpose of them calling? Uh, this agency has... Of course, it's a federal agency. They're very big. They got the money. They have a canine unit, a canine. They specifically um, is trained to sniff ammunition and guns. You recall on that night, did the canine detect or find alert to, I'm sorry, let's use the proper word, alert to anything? Yes. What did the canine alert to? Uh, once I met with the canine handler, ATF agent, and I, I let him know, hey, there's a warrant, it was granted, you can begin your search. He grabbed his canine and they, he did his pre-routine, I don't know what that is, I'm not a canine handler, I'm not certified, but they do a little pre-routine. At this time, the handler went to the residence and the dog alerted to a certain location of the residence. The exterior of the red by the porch area. Do you recall after the dog alerted, the canine alerted, what happened with the canine? The canine at this time, I made contact with the agent. He told me that the canine was done. Unfortunately, the canine handler grabbed his dog, gun in his unit, and they departed the scene. They located a shell casing and they took off. That's correct. What time of day is this? This is early in the morning on the 31st. It's dark. It's dark. And so when they found that first shell casing, you just said it was late in the morning, early morning, dark outside. Yes, it was. And we're going to fast forward real quick, but the, the search, the second search of the home is during the daytime, right? That's correct. It's like the pool camera plugged into the the white noise machine as well as the audio as we get both. search warrant, did you also collect items from the defendant? The defendant's residence? Yes. Yes. Did you also collect an AK-47? That's correct. The feed has dropped. It paused. Not sure why. be a poor signal. Yeah, it still had the safety um, feature, which is an orange a piece of plastic that's on the bolt that keeps it from manipulation and it's brand new. So the first search warrant finds a brand new, in your opinion, brand new AK-47. Yes. All right. 
And that's different from the other AK-47, right? Yes, it is. That you found in search warrant, which, which search warrant did you find that? That was on the search, uh, second search warrant, which was SW-23-008. Okay. Now, are you done that evening, or are you doing anything else when you're at scene? The first search warrant? Yeah, the search warrant, are you doing anything else? Um, once we completed the, the search warrant and collecting myself and uh, Detective Lyra placed all the evidence collected in my unit and we arrived at the sheriff's office, I believe it was at 2.50 in the morning, maybe close to 3, and we secured all the evidence within our conference room in CID, which no one has access to that room other than the detectives. Well, did you also at the scene take photographs? That is correct. You took photographs inside the house? We do. Yeah, like and the, the jury has seen that, so I'm not going to waste time showing those pictures, but you took all those photographs, right? Yes, I do. Any time did Miss Kelly return home? Uh, yes, she did. You know what time that was? I do not have the exact time when she arrived, but she did arrive after, right before we finished the search one. All right. So you go home, I mean, you go to the station, lock everything up, and go home. That's correct. And what are you going home for? To get some rest, because I knew we have to come back. All right. You, come, you go to bed, you come back. What time do you come back to the station? My normal work hours. I went home, got home like around a little past three, rested, and I came back to the office at 8 o'clock. All right. When you return home, I mean, when you return to the station, what did you do? I started preparing another search warrant. Why? Because we we were informed that the AK-47, the first AK-47 was not the right one. And also there was other other structures on the property? Yes, but uh, they, we, uh, during the first one we did, uh, were informed by Deputy Felix that the residents, pretty large residents, had a pump house and a barn just south of the residence. Let's go back to that AK-47. Why wasn't the first AK-47 the new one? Why wasn't that the, the right one? The description didn't match. Like what? Uh, the actual AK-47 that Mr. Kelly was found in was weathered, blue, it had bluing, had a green strap, it had wood stock, and it had a flashlight duct, um, duct taped to the barrel. And that first AK didn't have any of that? None of it. Do you prepare a second search warrant? That's correct. And do the same process, submit it for approval? That's Objecting correct. Objecting to leave. This is foundational. Um, it is leaving, but it's foundational. So the judge is open. Submit it for approval. That's correct. And you go and execute the search warrant? That's correct. What time was that? Do you remember? It was early afternoon. I, if I can refer to my report, but I don't know the exact time, but it was, I know it was late afternoon, early afternoon. Would 12.30 be about right? Yes, it is. And when you do your search warrant, you walk through the process already. So walk us through, when you execute this search warrant, what did you do? Actually, um, Mrs. Kelly was at the residence when we arrived for the second search warrant. And then what happened when someone's at the home? What, what do you do when someone's I, at the home? I introduced Mrs. Kelly and asked her if she recognized me. She said yes. I asked her if she could step out of the resident and presented her the search warrant. And then what? She complied. She read it and she understood. And then? She exited the residence and departed the residence. And what did you do? I executed the search warrant. And the same process? Same process. Um, we photograph the residence. We label the residence. We take pictures. Now we're in the daytime though, right? That's correct. And so you also search the, the barn and the pump house? Prior to that, um, if I make it into it, prior to that, we search two vehicles. All right, you search two cars, a pump house and a barn. That's correct. All right, and then I, I won't focus in because the sequence doesn't really concern me, but I just want to make sure that everything you've done, okay? That's correct. So pump house, barn, two vehicles, but now I'm focusing on the house again. Yes. 
Right. You do a search warrant, you execute the search warrant on in, in the residence. That's correct. Walk us through that search warrant. So the process of this search warrant, we label each room with these letter templates. The main entrance, we start with A. Uh, this search warrant, we started in the garage and made our way into the residence, the entire residence. We label every room. We document what room is a master bedroom, living room, kitchen, hallway. You do the, you do the same thing again? Yes. All right. And then what, what's the focus here? What are you looking for? We're looking for the AK-47. And then where did the AK-47 end up being found? It was in a bedroom. And? The AK-47 was located behind a door, bedroom door, covered with a green t-shirt or long sleeve shirt. And she's finding that exhibit for me. Um, I'm gonna jump. You guys also went out to where the victim's body was at, right? That's correct. What, why'd you guys go to the, where the victim's body was located? I have not seen uh, the area where the body was like in the prior night, and we went out there just to photograph, additional photographs of the area, and we were trying to see if we can find any other evidence. Okay, so we've got, you've seen, we've seen photographs from, from your supervisor, Sergeant Flores, yes. on the night of, yes. and the next day you go out there and take photographs too. Yes. And your goal is, what are you looking for when you're out there? We were actually looking for a projectile. And how do you look for a projectile? Uh, we were walking around with our eyes because there was actually a metal detector out there. So you're doing a visual inspection? That's correct. And you also use detector. some modern device called a metal detector? That's correct. Do you remember what the setting was on the metal detector? The, this detector is it's owned by the sheriff's office, bought by the sheriff's office, assigned to CAD, and we had to set in for all metals. And how many metal detectors did you have out there on the 31st? If I remember correct, that night we, I mean that day, that afternoon, we had one. And did you find anything? We did not find any projectiles or any other evidence that could be linked to the incident. So back at the house, you find the AK-47 behind a door? That's correct. And what was over the AK-47? It was a light green or green color shirt okay then let's just ask you this, <laughs> did you take photographs on the night that you came on the, let me separate from the jury search warrant 007 the first time you were at the house that's correct you're a photographer right that's correct and did you take photographs of the entire house i did including this room that's correct including behind the door that's correct so you actually took that photograph the first time when you were there on 007? Yes, I did. Why did you see it? During the photograph, if you see the photograph, there's a scabbard, black in color. I got excited. I concentrated on that. And to this day, I am embarrassed that I missed that AK-47. Well, don't give yourself too much. What's over the AK-47? It's a green t-shirt and a it appears that whoever put that AK-47 took the time to drape it all over, over the whole AK, including the magazine, all the way to the stock. When you came back the next day on 008, did someone find it because of a visual inspection or from an auditory sound? It was an auditory sound. Do you remember what happened? It was Sergeant Flores that, that, that um, went into another room because he stated he he was not going to live until we found this AK-47. Well, I was 
to an adjacent room, which was a bathroom. He called me over. He said, I found it. All right, and that's, we've seen that, State Exhibit 101. You've seen that, that's the gun we've seen in trial, right? Yes. That's the same gun? Yes. Did that have a magazine in it? Yes, it did. Well, we've seen that, which is Government Exhibit 102. Both have been admitted. Did you also play, you, you were here when um, Ryan, uh, Rick Lyon, the the gentleman from Washington, the expert ballistics individual, right? Yes, sir. Right, he tested some ammunition, didn't he? That's correct. Did he get ammunition? How did he get the ammunition? Uh, from the magazine. From the magazine that you recovered? That's correct. And in doing that search warrant 008, we're in, the, we're in the daytime now, the daytime one, right? But you, did someone do a perimeter check around the house? Yes. Who? Uh, at this time, we had um, Sergeant Bunting with us, well, former Detective Bunting. He's a sergeant now. He was there with us. Okay, and what, walk us through, why, did he take it on his own initiative to go outside? Yes, he, while I was um, processing or ex exiting the house with the items, Detective Bunting um, exited the residence, and moments later he called me over. And when I met with him, he had shown me what he discovered. What, what did he discover? He found casings in the back porch area, expect casings. And you've seen that picture where we have the blue and the yellow circles? That's correct. Right, and I think we just refer that to the blue and yellow. So, which casings did? Uh, Sergeant Bunting or Detective Bunting find? There were the ones circled in yellow. The cluster? Yes. You took photographs of that, right? Yes. You also took, I mean, were you there also for the placards? Yes. You also took photographs of um, the outside, right? That's correct. From the patio out? That's correct. Let me show you, it's already been a minute. 34. So this looks, this is going to be a lot more familiar to them. What are we looking at? This, this photo, uh, photograph depicts the back of the residence, right outside the porch. Uh, to the left you see a little a walkway. In front you see a gazebo. Just to the right of it you see that smoker. Right behind the smoker you can see a team post, which is the first fence line. How tall are you? I'm 5'8". When you took that photograph, you're taking it from a photograph of someone standing 5'8". That's correct. And how tall is the defendant? 6 feet. If I do my math right, that's 4 inches taller than you? That's correct. I'm not sure where the timer is today. Apparently it doesn't matter right now. State's presenting. Still. 
ne nearly a week after they said they would be resting, they're still presenting. So the jury just saw this yesterday. They got to stand here. They've, they've, they've got their own mem memory of what that looks like because they were out there. So I've updated the spice meter to show just how hot it can get. Give you a demonstration. This is one, two, three, four, and then, and then we have one more setting, which is fire, like actual fire. Actual fire. So I'm going to show you some pictures that you took of the victim's clothes. You, you attended the autopsy, right? Yes, I did. What was the purpose of you attending the autopsy? Uh, that was to take additional photographs and collect the victim's clothing. Did you see the victim being brought in in a body bag? Yes. Was there any tampering with the body bag? No, the seal was still intact. Sheriff Kenny, Sheriff's Department seal? Yes, we seal our bags with a number tag. Who opened that bag? What's that, sir? Who opened that bag? That's the OME personnel that opens that bag. In your presence, right? In my presence. <laughs> Photograph with you, starting with the image 1743. The reason I'm showing this, and I want to, the jury has seen these items are admitted, but I want to show that they're in the same condition as you photographed them on the day of the autopsy. That's correct. All right. The day of the autopsy is February 1st? That's correct. <clears throat> What's that picture of? That is the outer green jacket. Governor, image 1744. Picture of? These are the victim's pants. The outside pants? The outside pants. Some undergarments? That's the, the middle of the socks and the bottom is the undergarments. What brand is refill on underwear? Undergarment? That's correct. And you reviewed Government Exhibit 72, right? Yes. And you were here for the unveiling of the evidence in court, right? That's correct. Any difference between the two? Nothing at all. What are we looking at? These are the other pair of socks. And you know what time of year it was? It was late January and it was cold. It was winter. Cold. Is it common in your, for you personally to double up on socks if you go outside for a long period of time? Me personally, I've done it, but it's not coming, but it, it's called that, yes. What's that photo of? This is the black sweatpants on top, the boots, the belt, and the green outer jacket. That's the jacket he was wearing when he came in? Yes. Who's taking the clothes off of him? Uh, this is done all by the OME. Is that a better picture of the sweatpants? Yes. Laid out photo of the outer pants. This is a. Oh, I'm sorry, jacket. I thought it was legs. Yes, jacket. this is a jacket. Is that the front of the jacket? Yes. So I'm looking at the front of the jacket. This side has the blood on it. The 
right toe. Another picture of the jacket? Yes. No picture of the boots? That's correct. Same condition as we've seen in court? Yes. Picture of the shirt? Yes. Same condition as we've seen in court? Yes. This is February 1st of last year? Yes. Finally, this is a picture, front picture of the shirt, right? Yes. With some staining. We'll go back to... Don't go back. Government exhibit. Go forward. Image 4377. Just talked about that, right? Yes. Next, I'm going to show you a defense exhibit. KK, it's the second page, not label, second page. Same view, right? I'm going to show it to you. You see that view? Yes. You see this view, right? Yes. So, the difference between the defense exhibit? Yes. What's the difference? The, you can see the sun, and it's a, then you can see it's actually higher. What's, well, who, the photographer, lower or higher than you? What's in the Your world? Honor, I'm going to object. This is state's photos, so I don't know what they're, just because I entered it doesn't make a difference. They took it. This is not a state photo. This is not a state photo. Where are we going I'm, in, I'm, I'm, in, I'm directing my, my cross by examination on a exhibit that was used to cross-examine other witnesses in this case, a defense picture which is different than the state's photograph. I'm showing the difference between the, between the two because it was conveyed to the jury. How, how would this witness know the height of the person taking this picture? Because you can tell by a smoker. And Your Honor, their picture the other picture is the, the next picture in the exhibit. These were shown. I don't understand his point. I think it's marginal about what we're doing. The jury was there. We were there yesterday. So we saw, when you say where I come from, we saw that they're all happy. So we'll move on. We'll move on. Okay. The longer the judge lets the state go here, the more I think that he may have been covering for someone by cutting off the, the defense yesterday. You also took possession of a backpack? Yes. A family pack? Yes. And we've seen, we've, we've actually seen those in court. Any damage to the backpack? The only damage that I observed while processing right before civilian evidence was the cut straps that were done by Sergeant Rodriguez. We've heard all this. Any bullet strike? There was no bullet strike. Any evidence of a, a ricochet deflection on the, on the backpack? Nothing like that. And just so you know, if, if the, the agent is permitted to stand up, I just want to make sure we understand how the backpack and the bullet entry wound is on the body. Permission for him to stand up to just to show us again. Again, you stand up? that's that's your key, Judge. And show again. us on the Let's body of the victim again. where the bullet the bullet entry hole is. Is that where you wear a backpack? Backpack rests on the back. You also have a fanny pack, right? Yes. Any damage to the fanny pack? Not that I could see. You also, when you collected everything, did you, the customary practice to fill out property receipts? Yes. What? And what's a property receipt? 
proper receipt, it's an inventory of items that we take, that we give to the homeowners. Why do you do that? Just to keep accountability of what we took. And did you provide the defendant or his family property receipts? I actually met with Mr. Kelly at the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office Adult Detention Center. And you also, we, we have heard testimony already about Border Patrol surveillance. You also looked at DVDs, right? Yes, I did. How many DVDs do you recall that everyone looked at? I think it was three to four that I reviewed. How many in total? Um, it was a lot of DVDs that were given to me, but I reviewed three to four. And how many people reviewed them? It was myself, Sergeant Flores, former Detective Bunting, and Detective Barba. And what was the reason to review Border Patrol surveillance videos? We wanted to see if we can see anything else other than Mr. Kellen Ranch, any subjects, any people running, rifles, bundles, everything that was disclosed that what Mr. Kelly had seen. All right, I'm going to go to the interview. I'm not going to play that unless you want to break now, Judge. But, right. I'm going to go to the interview. I'm going to approach. I'm going to show you transcript. I just passed the six hour mark. Oh well. This transcript is Government Exhibit 15. Do I have the actual one back there? Right? Thank you. The way it's set up, I can't. I've, I've got to take this live right now. And this is the interview. Approximately what time did you conduct this interview? At 8:29. On what day? This was done on the 31st of January of 2023. Actually, 30th of 2023. January 30th, 2023. I first want to talk about the defendant's statement. I'm going to do some categories here. I'm not going to do the whole thing because we're going to listen to it. I just want to highlight some, ide some items in this, okay? Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right, I'm going to first talk about the category of professionalism. I'm going to have you direct your attention to page 7. Line 16. You see that? Eight, seven. Actually, I'm going to flip flop. I'm going to actually have you look at this. Okay. Why is he looking at something if there's no question for me yet as to whether or not I'm going to look at this? Okay. 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 I thought you were trying to refresh his right question. Okay. You got the government exhibit 15 right there, right? Yes. Page 7, line 16. You see that? Yes. Your question was on actually line 17. Your question was, quote, tell me everything you did today from the time you woke up to the time you came here and me talking to you. Did I read that right? Yes, you did. Is that an open-ended question? Yes, it is. I'm going to have you go to page 35. You just told me before that you were reading this because you were going to read Mr. Kelly's statements. What I just heard was a statement from the witness. Well, I'm, I'm true, but I'm, I'm getting context to You're right. Let me back up. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to scratch that detect. I'm going to go into a different category. All right? Yes, sir. And before I get into it, any evidence that you collected or you reviewed in this case of another shot being fired on the property? None whatsoever. 
Any evidence that you collected or reviewed of a robbery? None whatsoever. Any evidence? Physical evidence? Can you object to all the leading questions? Overall. Any evidence that you reviewed that were five to maybe up to 15 men on the property? None whatsoever. Any evidence of a struggle? None whatsoever. Any evidence of drugs? None whatsoever. Any evidence of guns? None whatsoever. I think that's wrong. Let's talk about I think that's shooting. wrong. Any evidence of guns? Let's go to page 24 for me. Any shell casing is an evidence, evidence of gun. If you take out a metal detector out in the desert down there, you're finding evidence of guns. I could Give me five minutes on this property and I'll find you evidence of guns. This is page 24. How many pages in that transcript, detective? 47. 47. 47. So on page 24, I'm going to direct your attention to, to line 19. Okay? You with me? Yes, sir. Mr. Kelly says... I'm sorry, what page? 24. Give us some context. I'm going to give you some context. The, the question before is talking about a search warrant, right? Yes. And then Mr. Kelly responds to you, quote, I have no reason to believe I shot this person. Did I read that right? Yes, you did. And then your question was, what does that mean? Is that the first time they came up? Yes. In the interview, right? That's correct. And the defendant says, it means I have no reason to believe I shot him. That's simple. Right? That's correct. I read that correctly? Yes, you did. And then your question was, did you shoot? And what was his response? No answer. No answer. Your Honor, I mean, a lot of this information is taken out of content, and I would just ask the court or the, um, the city attorney to, to play it so it could be heard in content and then ask these questions so we all means context. know what preceded the comments. It's misleading. I, I'm honing in on the very fact that cross-examination hit on that. The defendant never admitted to shooting. I'm honing it's not, in it's on not, It's not a question of whether you can do it. That's more of a question of when it's more proper. More of a proper to do it. And I could do it after. Perhaps more effective. So I could do it after. I think it's a better practice. That's fine. I could do it after. All right. Well, why don't we, uh, so, Let's uh, take I'll a break. the objection. We'll play the uh, recording, assuming it's in and proper foundation is made. And uh, then you can follow up questions. And just for the record, I think the recording is admitted already. All right, we're going to take our on the stage with the lawyers to talk about a few things. We're going to take a new recess. Please be back. We're going to, at 1.30, we'll resume the testimony. He's going to stick, oh, guys, hang on. He's going to stick here and talk to the lawyers about a few things. Talk to the lawyers. Let's see if we can, hopefully we get this. Please, please, please let us get this. No. No, they killed it. They killed it. They killed it. Wait for it. Oh, dang it. Dang it. They... Why? Why would you do that? We'll see if it comes back. Um... All right. So we might have to wait for the, uh, the live stream upload uh, via Zoom, the four box. Uh... Just when it gets interesting, though, <laughs> we were just we were barely barely getting to the spice. Let's see, we were on uh, four. There we go. We were getting to the spice. We were about to turn it up to a three. Are they off on Fridays? No, this one, this one's not. At least not today. All right, so they're going to take lunch. Um, there may be a live stream this afternoon. I don't know. We, uh, I think we might have to go back and watch all of today on high speed with Zoom. But, um, yeah, audio has been oh, terrible today. All right, they're off on Mondays. Off on Mondays. Okay, let me, let me explain my comment about the longer the judge lets the state ramble on, 
literally saying, and again, and if we go back to, and, and just to be clear, and you know, and, and you had testified earlier, uh, as, every time he says that, this is a clue. It's a clue to the judge, and it's a clue to the, to the defense that we've already been here. We're, we're treading on plowed ground, right? We're, we're replowing the same ground over and over. The judge has said over and over, we need to speed this up. We're way behind schedule. We told them three weeks. We're going, you know, it's past, it's past three weeks. We're going to be four weeks into this. Then, after that, the state, in the middle of their cross-ex- cross-examination, okay? So, you've got the full, you've got full direct from the, from the state. Then, in the defense, in the cross-examination of that witness, he says, now... Starting right now, I'm going to institute time limits. And you've got five minutes. Okay, first of all, uh, how, how can you have all the time you want on, on direct and only have five minutes on cross? Okay, this, that is just not right. That is, that is like, that, that is appealable right there. I'm going to say it. Then you look at the questions of where the defense was going and they were literally asking questions about that they were approaching the legality of what the sheriff did by traveling to Mexico interviewing somebody in an investigation in a foreign country without permission of that government okay and he cut him off cut him off right there boom and now it was more than 5 minutes um she had more than 5 minutes not she had more five more minutes. You're right, as if in Texas. She had, but judge gave her seven minutes and then cut her off. But where she cut her, where she was cut off, was when she's getting into this legality thing about going to Mexico and do you have jurisdiction and are you is that is is this is this a legitimate collection method for data? Does it count or is this fruit of the poisonous tree in a public place? Yeah. With with the recording of of we recorded the six minutes at the very end where. Conveniently, guess what? We had him repeat everything in six minutes. We talked for forty minutes, and then at the end, in the last six minutes, we're like, "Okay, we're gonna we're gonna sit the record down and ready, go." Say it again. Say what again? Oh, the thing the thing we told you to say. Say that. It seems like the judge is covering something up. That's what it seems like. And the spiciness, his behavior out of line that's why it's on the national news that's why it's that's why it's going all over the place he was out of line he was in the wrong there in the wrong so yeah all right that that being said apparently we uh let's see where is I want to see if we can find this anywhere else. I know we're not going to because I can see the transmitter data. But Bummer. All right. Uh, there's, it's not anywhere else. The, the court, the pool photographer has turned off the camera. Okay. Not turned off the feed because the feed is still up because people still are connected to it for the pool. But they've turned off the camera, which is why um, we're seeing uh, remarkably the same, the same transmitter being used as at the beginning of trial where we had the reporter who just didn't show up that day and was late. Um, the one who got yelled at, they're using the same um, TVU pack. Uh, for that but all right that being said it is lunchtime it's friday we probably are not going to get a feedback this afternoon i think well, because we don't have court on monday we're we're probably going to go back and rewatch this using the zoom feed that will be posted at the uh the santa cruz superior court youtube page so we'll watch this in a four box format which is not the best i like i like this view much better than the, the four box but it will have better audio than what we have today so we'll be able to hear a little bit better there might be some spiciness. We'll probably be able to see that um, on Monday as well. So, 
No court on Monday. Uh, Danny, it's, they work four days a week. And baker's hours at that. So, you know, we, we got in the wrong profession. <laughs> we, we, we have to work five days a week. All right, let's see. I'm going to turn on the phone just briefly in case there's anything I need to uh, need to handle here. Uh, let's see. We've got some text messages, sent some images. Ooh, Lay's fried pickles. Mm, 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 mm. Those are good. Good chips. Who sent me that? Now I'm hungry. Picture of uh, some potato chips. And actually only work five days, five hours a day. Yeah. They take long, long breaks. Did it make it on the news? Yes. Uh, a Google judge, judge leaves courtroom or something. Uh, angry judge. Angry judge throws tissy fit on camera. I, I don't know what you want to Google to find that, but it, it's out there. You do a, do a little digging. It's funny to see where it pops up. Um, yes, yes, it was in the news, says Zimmy. You, you'll probably still see it. It's probably still in the news cycle right now because it was just from yesterday. And, and most people didn't carry it live, so it's, it's still fresh. Um, let's see. Anything else we have to cover? Uh, happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. I'm going to turn the spicy meter down a little bit because, uh, you know, it's, it's cool. Did you see the chase I suggested in text last night? I didn't even see your text last night, Evan. What happened? Let's see. I've, I've got so many messages I haven't seen. Oh, my goodness. Everything from O.J. Simpson died. Apparently, I've got a lot of messages to read. Okay, okay. all right. We're all good. We're all good. Um... Just spoke to Mrs. R.A. You did not hit the button for the calls on the burner. What? Yes, I did. Hang on. Hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Don't call Mrs. R.A. She's... Web is turned on. iOS device is turned off. I've, I've got it saved right. It's correct. Oh, I've got a call. Hang on. I've got a call. I have to, I actually, I have to turn the sound on. Just one second. No, hang up. Sorry. My bad. My bad. Mrs. R.A. is blowing up. Yeah. Let's uh, let's stop right there. There's the sound. Amber. Hello. I, I forgot. I turned the ringer on my my computer, and people were calling, uh-huh. but I turned the volume down on the ringer. <laughs> so uh-huh. no, so well, I couldn't hear. And then it forwards to... Right the first time then because it, I just spoke to Mrs. R.A. <laughs> how's she doing? How is she... Let me fix your voice here. How is how is she uh, liking the uh, the Jeep Wrangler? Which is I I I rented the Audi X3, and she got there and they gave them a, re- a Jeep Wrangler. And I'm not sure if that's an upgrade or a downgrade. So I'm not sure if I should be angry or like really happy with Enterprise Rental Car, not a sponsor right now. But so she doesn't have any ducks. I'm like you could have you could have put this you know or this one your duck from. Thank you by the way, Ryan. Uh, you could have put these ducks in the in the the rental, and it would have been great. Just like do 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 do. But yeah, so it's fixed now. Woohoo! Yeah. So um, I just I wanted to see if there was like some sort of force field somewhere that's like disturbing the force everywhere with everybody, because I've done had to time out Adam and Greeners this morning or this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, Amber, you, br- you bring up a good point. You br- bring up a good point. The other day, I had a, a, a good little heart-to-heart with y'all about, about how I have some absolutely amazing mods. Amazing mods. And I have, I've come to the conclusion that if I would like to keep the amazing mods that I have, I probably need to make their lives a little bit easier. Um, <laughs> so, I, in all seriousness, I'm, I'm giving them a little more leeway. Uh, to make decisions without clearing it with me or anything else, and also we're we're gonna sort of rein in because we we sort of 
I'm not going to point fingers, but we collectively test the limits and then retest the limits and to go a little further and sort of try to find that. Um, testing the limits. What's the storm whoa, tracker for? Whoa, hang on one second, Amber. I can't. I've got random, random commercials playing over you. You can't. I can't hear you right now because you're on. Okay, so here we go. There we go. So we test the limits and uh, and then we we go too far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the mods instead of you know saying hey you know warning just delete the message. If you push too far and you tested the limit, there's going to be a punishment and it's it's going to be a fairly lengthy timeout. And if you pushed really too well, far. Was... Capital punishment first offense. This... We're we're literally <laughs> <laughs> we're... The, and the the reason the reason is when we have a lot of people in chat, a one a public flogging would work, yeah. Um we one person goes you know, so far, and then everybody else uh, sort of tests that same limit or goes one step further. And then when we time up one person, like, why was I timed out? And they weren't because they said something was almost identical. It's like, look, we just have to, you know, just start <laughs> selectively nuking uh, different accounts. That, that's all I can do. So I, I do want to say... I do want to say we have a couple of rules. I, I I think I've made it very clear that I have the utmost admiration and undying appreciation for my mo moderators. They do incredible work, uh, and and so because of that, I back them up and I will defend them. And if you have something negative to say about a mod, take it to another channel because I don't want it here. Okay, and that, that's that's my dad voice, right? Like if you oh, if you want to bring up you. if you want to bring up mods, you're you're you know why are you you're so rude or whatever. They they work harder than anyone I know for no pay. Literally, they they are incredible. So, just saying, don't you you're welcome to come to me. You're welcome, and I I honestly I appreciate this. You're welcome to call the burner phone. You're welcome to send me a text and say, hey, what happened? You know, I was a conversation was fine. I was doing this. Was I misunderstood? Did they misunderstand? Talk to me about it. I'm fine. You take it up with the mod, and they will ban you, and I will stand behind them. Is that fair? Oh, is that fair? I wasn't made aware of these new rules yet. I haven't told you yet. <laughs> I've I've uh, I've been thinking them over, but I've I've been watching. You guys have been working your butts off, uh, and especially as, as we have some, we've had some difficult trials. I agree, we have dis difficult trials, but uh, I just, I all I can do is it gets to the point where I can't expect the mods to to do what they do and take the stress and abuse that they've been taking. So I can I can say, look, if there's abuse, you know, you don't need to clear it with me. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter the color of the courthouse by the name. Okay, so I've I've talked I've talked to some people. Um, a few of you know who you are <laughs> that I've reached out to. That, that we've that we've that we've had some flexibility. Warren has already before. outed himself. Who? <laughs> okay, I wasn't going to point fingers. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's. Honestly, I don't expect uh, any major changes uh, as far as who is in chat right now. Uh, we're, this is not a cleaning house, you know, anything. But I, I do have to say that that the mods have been have been hold, shouldering a huge burden and taking a lot of abuse for it. And and I can't, uh, in good faith, I can't let that continue. So that's where it's at. Well, Spread I, the message I if you see that. if you see somebody else who uh, who like pushes it. The best thing to do is not try to call them out. Don't try to be like, hey, that person's doing this, or this is the worst chat ever because of what this person said, or I've never seen a comment so bad. You might get swept up because because we will. That, that's all. That's all I'm going to say. Amber, somebody's calling who has okay, something but, to say. What? what? But, to, but to my defense, that's not. I wasn't calling to chastise. It was just I know. Greeners and, and Adam were... <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of testing the limit. <laughs> yeah. But in a funny way. So they, they both got a 60 second timeout, and, and apparently it. it was the longest minute ever. Longest minute ever. So, <laughs> Amber, it's great talking to you. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna take you a couple too. calls here. We're going to, because the, the spiciness of court today, that was something I think I, I wanted to get your take on. You've heard me, and, and I've given that twice. We watched it twice. Um, I'd like to hear some feedback on the spice meter, because I put a. This is this is the most work I've done on the channel in a long, long time. <laughs> if you know, I've got I've got moving flames. 
you guys don't know understand what it takes to have that happen right there. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know anything about what's happened in court, really, because I woke up late this morning and got here late this morning. And it's just been a really crazy morning for me. But I did see the levels of the spice meter, and I'm pretty impressed, I just have to say. <laughs> All right. Uh, Amber, <laughs> thank you so much. Appreciate the kind words. Not a problem. All right. We'll see you. Bye. Bye. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Hang on. Call from Lori from AZ. Uh, Lori, how are you doing? I'm good, R.A. Thank you so much. Welcome. Um, I, you said AZ. I, am, I, cut, uh, I cut off where you were from. Uh, Arizona, right? Well, Arizona. Okay. Yeah, I'm with I'm the AZ DCS Oversight Group. Oh yes, thank, thank you. You've, you've gone above and beyond gathering information and phone numbers and making calls to make things happen in the background. I appreciate that. Hey. Oh, you're welcome. That's kind of what we do. Um, and so I, I'm, I don't know. Judge Fink mm-hmm. is a perfect example of how courts here operate. Uh, We do a lot of court watching um, for, you know, family law cases and some criminal cases. And it's just uh, appalling how the judges here are and how they act. So I'm really embarrassed about it, but yet I'm grateful that Everybody else that's watching your channel and is in the chat now has a sense of what we feel on a daily basis yeah. about I, the judicial system. Yeah. I, I will say that uh, in this specific case, uh, my position is the state has not proved it. Um, it. It is possible that he did it in my mind. It's possible that there's there's. It's it's a, it's definitely well within the realm of possibility, but I'm not to that point where I can say, without you know without reservation, I can hit that guilty button on this one. Uh, but I agree. But I agree with you. And and as far as the timing issue, you know, with the defense, it to me it just seems, and I've seen this happen in courts in you know real life here, that the prosecution, the state will just keep bringing back witnesses recalling witnesses to try to rehabilitate them but it's also used as a strategy you know against the defense for running out time it's like a you know it's like the what is it the three second rule in basketball you know where they just kind of stand there and dribbling the the ball waiting for the clock yeah yeah and um so yeah it's pretty it's pretty crazy yeah. Anyway, I thought, well, you know, maybe the judge was a little bit cranky for reasons that I won't say. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I wasn't going <laughs> to speculate. I it somewhat through my head, but obviously they're not you know appropriate for oh, for I, right. daytime I television. I did put it in chat. <laughs> okay, that, you, you know, you got to be careful. I might get you a time out, <laughs> depending on what. Uh, <laughs> what you put well it was yeah it had to do with you know maybe a little payoff but no you said that you said that no anyway it's... thanks ra so much I for it. um going back to this trial because it is it's been a set of precedents yeah yeah there's a there's a lot of view on this i'm i'm glad quite frankly i'm really glad that we have fairly good coverage even if it's just the zoom i realize zoom is not the best way to look at this but as far as transparency in the court it, it's right up there. It's it's near the top of what we want because virtually every time yeah. they're they're active, we have a recording of it. Um, I do like that. I'll give Arizona yeah. props for that, especially this court. I know not all of them do that, um, but uh, you know. Well, you know, as you know, as a person that's been in the courts, you know, they've uh, the state has tried, you know, getting us out of the courtroom, and on several occasions, and we're just like. Um, okay, judge, what's, what's the Arizona constitution say, yeah. y- you know, and we make them read it. That's awesome. So, yeah. So, you know, no, we're not disruptive. Absolutely not. We're just observers in the court taking notes. Um, but there's no reason to get us kicked out. 
but oh boy, they try. Yeah. And we make the judge read, the read it, the, you know. The highest level of law at the state level, yeah. That's yes. Cool. Well, that's awesome. Yes. I have to say thank you. You've, you've done, I, uh, obviously in chat, you guys know Arizona, uh, DCS uh, there um, in chat, but um, just on the, on the burner phone as well, all the, they're, they're reaching out saying, Hey, this is the, this is the channels we're seeing this on. This is the, this is the court number. This is, uh, you know, this is how you can get a hold of, of different uh, news agencies, which at times we have to do in the background. Uh, so a big thanks for that. I really, really appreciate that. Hey, you're very welcome. It's the least I can do. Awesome. Thanks, ha- have right. yourself a great weekend. Hey, thank you, Chad. Yep. Yes, you too. All right. We'll see you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right. Uh, do you have a time stamp where the judge walks out? Mandy, we watched it first thing this morning. It was before the jury. Well, no, where it walked out. It was after the jury came in. Call from Fun and Funky. Hello, Fun and Funky. How are you doing? It's good to hear from you again. Hello. Hello, Scott. How are you? I'm doing just wonderful. Great. So, actually, I'm not really phoning about the case because okay. it's, like, been in the background when I'm working. I'm really phoning about phoning you. <laughs> and I need to figure out a way that that you don't have to pay, like, $3 a minute to talk to me, right? Yeah. That, 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 that's it, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. I, I'm. I'm using right now. I'm using a, a computer to take calls through the burner phone. Uh, I've got. I've got some. I, I. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. A, a young man that that wants to set up a Discord just for a phone channel for me, which would I'd like to do. I. I just feel bad having the the people over at as the gavel drops uh, handle that for me. We. I love them. They're amazing. But I don't. I don't think that would be right of me to expect that from them. So we might do the Discord channel. Um, and then have a. a fun I'm on Discord, there. yeah. But I'm on Discord, but it's not all about me. Yeah. Give Give me a little yeah. bit. We are working on it. I I realize I'm very slow at this, but in my defense, I have to remodel a bathroom because my my family with with five kids at home, my wife and I and, my, and I, we have one shower and it's out in the yard, and we have one toilet. <laughs> it's, unless we go out in the yard, I've got to do a bathroom model. I've got to get my lawnmower fixed, or I'm never going to be able to afford to retire. How much I have to pay people to mow my lawn, and so all oh, these Scott. things come oh, first Scott. on the I'm list. Not, I'm not. I'm not even knocking you for that. I've seen your videos on your loyal follower. Um, yeah, tiny bathroom. Um, yeah, it's but tiny. That's all I want to say. Yep. I love talking to you, but I haven't been able to because my last phone bill was. Oof. I, I am sorry. I, I will get on it. Okay, I will get on it. And if Discord works, well, I think that'll be the the way we go. Can't use That'd WhatsApp be because it's tied to another phone number, and I need to have a phone number tied to it. And Fair I'm, enough. I tried to no, get an, that, I tried that, to get another burner phone number. I literally I have a burner phone number that is perfect for this channel, that's available on um, Google Voice. I can't tell you what it is, or someone's going to steal it. But it's a the perfect right, but number. But I need another phone to claim it. So I need I need to I'm going to get like Mrs. Ari a phone so I can claim it. But. Fun and funky. I I don't want to run I'll your bill you up. I'll <laughs> no. send you one. I'll send you one. Fine. <laughs> it's cheaper than calling, huh? Uh, <laughs> fun and funky. Thank you so much. Good to hear your voice again. Lovely to speak to you, Scott. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Call from Jackie Silverin. Hello, Jackie. How are you doing? Good. How are you, RA? I'm I'm doing just great. Happy Friday to you. Happy Friday, sir. I'm a first-time caller. Wonderful. And you don't sound nervous um, at all. What do you have on, what's on your mind? So my concern is at the prosecution table this whole time, the uh, gentleman that's on the stand now has been sitting there the whole time and has seen everyone else testify. Yeah. How is that allowed? Well, the lead prosecutor gets that privilege. And he's the lead prosecutor, or the lead investigator, excuse me, not prosecutor, but the lead investigator. Um, he okay. is he is there because they consult with him 
during the case because he's supposed to be the one that has all the information, like the big picture on the case, what everybody did. He sort of oversaw. He has all the collected information together. And and so he's allowed to be there to be a resource for the, the prosecution. It's a lot like a victim in a, in a crime would be allowed to be in the courtroom even if they're called as a witness. So they, they both, okay. both sides get a little bit of leeway there, even if their rules invoked. Okay. I just never saw that before and it's been driving me insane. <laughs> so I knew you would know the answer. Yeah, it, it does happen. It's actually quite common, but usually they're, they're hard to see or they sit off camera or a little bit, or maybe a behind the, 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 uh, the, the council, but it's, it's pretty common. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Not a problem. Great call. Thanks for calling. We'll see you. Take care. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. I need a burner chat account just in case, says Greeners. Uh, The lead sat in the Apple River trial too. It is is very common. I I think we've seen it. I'd be surprised. I I don't know if there are any states where they don't allow it, like as, as a blanket rule. Reverend B says, I'm going to get deleted. I just know it. You guys, it, most of you, most of you for almost everything you do, it, it, you're nowhere near the line. A couple of you, just be careful, be cautious. Um, it, I will tell you this, it's going to rise to the, to the uh, moderator's attention um, much quicker if you have name, if you're calling somebody names or you, you're using in your sentence, in your chat, um, words that are, are viewed by YouTube as calling someone a name because those come up on our on our on our hot list, our moderator list, where the mods have to approve your message. Um, so just be nice to everybody, and and you'll be fine. Uh, they can call for mistrial, but there'll be a snowball's chance in Hades for the judge to grant it. I agree, but I I don't know if they need to call for mistrial to preserve the record. I don't think they do. They've, they've I think they've done a fairly good job. I, I wish we had a lawyer who could weigh on the on that specific thing as it related to the the timing of the judge's rant and everything else. Um, just sent past performance reports for Judge Fink to recover at his burner phone. Oh, Jamie. <laughs> there they are. Let's see. Arizona courts. Well, let, let's, why not? Why not? Let's, let's take a quick look at uh, what people say. Um, this is like... Uh, there's, you remember when you were in school and you, you had a professor and you can rate your professor and, and say, here's what I, how I think they're doing. It's like that, but for judges. Call from the angel of chat. To accept, press one. Hey, Ivan, how you doing? How's everybody doing? How's it going? Great. Uh, good to have you here. What's, uh, what's on your mind? Well... First of all, if anybody needs a demonstration on where the line is, I'd be happy to give one if we need to do that. Over on Ivan's um, channel. How about I do it on your okay. channel? Because <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. I'd course, hate for you to, to, for it to end right here, for this to be like the last moment that we, that we knew <laughs> Ivan on the channel. Yeah, that would be... Um, all right, let's move on. Yeah. Um, so, in any event, this, uh, this courtroom, it's sort of like a... Uh, I don't know how to describe it really. It goes from like, you know, as bland as a British breakfast to hot tamale. It's, it's super bland for like a half an hour and then we have five minutes of excitement and then it just falls off a cliff. Like this judge is, I, I can't quite put my finger on him and I think it's because he's crazy uh, because it, it's just sort of been, you know, there's being one-sided and then there's just making rules up as you go. And I don't, uh, I don't really know how to like, so when you say covering for somebody, like you have to get more specific, start naming names, like start naming people. Like, what do you mean by that? Um, the sheriff. All right. See, now we're when, getting when, when the sheriff right. took he, him and his, his underling and they crossed over into Mexico and met as an investigative unit with a, a witness, a potential witness and interrogated the witness and conducted an interview in Mexico of that witness, which was to be used in court. Um, and yeah, that, yeah. that to me, I'm like, I'm, I'm sure at least somewhere like in the consulate office or whatever there, someone was like, they did what? Excuse me. But isn't it, isn't it just as bad to be overturned on appeal? Like if I was a judge, like that would be like, I was like, you'd have to think like judges are, 
offended when they're overturned on a, do you think it just rolls off their back uh, or do you think like they take that personally um, because to me it seems as if he's opening all sorts of appellate doors I, th- I think I think most judges are initially offended uh, some judges uh, are able to to stop and reset look look at uh, J hatch for instance man what a, yep, what, what yep. an amazing ability to be like seeing red okay <laughs> like it's a good thing there's a bar between <laughs> me and you mr lawyer type thing uh yes and and then being able to say you know what it happened it's in the past let's move on and i'm ready to be fair and impartial uh i think the good judges have that ability the bad judges uh you're gonna say you know what i've picked my winner and we're gonna make sure that you happens. think that ability gets better or worse as they get older I think it's like a character trait. I don't think it's like a, a flaw that all judges succumb to this. I think they, with experience, um, judges, I would say most judges with experience get a little harder shell and they're not as easily offended. Whereas the first time somebody comes up and tells them they don't have subject matter jurisdiction in the case, they wouldn't be like, excuse me, <laughs> you know, I'm still in my, still paying my student loans to get that show that I have subject matter jurisdiction on this. And, uh, you know, so I think that over time, uh, generally, you get a little bit harder. It, it get they're they're willing to put up with a little more, even though they you know they hate it. But. Um. So, yeah. Well, like, because remember, if you remember, uh, the Zachariah Anderson wasn't that case uh, mistrial, or was it a, on an appeal? It was a mistrial, right? Because of how did that one end the first time? Uh, guilty. No, 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 no. That was the second run, wasn't it? That was the second run at it, I thought. I thought they allowed something they weren't supposed was, to. Wasn't that with a different judge? I don't think was, so. I think Schroeder was, I think initially Schroeder, I think if, or initially there was either, there was a mistrial uh, the first time. Yeah, the first DA trial was a mistrial for sure. And then. I think that uh, was that was because yeah. of something that, uh, that the, the prosecution had done. Um, I, I don't think it was the judge's fault on that one. I think it was a discovery issue okay. or something that led to the, the mistrial the first time. Maybe maybe that that's what it was. I'm sorry. They they all run together a little bit in my head. Right, right, right. I'm sorry. Ash actually right. says, I'm just here with my good behavior, trying not to trip over that line. Ash, thank you <laughs> for 13 months. And then and then greases the wheels with gifting a membership. That that helps, Ash. Thank you very much. All's yeah, forgiven. This, this is going to be the, the eggshell chat right now. The, egg, the chat's on eggshells. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Ivan is right, says Red Pen. All right, man. That, you're not going to see that very often. Do you want to quickly grab a screenshot, um, Ivan? Oh, I've been taking them all day when when, when, when people have been getting banned and everything. I've been, you don't got to tell me, man. I've been taking them all afternoon. Ivan, good talking to you, my friend. All right, love you guys. Bye. See you. Bye. All right. Uh, let's see. We have um, – let's see. We It's lunch. It's lunch, but I think we're going to be done for the day. Um, so we, we could, if there is another court that you know, that's out there that you think we need to jump to, we can do that and do a little court hopping. But, uh, other than that, it's the weekend. Mrs. RA is gone with the kids. I have a lawnmower to fix. So either, either we hang out here together or I have to go fix the lawnmower or build my bathroom. So I'm, I'm up, I'm up for whichever you prefer, but let's see. Uh, get her done. Says Red Man, go get to work <laughs> to get something done for once. Uh, Sarah Boone's he- hearing on five thirteen is canceled. Uh, Karina, thank you for this. Uh, the The date's pushed again. The date's pushed again. The latest I saw, if I'm just pulling up the the Orange County feed really quickly, let me bring that on camera three. My, my, my chair is so squeaky. I think I need to like spray it with WD forty or something. Uh, let's see. The this is uh, Sarah Boone. The latest I'm seeing, the hearing was canceled um, on 513, and now we have a status hearing for 67. 67 is the next one, and I'm not seeing anything else. Did something did something happen today in court? Let's see if I can refresh this. It's gonna make me uh, do another search. Hello, I'd like to look for um, Sarah. Last name, let's do Boone. I'm not a robot. There we go. Can you guys see this? Hopefully you're seeing this. Okay. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, 
There she is. There's her case. Just want to see if there's nothing else on there. Okay, so no, no, no changes. I'm not seeing any letters. The last, the last letter we got from the ju from Sarah to the judge was, man, it's been a while. Electronic copy sent to, oh, that's that's something else. It's been a while since we've had a letter. We might get another note though with this uh, with this hearing pushing out because Sarah Boone's not a big fan of of delays. Uh, to say the least. And honestly, with each day that goes by, I'm even less of a fan of it. I think I think she really uh, deserves her day in court. And and not all these delays are her fault. Let's see, Bug Dugger, who with my jury selections that around that time, I may get lucky. At this rate, she'll be tried all a... with the uh, Koberger. Man, Koberger is going to be so spicy. Can you, can you believe how incredibly um, spicy the, the, the just the hearings are going right now? The fact that they have to have a, a meeting every couple of weeks just to, to to sort of grease the wheels because they're already the two sides hate each other, and there's going to be motions uh, just for it's going to be take forever. That case is going to go forever. Let's see. Can we talk about the Ruby case on this channel? We have not followed that one. I realize there's some there are updates, uh, Dog Lover. I think the latest update was that the husband is suing Ruby Frankie. I think that's the latest update. Um, but I, we haven't we haven't really dug into that one. Most of the cases that have um, uh, you know child abuse and stuff in there, we try to we try to space those out quite a bit because they're so very difficult uh, emotionally for the chat. They're just really heavy. We we prefer just a good clean murder. No, husband is suing Jody. Okay, so husband suing Jody. Wow, uh, that makes sense. Jody was the was the okay. That makes sense. I, I said husband is suing, suing wife. That didn't make sense. So husband suing Jody Hildebrand. I think BK mostly because judge is a micromanager. He, spicy vetted me, uh, vet med geek. <laughs> I cannot say your name, spicy. Uh, the the BK judge. John, judge John Judge is a micromanager, but at the same time, he is very poor, if I can put that out there. He's very poor at making decisions in the moment. Uh, to me, the only concern, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with the judge being thoughtful, taking their time, their consideration, and saying, you know, I'm going to weigh this. I'm going to sit back in my office. I'm going to get go back to my to my desk where I have my computer and all my law books. And I'm going to weigh this. I'm going to look up the case law that you gave me in these, these motions, and I'm going to make a ruling. I'm, I'm great with that. But there, there will come a time, and it will be during trial. There will come a time during trial where the judge will have to start making rulings. And if he pushes everything off, uh, like we've seen in, in other cases, like we've seen with um, Judge Newman, like we saw with um, um, with the uh, with Jay Hatch. Why can I not think of his name right now? Judge, um, I know I know of all the nicknames for him, but I can't remember his name right now. Anyway, uh, I'm waiting in chat for it to appear because I know you you guys have it. Judge Carroll, Judge Carroll, thank you. Jamie Ergus was the first one with that. Uh, I, I like that judges say, I'm not going to make an advanced ruling, but you have to be able to, when the time is appropriate, you have to be able to make the ruling when it's time. You can't just say, well, I'll take that under advisement. Let's just go somewhere else, and we'll come back to that later. Otherwise, the case becomes a mess, a lot like we're seeing here in Arizona. Um, speaking of Judge Carroll, I got an email from, from Nick, Nick Whitney <laughs> the other day. I'm so excited. I don't know if I'm, I'm supposed to say anything or not, but I'm, I'm so excited. Thank you, Nick. Uh, love the email. I'm looking forward to, uh, to next week, which is, uh, I guess, uh, mediation. Mediation is happening. So, uh, so that's cool. And hopefully, yay. <laughs> hopefully, yay. That's all I've got. Uh, let's see. It's sad that in so many times the kids have to literally save themselves. Silver lining, it shows how powerful even the little, littler vulnerable humans can be. It's bittersweet. Uh, the resilience of some of these kids, uh, it's, it's both heartbreaking and, and, you know, just, yeah, at the same time. Monday on the 15th, tax day. I think mediation is going to go, 
like multiple days. There's there's no way that all these people, and I'm talking about Jay Hatch again, and we talk about Jay Hatch, we have to show this timer. Um, here we go. There's the there's the timer right there. We've got four three four four six one eight in interest. So by Monday, we're gonna be we're gonna be close to four point five million dollars on Monday. Maybe wait, wait, wait. Fifty a day, Friday, Saturday. So yeah, we're gonna be just a little shy. So uh, three days or so of mediation. That's going to be amazing, but we'll uh, we'll keep that going. I don't know. Someone hopefully someone will tell us when the mediation if if it's successful, which I'm not sure. I I, I know some people have mixed opinions on whether or not the, the J Hatch is going to come out and um, you know actually get in there and be willing to negotiate, or if they're you're just going to dig in deeper and you know Dracula and coffin and all that's going to happen again, but. Anyway, we're hoping that there's some progress there. All right, anything else? Um, oh crap! I hope my taxes are done. No, boy, I'm. I hope my taxes are paid. I don't know if they're paid. I need to make sure my taxes are paid. I'll make it happen. Um, we get taxed. Pay as you earn, mostly in the UK. I do so. No tax filings. Yeah, and you, your taxes are, are very different. The, the tax structures are different. Uh, uh, for instance, a value-added tax, VAT, value-added tax. When I was there, it was, what, 16.5%, 17%, somewhere around there. Uh, I'm not sure if it's gone up or down or if that sort of stays the same. But uh, it, for someone who's used to, to paying maybe a 5% sales tax, you know, at, at the point of sale, a 5% increase, uh, going to the grocery store and having 17% added on uh, was eye-opening. Well, it's now 20 Richard, wow. Jenny, I will. I'm going to call my accountant. Uh, who, <laughs> I, I've never had an accountant before. I've never needed one. But with all, with all the, the things that I'm trying to get deductions for, with, with starting a business and all the, the money it took to, to, to do that, um, I needed an accountant. But man, did I make her life miserable. I had, I had no idea how to keep records for a business. I mean, I've never, I've had businesses before, but not ones that made money. And, and so I didn't, I didn't have any way of tracking you know, all that. So I had to go back and recreate a lot of records and, and dig for luckily a lot of the companies that we work with like YouTube and, you know, they keep, keep track. Texas filed three cent refund. Did it right, says Todd. Todd, that is amazing. Uh, uh, Steve N, once again, comes in with the, uh, the misnomer or the, the uh, misinformation. I thought you were a famous YouTuber that got to avoid or neglect paying taxes on your billion dollar salary. Steve, um, one day I, I'll open the books to you. How about that? I'll open the books to you and say, uh, see this decimal? That's that's how much we're talking about. 20% uh, but included in price. Oh, fun and funky. They include, so they add the VAT, the VAT on the shelf price. If you buy a drink for two two quid, or two pounds, or is that euros? Is that a euro sign? I don't. I don't remember. Two dollars at the till. VAT is pre-added. That is sneaky. That is super super sneaky. All right. Let me let me do a quick check here on our station down here. Are they live? Nope, it's still just showing commercials. Okay, the uh, it's euros. Okay, the IRS always comes for its money. YouTubers don't understand that self-made income is is like at thirty percent. Always want to be safe, Mr. Opertorso. Uh, luckily, my my brother-in-law is an accountant. He used to work at one of the big five accounting firms. And when I told him what I wanted to do, he said, "Hey, let me just give you a little advice up front." Uh, set aside, and by set aside, I mean have the money on hand to pay, and and so we we did that, and and it hurts, it hurts like no other, uh, when when you're like, hey, I might finally be able to make a living doing something, and then it's like, oh, and then taxes come in, whew, that's painful. But uh, Bobby, th I don't have a live anymore to share with you. I mean, I'm, I'm watching just TV on some other channel now. There, there's no live stream. Uh, we think it's during lunch right now. It may come back after a uh, couple places. Uh, News 4 
out of out of Tucson may carry it live, but only on their their website. Uh, K Gun K G U N, which which is just amazing. Um, so K V O A K G U N, uh, both of those their websites might be good places to check. I don't think anyone's airing it on YouTube live. Um, yeah, I've got nothing. I think K Gun's backpack K Gun's. Uh, let me show you real quickly. Uh, K Gun has a. Uh, a TV backpack. This is a live streaming uh, bonded cellular encoder uh, backpack that uh, that is running this out of the courtroom right now, but they have no feed, meaning the camera is off. This is like bars and tone, but uh, it's a little different. I don't like TVU myself. I'm a bit of a live view fan. Different it's just brands. So I uh, mine's a live view instead of a TVU. Um, let's see. Bonded cellular recorder backpack. Yes. Yes, that's what it is. A bonded cellular. What it is, is it, uh, imagine with your cell phone, it has one little card, right? A data card. It has one little chip, and it connects to the internet, and you have one internet connection on your phone. Uh, a bonded cellular backpack, one of these trans um, encoder backpacks, has four to eight of those chips, which means you're paying for four to eight unlimited data connections. Um, for me, it's about four hundred dollars a month for mine, um, but you pay for those those cards, and it takes all those all that data, all that bandwidth, and condenses it down together, and uses every single one of them as one pipe to send your internet to the your video to the internet or straight to YouTube. Um, so that's that's what they're doing. They're they're amazing devices. I I wanted one for years, years and years. Um, I've got a, a entry level one that only has four channels. I would like to upgrade to the eight channel one just because there are some areas where you just don't have good cell coverage and you need eight connections just to push out a signal. Um, the only problem is that one is $30,000 and that is out of my budget. <laughs> so maybe, maybe years, years down the road, we can do that once, you know, give us a tech talk. Uh, let me tell, let me say this next week, NAB in Las Vegas. If you're interested in this sort of gear, the North American Broadcast um, Convention that is happening in Las Vegas is the place to go. That's where all the technology is going to be shown off. Um, it, pretty much everything that I have on my desk, the manufacturers from all these companies um, that are broadcast specific, like if they're doing the switchers or audio or you know recording and encoding and cameras, they're all going to be there. And it's going to be it's a lot of fun. I've got a ticket to go, but it's still like another... 400 bucks plus hotel and food and I'm, i just don't think i'm gonna make it it, it would be fun but I, i'm not gonna go it's it's not not worth it okay uh i want to upgrade because it's available because i can um is the field trip over yet mustang guy yes the field trip was yesterday so today we've had we've we've watched we watched yesterday's morning and then we watched part of today's morning. Uh, but normally, I mean, the rest of this week, we haven't had a live view out of or live view of the courtroom. Um, we just found it today and we were able to watch a little bit of it. Has anyone ever been arrested at CrimeCon? <laughs> Probably. I, I uh, you know, I tried to go. I tried to book it with the travel, my travel credits, but they wouldn't let me go there. They hung up on me. Uh Crowdfund? Uh, no, if if I were doing a crowdfund, it would be for a specific thing that um, it would work. Apple has trained RA well. They have. I I bought. I I bit into the Apple, and I I just I cannot switch now. When I lived in Vegas, I used to not like when that convention came to town. It messed with my internet. <laughs> Hopefully, they fixed it by now. Oh. Uh, I I would I totally wouldn't want to mix conventions and true crime. That's what I meant. Can't even fix my comment. Uh, I I would uh, I would like going to CrimeCon, but NAB NAB is on my bucket list, not CrimeCon. Because I I tried to go to CrimeCon, they wouldn't even send me a like a a guest pass or something. Let's see. Uh, 
Is, is there anything else I missed? Is there anything else I missed? I just noticed I'm I'm looking at shopping for generators on uh, online. I don't I I know why. I mean, I was I was talking with Thomas. <laughs> we were talking about lawn care equipment, and now I'm stuck on generators. All right. Uh, reservation confirmed. Oh, we're good there. This is Ari's car. I think we're done. I think we're done. Uh, any anyone want to share their plans for the weekend in chat? Once you bite the apple, you need a fig leaf. So yes. Ari is prepping. Watch the replay later. Debbie, it was it was spicy, especially this morning. We did go watch and rewatch it again if you missed it the first time. But if you missed both times, you'll have to go back and watch one of those. Uh, the Simpsons soft set case. We watched that this morning. That was great. Crime Con is in May. Going to the lake. Temps in the 80s. Paula Mack. Enjoy. Uh, Buck Duggars. I'm just going to catch up on what I missed. Uh, Ivan is going to uh, help people acquire two beers. Two beers for tubing on the river. Babysitting a new Sphinx kitten this weekend. Taking my grandson to a festival. Beach on Sunday. Yard work, says Red Pen. When you're done there, Red Pen. Uh, Catherine, I'm going to Crime Con. I don't know. It might still happen because it's, it's not that far. I mean, it is. It is and it isn't. I think I'd probably still fly to Crime Con because it's like a 12-hour like a drive or something. Oh, it's probably only 10. Probably about 10 hours. Always shouting out Ken Maines. If you want heartfelt, brutally honest, professional true crime voice, go to him. The way he breaks down, he redacted it. He redacted it. I'll, I'll, I'll clear it. I think you might have had a typo in there or something, but gave him a shout out. Uh, <laughs> Daisy, oversight. I'm submitting a complaint to the uh, Judicial Conduct Commission for a weekend project. Yeah. Staying at home watching the Masters. Is, I heard Tiger is right on the, on the cut right now. Dethatching my lawn, says Andrea. Going to Anissa's funeral. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry, Mammy. I'm so sorry. Ashley, it was spicy today. It was very, very spicy. It was wonderful. Um, resting my foot since I broke it on Sunday. Kimbers, that's no fun. Testing for red belt and karate. Rejected juror, that's wonderful. Good luck. I can talk for 10 hours. I'll talk you through the drive. Uh, need to clean this weekend, seeing the grandkid. These are great plans. I'm That warms my heart that many of you have wonderful plans that involve making memories or spending time with loved ones. That is that is great. I am, I'm going to wait for a phone call from the auto shop and see how much I owe to get my car fixed, if it can be fixed, which I think it can. I, I stopped very soon after it started making the horrendous rattling and shaking and grinding noise. So I think it's fixable. Wife and I survived the first 24 hours with our new twin, so that's pretty much what we're doing from now on. I'll need two extra seats in court. Corey, congratulations on the twins. That is, that's really exciting. I make a pit stop halfway to Crime Con at my place, have a guest house. Liz running a 5K to support age-retired horses. That is cool, Liz. I used to, I used to run. I used to run cross-country. And I love it. And I still have the calves of someone who ran cross country. Um, unfortunately, I that's the only part I kept. All right. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Kenny, amazing. You guys are all incredible. I just wanted to catch up with you guys and see what, what your plans were. You guys know mine. So now we're now we're all even. Waiting to pick up my car from the garage with a three thousand dollar bill. Oh my goodness. Did you tell him you already bought it once? And you just wanted it fixed this time? Mary Sue, I'm sorry. And I hope that my bill is not equally large. Taking care of my son who had his wisdom teeth removed. Kimmy, did you get any video of him like coming out of anesthesia? Those are always those are always great. Uh, Brandy joined. Brandy, how are you doing? Welcome to to all the thirteenth jurors. Brandy was has been following the uh, the Karen Reed case. If you if you want more to watch, if you want more to watch, wow. Karen Reed is nuts. I have not seen how today's hearing went, but it has been spicy. It has been spicy up to up to this and on previous ones. Uh, just been absolutely incredible. 
Uh, so Karen Reed, Brandy Churchwell, the two go together hand in hand. Brandy, hope you are doing absolutely well. It's it's wonderful to have you here. 13th jury. We're just wrapping up. I'm sorry. This is what I do to uh, Broken Baker. He literally is is signing off. He's like in his last couple minutes. He's he followed the same case we have. Uh, he's about to sign off, and we dump um, we dump everybody on him through a portal. And, and he's like, I, I'm not sure. Brandy's almost to 18k subs. Wow, that is great. That is great. Get your international call set up. I'll, I think I'm going to talk to Amber first and and see see what happens. We'll see. We'll see if we can do that. Last minute court hopping. Uh, after after lunch, I'll let you guys do that. Um, let's see. Anything else? Rewatch today, y'all. It was spicy. Robin, it was, it was, we have the spicy meter, right? So we have, let me see if I can show this again. We have the spicy meter here. Where did my spice go? There it is. So we started with one, one pepper. And we went, we went to two peppers and then three peppers and four pe peppers, which is very spicy. Four peppers is extremely spicy, but then we took it up one more notch and it just got, it was smoking. And on, I'm going to spoil it for you, but if you haven't seen the part where the judge storms out of court, well, well, on, well he storms out of court on the record, uh, you, haven't, you haven't seen the spiciness of today yet. And I guess that happened yesterday, but we... We had some we had some spice because we saw it today. Let's see. Uh, did you see mine? Did you see yours? You're in the wrong business. What? Uh, I'm going to see a potential house to buy in Rocky Mount. Seriously. You're are you in North Carolina, Amber? I thought for some reason I thought you were in Florida. I have I have no idea where you live. I need to know where you live, Amber. I mean, no, don't put it in chat. She's like, seriously? Seriously? I, I barely know my own address, Amber. I barely know my own. I thought she was in Europe, says Ivan. Uh, yes, international callers. I, fun and funky, I hear you. We're, I'm going to talk to Amber. No, I'm in Virginia, just over the North Carolina line. Okay. Now it sound, it's coming back to me slowly. Slowly. Rocky Mountain's not that far from you then. That's just a hop, skip, and a jump. Uh, if anyone who is here who has not subscribed to Brandy Churchwell, she needs six more people. How would, how would you like to be the 18,000th person to subscribe to Brandy Churchwell? It could be you, and it could be you like right now. Six, six more. Six more. Let's, let's see if we can uh, take a quick peek. Um, oh, man. I, I, I can't see your live count. I think only she can see that. Brandy Churchwell. I'm just, I'm still showing seventeen nine. Seventeen nine. People are racing cars in front of my house. Abby says you could convince me to do anything. Let's get it to eighteen k. Seriously. All it takes is six people, six uh, six people to uh, to go over and click the subscribe button, and uh, her her YouTube channel's right here. So you can click the link, get over there if you haven't subscribed, and um, oh, I should have a package. I'm gonna go to the post office then, Lynn. Thank you very much. I've not been to the post office I think all week, but let's see, three. Still still missing a couple. I don't know how many. Still a couple more. I told her she'd be at 18k by today. It's going to happen. New plants coming tomorrow. I think I think all my accounts have already subscribed to Brandy. You made it, Brandy. You made it. It it hasn't updated on my screen. It still show the thirteen nine, um, but it sounds like you made it to to eighteen thousand. Brandy, that is awesome. That is totally awesome. Uh, congratulations. That is that is really, really, really cool. That is that is a. I tell you what, what that needs. That needs a party sound. There you go. It, it sounds weak. It sounds pathetic. Sort of, but but that is our, that's the best party sound I have. <laughs> K 
congratulations. That is awesome. I'm, I'm curious. I, I, obviously, I want to know what happened on the Karen Reed trial. So I have to go back and watch your live stream to see what happened on the hearing, uh, which is just amazing. I, I think that case, if it goes forward, it's going to be massive, massive. I, but, uh, you know, never know what's going to happen. 18K day party. The party command doesn't work. I have to just push it myself over and over. It's like a damn firework, says Bunty McBun. Uh, Brandy, that is awesome. Congratulations uh, from all of us. That is really, that's really cool. That is really, really cool. All right. Uh, so I guess I, I'm going to go, I'm probably going to either repair my lawnmower or build my bathroom while I catch up on Brandy's stream for the Karen Reed case because I'm, I'm really curious how the hearing went. I know last time the judge was supposed to be a, like a full day hearing and instead they're like, well, we've got 10 minutes, go. Uh, yeah. I don't know who won. I don't know who won. Sorry, I had the sound down there too. Cat doesn't like the party sound, <laughs> says Abby. All right, let's uh, let's play the music and uh, and uh, and go and get get the weekend underway. Get the weekend underway. Oh, that's a pathetic party sound. It's pretty. It's pretty weak. I need a better one. I'll add that to the list of things to do. All right, thank you very much. This has been a, a fantastic week. I, I say that now that Friday's here. Wednesday, it was not a good week, but now but now it's a wonderful week. Uh, it's been wonderful. We've had some spiciness in court. We've had some we've had some verdicts that went the way I wasn't expecting. Um, some of you were, uh, but uh, it's been it's been a crazy week. It's been really good. Uh, this is what I call the best place to watch true crime. It's because of you. Thank you very much. Thanks to our amazing moderators who I don't know where they live. Uh, I need to know where all my moderators live. So send me a message on the full address, full address, uh, preferred name, um, legal representative. If you, if I need that sent to the burner phone for the mods. Thank you very much. I'm not joking. I need that. Uh, I think that's all. I think that's all. The spice meter is still going. We're going to, we're going to bring the spice meter up to like, it, it's hot. It's really hot. All right, everyone, have a great weekend. Tonight, when you go home, please hug the people you love. Smile at someone, make, the the make their day just a little better. And please stay safe till we go live uh, for sure Monday morning, where we will be re-watching what happened here on Friday. We're going to get what happened Friday morning. I think there might be some spice there. There might be some spice. Ashley says, I live in Connecticut. Uh, caliente. Is, I'm not even sure what I'm saying. If I, I, I can't say that. But... Uh, Let's see, uh, Matthew. Yes, Matthew Harris. You need to go do his poll. I have to go watch uh, Brandy Churchwell. You guys have a great weekend. Be nice to each other. We'll see you guys. I think I think this is the right button. Yep. This is not Burger King. People do not get to have it their way. Somebody just sent me a video of roaches fighting. I don't know who won. Because he's the guy. Alex Stollett. I object. Have him send someone with more experience.